What's up, guys? Welcome to Law Splaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Riccada of Riccada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. And I hope you are ready. <laughs> Joining me this morning is that umbrella guy. Hey, Bear. How's it going, man? Oh, man, I'm ready for this. Fill it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, I've been calling it the defecation trial of the century. <laughs> I think I think that's how we have to look at this. <laughs> oh, I can't I can't wait to that. I can't wait till they they bring all of that up. You know the uh, don't blame her. She's down in the dumps. I can't wait for those texts. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, I I God God smiled on me this morning because I fell asleep before setting my alarm. <laughs> I'd wondered. I was like, "Hey, uh, where where's Nick?" <laughs> Just to be honest, I was like, "Man, you know." Yep. But hey, no, you get no, up no. I me too. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of ha there's a lot of me too's without hashtags this morning. That's crazy. Yeah, but uh, no. So I like I like was just sleeping, and I went. What the hell time is it? <laughs> is it is it <laughs> three in the afternoon yet? Oh my god. So, uh, yeah, I, I was going to set up a show link and everything. And I just, I just passed out straight away. Dude, you night, stream so. like a million hours a day. I don't know how you stay at work, honestly, unless you have a Colombian friend or something. <laughs> I do not. I do not. <laughs> I love the cocaine. I love the, I get all my cocaine from Amber Heard directly. Um, no, but I, I, uh, I, I was just very fortunate to wake up exactly on, uh, on time for when I was going to start the show. And you know, then I had to come get everything set up. And of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it live in front of as many people as will watch. Um, Rumble, Rumble's live streaming made this take an extra ten to fifteen minutes to set up. Oh, gosh. That's that's the problem with Rumble. Yeah, and I they need to fix it. I tried using Rumble and I thought, no, that's not happening. <laughs> it's too much work. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I'm I'm on the border of cutting it off. Like it's it's insane. I I mean, I I like the engagement and stuff like that, but dude, these they have got to get that u user experience down. Uh <laughs> anyway, anyway, Sure sounds like an excuse. Stop whining. You guys go stream on Rumble once and you'll hate it immediately. Like yeah, you will, I, you will I hate tried. I was like I was like, man, you know, <laughs> this is it's like it's like solving a puzzle just to try to freaking get anything to work there, you know? Yeah. Um, so I've got uh I've got one of these links open. It's just outside the courthouse right now. Uh so let me I'll get it pulled up here right. while we wait. Uh, this is this thing's supposed to start in um, in seven minutes, but I, I don't have a ton of faith that they'll start on time. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, that's what I was thinking this morning. I was like, well, I'm sure you'll wake up, you know, and get going. And well, hey, it's a court, <laughs> so you know they're. Oh. I mean, if they kick off on time, that that will be amazing. And hey, there we are. There's the man himself, Johnny D. There's no audio from the court yet, but we do have we do have a picture. That's a nice tie. I like that tie. I like that ring too, man. Yeah, which one? The one that? Uh, oh god, she's looking. She looks they have, rough. They, That's what I say. Look at those uh, implants, like her cheek implants or whatever. Yeah. That, I mean, they look they look rough these days. They have her dressing down for opening here. I wonder why. They want her. They want her to look like a victim. Um, what is this? Six years after the fact. <laughs> yeah. Someone says uh, Johnny looks fat. Johnny's fifty eight. Man, he is fat. Yeah. <laughs> he's got he's got old man <laughs> old man weight all over written all over him. Uh, you know, it's it's what happens. It's what happens. Trust me. Yep. I hope to be happy and fat when I, you know, when I, when I get to that point. I mean, uh, I packed on a few COVID pounds myself, but man, 58, hell yeah. Yeah, I, I crushed COVID with, with my I, girth. I would, yeah, yeah. I remember you crushing COVID. Actually, you did it live. That's the crazy thing. You're like, I'm going to die. I have to live stream. If I don't live stream, I will die. Ooh. 
uh, COVID will win. Uh, you're like, I should have never made fun of that lawyer. Now I know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, hey, I went. I, I had that myself, man. Thirteen freaking. It took me. It took me eleven days just to beat the fever off of it. I was like, man, this is awful. <laughs> this is <laughs> Dude, it was awful. It was bad. Yeah, that was that was a that was a shit illness uh, to get. Uh, okay, I gotta. I know. I think I'm one of the death statistics <laughs> there. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a DM from Yellow Flash just a little bit ago, right? Like at the exact same time you DM me, he's wake up, it's dep time. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I texted him. I was like, do you know when uh, Ricada's going to wake up? <laughs> and he was like, wow, when's it start? I was like, soon, very soon. <laughs> uh, okay, I got to. A flash is funny. He was like, you could go do a, a, a pre-live. I was like, yeah, I know when I set that, I know he'll wake up. Like, right when I go live, he'll be like, hey, what's up? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Because that's how we uh, boomer the interwebs. <laughs> oh, look at Virginia's seal, man. This thing. Uh, hold on. I got This thing is amazing. <laughs> oh, that is. <laughs> you, got, you got Lady Liberty with her titty out stomping on a tyrant <laughs> <laughs> this is hands down the best right. seal of of any state for trials that we've covered so far Six oh that's amazing tyrannus. <laughs> <laughs> oh i like the little crown over to the side too that's beautiful <laughs> she's got her bad dragon dildo in the left hand <laughs> <laughs> She's ready to get down. Uh, that, that's what it is. She didn't beat him. He fainted. He was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Turns out she actually just pegged the tyrant. <laughs> that's what he's left with. <laughs> Attorney Tom getting stepped on down there on the ground. Oh, my God. I'm going to I'm going to Photoshop Tom's face. <laughs> oh, God, that would be beautiful. Uh, actually, if anybody in the chat wants to go ahead and jump on that, you Photoshop me on the top and Tom on the bottom, uh, that, that might make it to the show. I'm just saying it, that might make it to the show. That might make it to the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, here we are guys, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. It's going to kick off. Uh, this is, this is the defamation case. This is it. This is going to trial. It's one of the first um, meet high profile, any profile, Me Too styled uh, defamation cases that's that's making it into a courtroom, and uh, that that is huge news. That is huge yeah. news because uh, the way the way defamation works is it doesn't. Uh, defamation cases do not tend to function very well. They're very very hard, especially the higher profile you get. Because you have to prove what's called actual malice. That means that the person who lied about you, uh, who defamed you, had knowledge of the falsity. Now, that seems pretty obvious. When people tell lies, they tend to know it's a lie. What is much less obvious is proving that. <laughs> is trying to prove that they knew with evidence. Because you can get people to reasonably infer that someone is lying. But you have to prove it. You have to present evidence that they knew of the lie, which is usually a, a message of some sort that says uh, that indicates that they they knew what they were doing wasn't true. We're past all that. We're past these sort of dismissal things. I mean, they're going to they're going to talk about that. That's an element of defamation if they have to prove that out in court. But they don't have to actually do more than what they've done to get the issue in front of the jury. So now what they have to do is convert the legal arguments into understandable, sympathetic arguments for a jury to digest, which means the jury isn't doing these like in-depth legal analyses, comparing this to the New York times versus Sullivan standard. They're just going to go in there and then they're going to stand up and tell them what they said, tell them how it was a lie, and then let the jury determine if they could, you know, figure out that Amber Heard knew she was lying when she did this. And that's, that's huge. When, when defamation cases that make sense get into trial, um, you know, people are able to kind of figure it out. 
Yeah, this one, th this one. Luckily, they didn't hide a lot of the a lot of the evidence either. You know, you have a uh, you have co-conspirator letters behind the scenes. I mean, it's a uh, what a what a train wreck. <laughs> but it, like you said, explaining that you got to show it to the jury. I'm uh, you. They've got a they've got a good case, but oh, I, I, I'm hoping presentation. Yep. So what we're what we're looking for in this trial, and this is this is the advantage. This is one of the one of the rare advantages we get. We're going to be looking at what should be top shelf legal representation on both sides. I mean, these these will be uh, these are the lawyers, the best that money can buy because they've got the best money behind it. Right. These are celebrity lawyers in, in, a, in a word. They they are very expensive. You can infer their oh, yeah. clients will have paid and will continue to pay for whatever representation they need to, they believe they need to do. There should be no limits on their, uh, their ability to pursue this case from a resource perspective. I mean, you're, you're talking about the, uh, this should be the pinnacle legal representation. And the reason I say that is because I just want you to be prepared to be disappointed. <laughs> That's yep. what I'm going to say. Yeah, we're going to ask Rodney to resign. Please be seated. Okay, here we go. We're, good morning, Judy. Can you hear everything okay today? Okay, good. All right, good morning. Good morning, Ryan. All right, do we have any preliminary matters before the jury comes out? Um, yes, we would just ask the uh, Honor to please publish our brief demonstrative. All right, there's no objection to that? People have changed places here. I just want to make sure we look in the right place. Okay. okay I'm gonna, I got this boosted uh, right really high. I'm going to turn it down. On the boost, okay. it's a little distorted. Most courts have shit audio. We tried it out beforehand. It's work. If it's a blank screen, it's hard to see if it's working or not. It is published, Thank you. but it's just a blank screen, I guess. Okay, we're gonna hope that's that's it then. All right. Thank you. Anything other yeah, else we have? All right. We're ready for the jury. Okay. Great. Right. Apparently, some of the jury didn't know who she was. They were asked, um, you know, do you know who Depp is? Yeah. Do you know who she is? <laughs> no. One jury member actually said uh, his wife thought she was psychotic, but that's okay. He could form his own choices. <laughs> <laughs> see. Here we go. We didn't, uh, un you know, looks like we didn't have a Nicholas Cruz trial moment. Uh, did you, do you see that? The, the Parkland shooter where one oh. of the, um, one of the jurors got off of jury duty by saying that she had to visit her sugar daddy. <laughs> jury, would, <laughs> jury would interfere with it. And the judge is like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> uh, that would have been amazing. I, that, that's going to be my excuse. If I ever need out of a uh, jury, <laughs> sugar daddy, don't play. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be gone that long. <laughs> Upgrade going to get his money. <laughs> Uh, while they wait for the bride to come in, let me catch some of these super chats here. Uh, first, you, just, uh, you can sit down. Sir J Dog 21, thank you for the very large donation. Says, decided I wanted to read for fun for the first time since I was like five. So I bought the Overlord. Right. Light nice, novels. I can have you move your water down by your chair and just not have anything there. If we get electronics, if we mess up the electronics, I, I get in trouble. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope you like the seat that you're in. I'd like you to stay in that seat the for the duration. I'd really appreciate sharp. it. I hope you had a good evening. All right. Ooh. Thank you. And thank you for being punctual today. I appreciate it. You can have a seat. The judge looks like a 12 year old boy on a high school debate team. Uh, <laughs> right. Oh, so Are you I ready the opening statements? Yes. Uh, Overlord right. Light ahead, Novels. Sir. Since I watched the anime and read the manga, kind of addicted now. Please save me from this in Mark Richards' voice. Have fun with the trial. Look, Your Honor, we need Good this morning. man away from light novels. We're starting My show. name is Ben Chu. <laughs> My colleagues and I from Brown Rudnick are truly honored to represent the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp. Some of you may recognize Mr. Depp from seeing him portray characters such as Edward Scissorhands, or Captain Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of they the Caribbean. They just turned him down. Yep, notice that. For nearly 30 years, Mr. Depp built a reputation as one of the most talented actors in Hollywood. A respected artist whose name was associated with success 
at the box office. Today, his name is associated with a lie, a false statement uttered by his former wife, the defendant Amber Heard, that falsely cast Mr. Depp, falsely and unfairly characterized, cast Mr. Depp as a villain, a man who would violently abuse a woman. And they killed the volume. This is a defamation. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. <laughs> it's a case about how devastating words can be when they are false and uttered publicly. Under the law, a person who makes a false statement about someone else can be held responsible for the harm that results from that falsehood. Stop showing Amber Heard. That's because words matter. They paint a picture in our mind based on what we have experienced and what we know or what we think we know. And because of that, Words can evoke strong emotions in the listener and cause irreparable harm to a person's reputation. And when, like Mr. Depp, your career depends upon your image and your reputation, or whether movie producers want their films associated with you, that harm can be particularly devastating. This is a case about the impact of Amber Heard's words on Johnny Depp, specifically the words that she used in an op-ed published in the Washington Post in December 2018, which is shown on the screens. And the op-ed was published, and this is no accident the evidence will show, on the eve of her first major acting role in the movie Aquaman. The evidence will show that's no coincidence. The evidence will show the words that Ms. Heard used, which are the subject of Mr. Depp's defamation suit against her. And there are three statements that we respectfully God. ask each of you to focus on. Statement number they just one. just killed the quote, volume. I that's crazy, man. Against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. Statement number two. Two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. And I want to repeat that because you're going to hear that throughout the case because the timing here is critical. Two years ago, I became a public figure representing no, domestic guys. abuse. I didn't turn the court volume down. Statement the court turned three. his mic down. Quote, yeah, they, they bottomed it out. <laughs> or this stream. I'm going to see if I can find another one. Real time, how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Unquote. Ms. Heard did not use Mr. Depp's name in the op-ed. She didn't have to. She didn't have to. Because the evidence will show that everyone in Hollywood, where Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard both have their careers, and many others outside Hollywood, knew exactly what she was talking about when she used the word two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. That's because, as the evidence will show, and you will hear, two years earlier, on May 27th, 2016, Ms. Heard had publicly accused Johnny Depp, her husband at the time, of domestic abuse. You will learn during the trial that Ms. Heard's actions were prompted by Mr. Depp's request for a divorce. He wanted out, which drove her to concoct, to make up a story that was, at first, designed to keep him. And then when he made it clear that finally, after all he had endured, he was done, was designed to recast herself as an abuse survivor with Mr. Depp as the alleged abuser. The evidence will show 
that six days after Mr. Depp requested a divorce, and he did so politely, and three days after Ms. Hurd's lawyer threatened Mr. Depp with claims of a <laughs> Lazy and I have the volume maxed out completely. Financial I'm going to turn us down, I guess. Ms. Hurd arrived at the courthouse in Los Angeles, California, to file for a restraining Whisper stream alleging abuse. Ms. Hurd, the evidence will show that Ms. Hurd showed up with a mark on her face that mysteriously appeared six days after she last saw Mr. Depp. <laughs> and, and six days before, she publicly filed a request for a domestic violence restraining order alleging abuse. The evidence will show that her publicist and the paparazzi were there at the courthouse to document the event to make sure that Johnny Depp's name was forever associated with the image of an innocent, battered woman. It was a jolt. It was a shocking story splashed across front pages across the country. No one had ever in five decades accused Johnny Depp of being violent with a woman. No one had ever accused Mr. Depp of being violent with a woman. He had been in other long-term relationships. He had children. <laughs> okay. They're already off with an objection during opening statements. This is great. I wonder what the, uh, what the objection is to him never having been accused of uh, violence against a woman. I wonder, I wonder what they're going, <laughs> what possible, possible objection they could have to him saying that. Well, it's interesting. One of the people in here has uh, been to court for violence against women. Hint, it's not Johnny Depp. Whoa. Yep. Whoa. I'm glad he brought up the mysterious disappearing uh, bruise, though. You know, May 21st, no bruises, all the way to May 27th, a bruise. May 28th, the bruise goes away. So it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he brought that up. Yeah, that, I mean, clearly that, that type of stuff is going to be a big part of the case. This is a lie. Here's the fabrication. Uh, this is what, uh, here's how we know it's a fabrication. It's obvious. No one. <laughs> oh. As I stated before. A little bit better audio. No one had ever, in five decades, no one had ever accused Johnny Depp of being abusive of any kind with a woman. That's why it was such a jolt. He had been in other long-term relationships, as I said. He had two children. And no one had even suggested ever that he was capable of something like this. By choosing to lie about her husband for her own personal benefit, Amber Heard forever changed Mr. Depp's life and reputation. And you will hear him tell you the dreadful impact that it has had on his life. The evidence you will hear at this trial contradicts the story Ms. Heard presented to the world in May 2016 and again in December 2018. The evidence will show that the last time Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd saw each other before Ms. Hurd showed up in court on May 27, 2016, was May 21st. And that's a very important date. And I will ask you please to remember that through the trial. Mr. Depp's mother, Betty Sue, passed away on May 20th after a long illness when Johnny and his sister Christy had been taking care of, of his mother for a very long period of time. And for reasons that Mr. Depp will personally explain to you throughout the course of this trial, he had resolved to divorce Ms. Hurt. So on May 21st, Mr. Depp came by the apartment that he shared with Ms. Hurd in the Eastern Columbia Building, or the ECB, as some people <coughs> refer to it, to tell her that, to pick up his things, and to say goodbye. There is no dispute that soon after Mr. Depp ended things 
with Ms. Hurd and left the apartment on May 21st, he got on a plane to head out on a European tour, a music tour, for months with his band, The Hollywood Vampires. Johnny Depp has a band? And Ms. Hurd knew that he was going off on tour and out of state when she walked into court to get the restraining order, which she obtained ex parte. It's a Latin word, fancy word, but all it means is that Mr. Depp and his lawyer were not there and had no opportunity to be heard. That's what an ex parte order is. You will hear from the police officers who responded to a 911 call on May 21st after Mr. Depp left. The police officers will testify that they saw no injuries on Ms. Hurd. Both police officers will testify that they saw no injuries on Ms. Hurd. Nor did the police officers see any of the property damages that you will hear Ms. Hurd claims existed in the apartments that evening. And you will hear those officers under oath testify that there was no violence and that there was no crime. You will also hear from multiple witnesses who, like the police officers, saw Ms. Hurd between May 21 and May 26. Those are the crucial days between the alleged incident and the day she walked into court with her lawyer and got an ex parte order. And those witnesses will testify that they saw her without any marks, any signs of injury on her face. And you will hear from multiple witnesses, including Brandon Patterson, who is the manager of the Eastern Columbia building where Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd lived together. You will hear Mr. Pat Patterson say that, they, that he saw, and others will say as well, that they saw a surveillance video from the week of May 21st that showed Ms. Hurd's sister, Whitney, throw a fake punch at Ms. Hurd's face. Now let's just stop there. This is a surveillance video, video you will hear about where the sister of the alleged victim threw a fake punch at her sister, allegedly, which allegedly occurred this Alleged. incident only allegedly. A, a couple of days earlier. Ms. Hurd acting out being punched, responding to the fake punch, and the two laughing about it. So you have the alleged victim and the sister laughing about a fake punch. And you will have to decide for yourself, or we ask that you please decide for yourself. <laughs> Would anyone ever joke about that? Are you serious? If there had been actual yeah, abuse, in the, much less. In the elevator, they have footage of her sister acting it out fake. Ever joke with an alleged victim about being punched by her I husband. mean, but... This line of reasoning that of he's going course, down is kind of so none of this suspect. contradicting evidence was publicly available when Ms. Hurd walked into court on May 27th and got her restraining order. Instead, as you can imagine, the media storm was instantaneous. You will hear about and see. Some I can't of wait till she starts coverage, crying, which published pictures of Ms. Hurd walking into court. Another picture because I love seeing women in tears showing injury <laughs> supposedly caused by Mr. Depp, a man who had never been accused of abuse of a woman. The evidence will show that Mr. Depp and Miss Heard. Hey, what up, Nate? Yo, you're watching the Me Too. I'm about to, I got the coof. I'm about to go to the doctor and have him tell me what I need to do. But I'm going to stop in here and see what's up with my boy. What's going on, Nick? Just watching this opening statement. But Ms. Hurd's false claim that Mr. Depp had abused her remained in the public sphere. It didn't go away. The images were permanent. And the evidence will show that two years later, which is why we're pointing to that, that reference in the op-ed, 
in the wake of the Me Too. I hope Johnny wins, bro. This is the, the first Me Too case where he was Me too and now he's like, I'm suing you for defamation. This is going to be good. Yep. Did you say defamation? About you festering out here, <laughs> this time under the banner of a national, international newspaper, the Washington Post. In the op-ed, in her op-ed, Ms. Hurd again painted herself as the innocent victim of abuse. But this time, this time with a wider audience primed to take action against an in industry powerhouses accused of abuse. The evidence will show that the clear implication in Ms. Hurd's op-ed that you have in front of you Ashley Harris, and if you say shut up or we will stop watching, I'll encourage you to stop watching. This is a commentary <laughs> channel. There are plenty of places to watch the this without commentary. Will show that that was a lie. I, I love the, we want you to shut up so we can hear it. And republished two years later. Like, why are you watching it then? Watch somewhere else. We want to deal with the public backlash from hiring someone accused of abuse. I told my wife, if we ever get divorced and Amber Heard's available, I like crazy. Mr. I don't know why I like crazy, boy. I like crazy. If I was Johnny, I'd be taking it all, baby. I'm like, ah, she crapped in the bed again. This is what you got to deal with. Just remember, that's not a mint on your pillow. <laughs> and the evidence will show that Ms. Heard's false allegations had a significant impact on Mr. Depp's family and his ability to work in the profession he loved and loved to bring joy to everyone. Ultimately, this trial is about clearing Mr. Depp's name of a terrible That's all this is about. Default. This is all about clearing his name. He yeah. doesn't care about the win. He just clues he about getting the story out. In the next several weeks, to please, What's up, Mr. Branca? please carefully consider the evidence. Assess hey the guys, I can't hear what's happening in court. credibility of that I'm evidence. Jabbering. That, that's a, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been watching your, your coverage on this other case. It's pretty, pretty interesting. I didn't even know it was, it was occurring. What was the case, Dan? Barrison. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Another guy with Thank woman problems. For your, for your hey, I'm just here mind. to see what kind of uh, human blender Johnny Depp stuck his man parts into. Wait, is, is he doing a warm handoff to another oh, attorney? Yeah. I wonder if she has better mic etiquette. She's got a lapel mic. Oh, all right. You may have to turn it up a little bit. You may need to turn it on. Hand it off to a female. That's yeah. it. Well, they got to get a female in here at some point, right? Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, there's not one at the defense table. <laughs> <laughs> she just hey. looks. She looks like a poisonous snake, doesn't she? Like, don't you know? Just looking at her, like, stay away. <laughs> Danger. Don't you say anything bad about my soon-to-be ex-ex-wife. <laughs> Good morning. Oh. Over the course of this trial, you're going to have an opportunity to get to know Johnny Depp. Her mic is uh, shit. And I'm going to torture you with this audio. You will hear from Mr. Depp directly. And you will also hear from his friends. You will find from my client, or you will hear like this permanently. <laughs> oh. You will hear from people who have known him for decades. I'm sorry to speaking to you from uh, underwater, but I'm actually a fish. And they will tell you, each of them, that he is a kind soul who has never and would never raise a hand to a woman. You will hear that Mr. Depp learned at a very young age how to coexist with an abusive woman. Ooh. You will learn from Mr. Depp's sister. I guess so that's his thing. And from Mr. Depp, that their mother, Betty Sue, lived in a constant state. I'm of off to the doctors, guys. I will see you guys later. If they give me six months to live, good luck. I'll be here. Right, for good the luck, buddy. Months. Directed at her husband and their children. And you will hear how Mr. Depp, who had the personality of his father, coped with that abuse. In the same way his father did. He just took it. <laughs> By smacking that hoe around. Now you will show 
that Mr. Depp learned that the best way to deal with violence was to leave, to get away from it, give her time to cool down. But he never turned his back on his mother. Mr. Depp loved his mother and he cared for her until the day she died. You will hear how Mr. Depp came to Los Angeles as a teenager. He first planned to be a musician, then became an what, actor. What's with this reading off the piece of paper? Thanks to his talent, I don't know. his dedication. I mean, was she just like, like drafted and yesterday to be on the legal team? I mean, grew into one she doesn't know what she, she planned to say. He had relationships with major figures in Hollywood and elsewhere. Like it's a bad look. Fifty million or something at stake here. What, what's he suing for? And before he met Amber Heard, fifty million. Yeah. He was the same yeah. I mean, role. come on, prep a little Vanessa bit. Paradis. For fourteen years, he had two children with her, and even though he was a megastar, they had a quiet domestic life. In fact, you'll hear. If you're gonna use a told you notes, that Mr. Depp get at a podium. Mr. Depp's fifty-eight years. The point of being a podium is to have you. Violence. But if you put something in front and of you, no you may as well be a fucking Hollywood podium. Or the world had any reason to believe he was an abuser until Ms. Heard publicly accused him in 2016. You're also going to hear evidence about Ms. Heard. You're going to learn that she's a profoundly troubled person who manipulates the people around her just like she manipulated Mr. Depp. Ms. Heard came to Los Angeles and sought a career in acting after Mr. Depp was well established as a movie star. Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard first met in 2009 on the set of the film The Rum Diary. There was a significant. There's a clue. <laughs> at first, he avoided her advances. Hey, how about the crackhead diaries? I'm sure you'll meet a nice gal there. The evidence will show that Ms. Heard went to great lengths to win him over by playing the doting girlfriend. And it worked. He fell head over heels in love with her. Who doesn't like a doting girlfriend? Those who watch this relationship. Especially when it looks like Amber Heard. Right. Oh, Just can't give him your real name. You will hear from them in this trial. And over time, the real Miss Heard began to emerge. She would berate him, scream at him. He would try to appease her. And sometimes, <laughs> just sometimes, Things would get better. Well, he should have just married her. He would have gotten all that for free. Happen again. <laughs> the evidence will show that Mr. Depp started coping with Miss Heard in the same way he did as a child. He would try to get away, avoid the conflict. But his trying to leave enraged Miss Heard. She would resort to physical violence, throwing things at him, hitting him. She would tell him he was a coward. She would tell him he wasn't man enough because he wouldn't <laughs> stay and fight with her. You will see that Miss Heard equated anger and violence with passion. She would apologize with poetic excuses as if the violence just proved how fierce and overwhelming her love for him was. And you're going to hear that when Miss Heard got violent, Mr. Depp would just retreat, just as he did with his mother. He would try to leave, to get away from her. In her words, Ms. Heard's words, he would split. Mr. Depp would often retreat into bathrooms, lock the doors, wait out Ms. Heard's aggression, but his leaving just provoked her more. You will hear from Mr. Depp's security people, like Sean Bett, I hope she finishes with, and she also hate pup, hates puppies, that Heard, bitch. Screaming at him, chasing him, <laughs> trying to keep him from leaving. You're going to hear evidence that when Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard traveled together, his team routinely had to book an extra room. You joke, but that's part of her defense. So that he had somewhere to go, but Ms. Heard became enraged. You'll hear from other witnesses including Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard's marriage counselor. Her name is Dr. Laurel Anderson, who perceived Ms. Heard as the aggressor in the relationship. Ms. Heard as the aggressor in the relationship. The one who would strike Mr. Depp to try to keep him from leaving. You'll hear from medical professionals 
who were with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, often on a daily basis for years, including their doctor, David Kipper, and Ms. Hurd's personal nurse, her personal assigned nurse, Erin hey, Check, Moran, pr check Hello, private chat real quick. Who did not see any signs of injuries that Ms. Hurd later testified to in graphic detail. Ms. Hurd wants you to ignore the testimony of these medical professionals who saw her in real time. Just as she wants you to ignore the testimony of the police officers who testified under oath, who saw her on May 21st, 2016. Well, she had to keep him from staying tan. But it is up to you, ladies and gentlemen of this jury, to judge the credibility of these witnesses and that of Ms. Hurd. In this trial, Ms. Hurd will undoubtedly present photos that supposedly show injuries she sustained as a result of the claimed abuse by Mr. Depp. Here's what you should keep in mind when you see these photographs. One, she First, earned it. The evidence and expert <laughs> testimony from a forensic pathologist, a doctor, will show that the injuries reflected in these photographs are not consistent with the brutal allegations of abuse Ms. Hurd has alleged. Second, there are multiple, multiple witnesses, including medical <laughs> this reading from the paper really and police me. officers who will testify that they did not I mean, they just could have pulled somebody out of the gallery to do this. Reflected in these photographs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. And you may be wondering, how can that be? Well, you will hear expert testimony that none of these photographs are the originals, not one. And many are stored in an editing program. So they could have been manipulated and cannot be confirmed as authentic. Importantly, you will not see a single photograph of the vast majority of the abuse alleged by Ms. Hurd. Not one. And there is not a single photograph or video showing Mr. Depp becoming physically violent towards Ms. Hurd. <laughs> Chad just said, the if his attorney was Brittany Bray's sister. <laughs> during their relationship was a severe one, and it was sustained by Mr. Depp. After an argument shortly after their marriage, while the couple was in Australia. You will hear evidence that the people who cared about Mr. Depp were encouraging him to have a prenuptial agreement with Ms. Hurd, but she rushed the wedding date. Oh my God, he had no prenup? Without one. Nope. <laughs> After the wedding, again, people close to Mr. Depp encouraged Oh man, my sympathy her meter just went to zero. When the topic came up, she, she, chucked, she took his finger off when he asked for one. At the suggestion that Mr. Depp might leave her. She berated him, and when he tried to leave, she became violent. She became so violent, in fact, she threw a vodka bottle at him that hit his hand and exploded. It severed the end of one of his fingers. Maybe something he ends up teaching like high school theater someplace in the, in the Midwest. And learn about his emergency it's Like a sadder Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> and then you'll learn, and this is important, Years later. A good prenup can save you, my friends. Abuse, Especially if you videotape the signing. That caused Mr. Depp to file this. Have him affirm lawsuit. every paragraph. Miss Hurd came up with an elaborate yeah, there, There's a story misconception that prenups aren't effective because a Australia. couple prenups have been pierced. What she said happened. The vast majority of them work. Yeah, a very, bad prenup well won't save you. A good prenup. Where is, she uh, was violently attacked. When they're properly done, they're effective. Sexually assaulted by Mr. Depp. You will see for yourself that the evidence does not support the story she told after she was sued. You will learn that there came a time when Mr. Depp was done. And you have to wonder, I mean, with this tale of torture, years of torture that he was supposed to be subject to, how much must she have rocked in bed for him to put up with all that for so many years? I mean, passed away. That should be her defense. You will hear from Mr. Yeah, Dunn, I did all that, but passing I earned it. Was a wake up call that helped confirm what he already knew that the relationship with Ms. Hurd wasn't working and that Ms. Hurd was not going to change. If you've ever lost a parent, you 
you understand how much this experience can change your perspective on what is important for your own well-being. If she stands up, is she wearing a diaper? So Mr. Depp resolved <laughs> to finally divorce Ms. Heard. Crinkle bottom Amber Heard. And told her that very day that he would do so respectfully and most importantly, discreetly. The evidence will show that on May 21st, 2016, when Mr. Depp went over to the Eastern Columbia building to gather his things, Ms. Heard caused a final dramatic scene. In the wreckage of their relationship, why would he go himself to pick up his stuff? Doesn't have people that can do that for him? Between them, into a he had security with him as well. Piece. Now I understand that many of you may be asking yourselves, why? Why did Miss Heard say that Mr. Depp abused her during their relationship if it didn't actually happen? Why did She's she make bitch. up the detailed, dramatic tales of abuse that you will surely hear in this courtroom? over the coming weeks. By the end of this trial, you will have the answer to that question. The evidence will show exactly who Ms. Heard is. You will hear from Mr. Depp and other witnesses, including their marriage counselor, Dr. Laurel Anderson, <laughs> A trial that Ms. Heard six will go lawyers. great lengths and even resort to physical violence to stop Mr. Depp from leaving her. But once Mr. Depp did leave, Ms. Heard tried to avoid public humiliation and present herself as a noble survivor and representative of the Me Too movement. You will hear evidence, including the testimony of Ms. Heard's former personal assistant, Kate James, that Ms. Heard is obsessed with her public image. It's her number one priority. And you will see evidence that after she received a $7 million divorce settlement from Mr. Depp, Ms. Heard released a public statement claiming she wanted nothing from him and would donate the entire settlement to two charities, the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles in California and the American Civil Liberties Union, also known as the ACLU. But then, she did not make the donations. <laughs> Quite simply, Miss Heard million. publicly cast herself she did. as the role yeah. of a domestic abuse survivor. There was no going back. When Mr. Depp finally stood up and fought for his good name in court by filing this lawsuit, Miss Heard, because she couldn't back down, went all. After this lawsuit was filed, and it's important, the timeline here, after this lawsuit was filed, Ms. Heard started making up more and more alleged incidents of abuse. And if you'll recall, ladies and gentlemen, the headline of the op-ed references sexual violence. But Ms. Heard had never made that accusation against Mr. Depp. It was never part of her allegations of abuse. So what changed? What changed between 2016 and 2018? We submit to you, and the evidence will show, when she realized the seriousness of what she had alleged, she panicked and she alleged sexual assault. Ms. Heard and her lawyers are going to tell you some truly horrific tales of abuse before this trial is over. But the horrific details are designed. They're designed to shock you and to overwhelm you. They are designed to be explosive. And they are designed to distract you from the evidence and most importantly, from common sense. That tells you, the common sense and the evidence will tell you that it is all a lie. That none of this not one single alleged incident of abuse could have happened as Ms. Heard claims. Ms. Heard's pattern is consistent. She tells a lie, then covers up that lie with still more lies in a constantly changing, evolving, ever more dramatic story. They're going to hear a Very lot Very common in these types of cases. Ms. Heard is going to tell you a lot of things about him. 
that he abused drugs and alcohol, that he used bad and offensive language. And it's true that Mr. Depp has had real struggles with substance abuse in his life. He's not denying that. You may know people close to you who have struggled too. But struggling with drugs and alcohol doesn't make you an abuser. He has also used some very colorful language. He uses words that I don't use, and you probably don't. Oh, use. yes, you do. And he uses them <laughs> Mr. Depp, like all of us, is not perfect, but he did not abuse. <laughs> no kidding. Her. All of this is just meant to distract you from what this A hot case young is about. lawyer. She never uses profanity, though. <laughs> this case is about what Ms. Herb said in her op ed. The evidence will show that Ms. Herb painted a picture of herself as a heroic, innocent survivor of abuse by Mr. Depp. She painted herself like one of her French girls. Who finally stood up to her tormentor. The evidence will show that Ms. Herb used her allegations against Mr. Depp to raise her own profile and to advance her own career. The very same day that the op-ed was published under the title, quote, I spoke up against sexual violence, end quote. She posted that article that's now displayed on your screens. Well, it's in the Washington and Post. The title, there's a lie. Page, right along with an announcement that she was becoming an ACLU ambassador on women's rights to make sure that, quote, women and girls can live free from violence, end quote. She presented herself as the face of the Me Too movement, the virtuous representative of innocent women across the country and the world who have truly suffered abuse. The evidence will show that was a lie. And the evidence will show that Ms. Heard betrayed Mr. Depp as the representative of abusers everywhere. I don't like her the reading. The agent Jesus, of her though. suffering. It's annoying. The villain in her heroic journey. That was a lie, too. And more than just a lie, it was an act of cruelty. Mr. Depp will go to his grave knowing that whatever he does, there are people out there in this world he who will always brought believe a big bottle of Stoli into court with him. <laughs> Just spin off the lid with one bottle. Chug it right there. It's also a case about what a man named Adam Waldman said. Adam Waldman is a lawyer who has worked for Mr. Depp. After, again, the timeline, after Mr. Depp filed this case against her, Ms. Heard filed her own claim against Mr. Depp, which is also the subject of this trial. In her claim, Ms. Heard says that Mr. Depp defamed her because Adam Waldman, his attorney, made some statements to reporters denying the truth of her claims of abuse. Adam Waldman is not in this courtroom. Ms. Heard chose not to name him in her claim. And I won't take up too much of your time with a discussion of her claim against Mr. Depp, except to say a few things. The evidence will show that I'd those just like to read you the following. weren't even made by Mr. Depp. They were made by Adam Walden. And Mr. Walden, the evidence will show, is not under Mr. Depp's control. The statements were merely Mr. Waldman's opinions, made in justified defense of his client and friend, Mr. Depp. I love this idea. Mr. Waldman the lawyer's not allowed to speak publicly on behalf of their client. That's <laughs> ridiculous. At the end of the day, Mr. Waldman's statements merely reflected the reality that we intend to prove in this trial, that Ms. Hurd's portrayal of herself as a victim of domestic violence at the hands of Mr. Depp is a lie. Ms. Hurd, as you know, is an actress. When she accused Mr. Depp of abuse and painted herself before the world as a representative She's writing down a new allegation. Everywhere, Ms. Hurd took on the role of a lifetime. She can't back down. She has been living and breathing this lie for years now. And she has been preparing 
to give the performance of her life in this trial. But this trial is about the evidence. It's about a man's reputation. And it's about his whole life. His ability to walk down the street, look people in the eye, without having them think he's an abuser. It's about the truth. And the truth will come out in this trial. At the end of this trial, we will ask you to render a verdict for Mr. Depp. We will ask you to tell the world that he is not the abuser. They should have had Chris Rock do this opening. And that she is not the victim <laughs> she portrayed. And we will ask you to tell Ms. Hurd that what she did was wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Vasquez. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a little early, but maybe we should go ahead and take our morning break, just since it's a natural point to have a break before we have the second opening statement, okay? So why don't we go ahead and take a 15-minute uh, recess. Just uh, remember, do not talk, discuss the case and don't do any outside research, okay? All right, you're free to go. Oh, hey, oh. there's a uh, <clears throat> there's Eve Barlow. That's the one that keeps trying to strike my fucking channel. <laughs> <laughs> Tug, you have managed to piss all these people off in dramatic fashion. Oh, man, I love it. I like to I'm like, oh, I drown in that salt. I love it. I have been I've been struck. Um, I was counting them last night. I actually, I've been struck 11 times by this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh. Uh, well, so uh, opinions on the opening statement, anyone? I mean, I I'll give mine, but I'd love to open it up to you guys first. I, I, I would have an informed opinion. I think they're all crazy. I would have liked them not to read it off a piece of paper. Uh, that would have been nice. Um, they actually, uh, they conceded one thing that I would not have conceded. They said uh, he wasn't named in the article that she wrote. Uh, they should have brought up they drafted it behind the scenes and they very much they very much named him in it that <laughs> they they should have that that is one of the major talking points that they're going to grab on i didn't even i didn't name him how could i damage him it could have been anybody but no i mean there are early drafts of it that were leaked when she was uh, conspiring with the aclu that very much say it it was like two years ago when i got my restraining order from my then husband that was one of the early draft lines so yeah it's about him <laughs> The, but that uh, part wasn't published. It wasn't right. published, and the so that's a big problem. But the the other thing uh, about that, and I'm sure they'll they'll get to this as probably part of the closing argument when they one when they've proved that out. But two, uh, it'll be. Um, I th I think the the trick will be that everyone knew who she was talking about, right? Like that's yeah. that's the thing. He's still identifiable. And the jury will have to decide if they could figure out who she's talking about with the article, if it was when, obvious, which it became to, obvious pretty quickly. When you're trying to prove uh, like actual malice in this, um, how does she, you know, she's under non-disclosure agreement. She's not supposed to be talking about this anyway. And she, you know, in, incites these people to write a, uh, <laughs> a, a hit piece. Essentially they help her write it. They read, they probably wrote about 85% of it behind the scenes. Like, does that work into the argument at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, you make it part of the argument, but re so remember the, the trick here is that all of the, the legal mumbo jumbo around defamation, like actual malice as a standard is gone because a jury doesn't, a jury doesn't have, uh, eight, <laughs> 8,000 cases, uh, rounding out defamation <laughs> law floating around in their head. So you, they, what they have to do is they have to prove that she knew that she lied but really, they just have to convince the jury that she lied. Like, that's, that's what they have to do practically. Yeah. Because the jury isn't going to be applying that complex legal standard uh, with all the baggage attached to it. But, uh, but yeah, someone in the, in the chat had asked a question earlier, um, and, and I don't remember what it was. It was a really good question that I was going to answer. Uh, to the person in the chat who would, who would ask the question, re-ask it and tag me because I, I forgot what it was. But it was it was good, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll hit that. Uh, I'll hit that question. I'll hit it harder than Johnny Depp hit Amber Heard. Uh, 
Um, okay, I I did switch the uh, the feed over to um, to the Sky News feed. Yeah. Did you uh, listen to that a, at all to see what it's? Yeah, about? they have a little bit better audio that should be a little easier to manage. Um, it's their their base, like you said, the base audio is just louder, so it's a little more flexible on our end. But I mean the 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 mic stuff that happened during that opening statement had a lot to do with what was going on uh, at the courthouse because yeah. the Johnny Depp's lawyer came in really hot at first, like his, his audio was really loud, and then they just dropped his level down to like ten percent. And when, then when, when oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say when Amber Heard's is raised, when they come back, I'm gonna start screaming about it. You know, I'm gonna be like, oh, it's a conspiracy. You know, yeah, because it sounds good. <laughs> Well, it, it kind of uh, kind of seems like it, it right? Does. Like right when Deb's lawyer gets started, they they crush his volume, and mm. you could just go back and uh, and listen to it. it. The change was dramatic on on my end. I don't know, maybe maybe it wasn't so dramatic on on the streams end, but it was it was crazy. Everybody thought I did something. I I did nothing. Uh, that was that was all on the court, or or whoever's managing the court audio feed. Man, Amber, uh, doing a lot of that eye rolling. She can't. She can't help herself. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Someone on Twitter gave me the very helpful advice that there's an audio boosting extension uh, to boost your audio to six hundred percent. I apparently not watching me actually boost the volume by six hundred percent using that exact same as extension. <laughs> uh, there's there's only so much you can do. Uh, with with the source audio stuff, but uh, that's that's it. I, I do have that extension here. I, I will, I, I can I can prove it. Now this one I ha I, I haven't boosted to six hundred percent yet because uh, we haven't gotten it. So I have it at three ten here, but on the other one it was it was six hundred. It was boosted all the way, so it's not. Uh, I, I did turn us down to compensate, of course. I'm trying to find out, like, of all the people there, um, I, I had a, I'm going to say, source hit me up and be like, hey, if you're here, uh, why don't you come hang out? So if they do, I'm going to, I'm going to red eye my ass out there and see if I can uh, <laughs> get some good interviews. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Hell yeah. Oh, boy. Um, so that's uh, the opening statement for Johnny Depp. Uh, it was, it was robust. It was brief. In a good way, I know it was it was like fifty minutes, um, but really, with a an expected six week trial, with all of the witnesses that they've got, with uh, with they could have really drilled down into every single detail about the case. They could have done that, and I'm glad that they didn't. This isn't a complicated case. It's a simple case. It's a case about a lie, a lie that destroyed a guy's life. And that's what you need to know. And by the way, we know she's a liar because she lies here. She does this stuff. She's abused him. Uh, all of the stuff that she's accusing him of is something she has done. And this is part of the pattern of abuse. Johnny Depp, all he's wanted to do his entire time since Amber Heard turned on the bitch was to get away. And that's what he's trying to still do today is just get away from her and she won't let him when when he leaves she pursues and abuses that's the narrative i think she, they could have tidied that up a little better at the end and really drilled home that that's what this case is about this is a case about a man just trying to leave and trying to get himself away from pain and the person who is pursuing him wanting to turn it on every single time and this this defamation is part of that same abuse that she was carrying out before. He cannot get away. I would have wanted to see a little bit more of that, but I think it still comes through. So minor, minor stylistic criticisms. My major stylistic criticism, uh, Andrew Branca brought up earlier is that I, I just don't think it looks good standing in front of a jury, holding a piece of paper, reading. That's that's just weird to me. Again, if you're going to use a piece of paper, just get behind the podium. It's OK. Uh, or don't use a piece well, of paper. The main lawyer that should be there was actually knocked off the case. There was a it, in UK 2020 heard turned over all of her uh, evidence from this trial. Every statement, everything just dumped it into uh, the news group network. So they they broke the confidentiality seal on it. Well, uh, Adam Waldman. Uh, Johnny Depp's longtime lawyer. They even mentioned him in, in the opening. He um, 
he put a lot of that stuff online. You know, he was putting up uh, screenshots. Well, she claimed that uh, some of that was under still confidential seal, even though, again, it had been used in another court case. And for whatever reason, the other team, he wasn't, he, he wasn't there uh, arguing it, and they knocked him off the case. So he got knocked Damn. out of uh, Virginia. He would be the main advocate. I mean, he is, he's the one attack dog. That's the one thing that worries me in this. Adam Waldman was a damn attack dog. That's all he did is attack. And, and it, it, was very, it, it was very good. He built this case from nothing. And that's why they're, you were asking, why are they going after, you know, or, or no, you said, oh, a lawyer can't talk about his client. Well, they've thrown him in there because he's the one who built this case from nothing. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's really, it's really is a shame when, when like the, uh, the advocate, right? Like this guy is, uh, this guy is the advocate and that's part of a lawyer's job that people forget about is they're the, the legal advocate, but they're also just the advocate for, um, for their client in all matters, in all cases. If, if Waldman is at a bar and someone brings up Johnny Depp, you know, he really like needs to think about his obligation to say, Hey, you know what? Actually that's bullshit. Uh, and let me tell you why, like that's, that's how deep it goes. That's the the purpose. You are there. You're the sword and shield for this person in public and in trial, and uh, and and to have him thrown off the case like that is is got to be very frustrating. Well, her only so she she's brought a counterclaim, hundred million dollar counterclaim. <laughs> it's uh because again I love mentioning this. It it says in her filing he filed for fifty million. She deserves two times that. So I, th I thought that was hilarious. But the only thing that remains out of that are three <laughs> Solid basis statements for a counterclaim. Oh, <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? It's but crazy actually, math. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, that's not entitled. But she, the only thing remaining in it are three statements by Adam Waldman. Her argument is saying that uh, that he was the mouthpiece for Johnny Depp when he made those. He has no autonomy, so he couldn't have gone out there and just said that because he believes in it. You know, he he didn't have the right. And again, everything else has been stricken off of that, but that three statements. Whew. Uh, did you? Oh, oh no. What is this, Tug? What did you send? It's just one of the <laughs> seal pictures. It's not the one you asked for, but you can check that one out. Oh, hey, wait. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> That's all, all I'm saying is this is bullshit. What is this? Hold on. No. <laughs> no. This is wrong. <laughs> this is, I, I'm not the one who likes getting... Stepped on attorney Thomas. This is trash. <laughs> I'm calling my lawyer. Uh, you're like, I asked for one thing. <laughs> uh, there was, there is another one. I, I do have, let me find it real quick. And then I'll, I'll hit some of the super chats. Uh, right after that. Cause we've got those, uh, backed up. And don't want to don't want to have anything backed up. Just ask Amber Heard. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put all the super chats right on the marital bed. Here we go. There we go. That's a little bit better. Aww. That's what we need. <laughs> now, yeah. Now it really does look like you're carrying something that uh, Murphy might enjoy. He's just tired when you're standing on him there. Yeah, it was a long session. He's yeah. a little little fatigue. A little fatigue. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, let's hit some of these. We've got um, Billy Witch Doctor. Thanks for covering this rackets and tug. Also, Nick, it was refreshing to hear your take on phone cases. They've always seemed like a scam to me. Cell phone cases are garbage, and anybody who likes them, well, you need to consider if you're also garbage. And that's they are the big lie. Uh, Jackson Kai says, "Thanks for making me wake up so early, Nick. Can you inject coffee?" I too tired to drink it oh it it can be injected look if you need that coffee injected uh there's a way to get that caffeine into you real quick dragon's treasure speaking of caffeine says support your friendly neighborhood lawyer use coupon code amber poops in beds uh and you can use that with or without spaces amber poops in beds to get 10 percent off your favorite anime themed tea store at the dragon's treasure.com nick gets a little bit back with every single sale. So yeah, I do. I do get kickbacks from the dragon's treasure. He's a, 
He's a dirty kickbacker, but we love him for it. So Amber poops in beds uh, is the is the coupon code for that. Uh, Don Booz says, just a little background. I live one county over from Fairfax. Fairfax County consistently votes for Democrats. Take what you will from that as to the jury. Well, we do have a minor advantage here in that Johnny Depp is almost certainly a Democrat uh, and and is is whatever he is. He is not like a right wing talking point. Uh, so even if, even amongst um, a, a liberal jury, you will still find people who would be sympathetic to a Johnny Depp. Right. Like that's he's uh, he's the kind of kind of guy that that is not going to be a political divider in a case like this. So that's, that's always nice to have as a client. I mean, did the uh, defense try to strike from the jury? Everybody who's ever been married. They didn't. uh, The jury selection was not public and it was done in under eight hours. Yeah. Well, that's good. I guess, which I, I I guess, I don't know. Three, four week, uh, you know, jury selection things we've seen in some of the trials we cover. I was still surprised that they were done. Tug messaged me at like 3.30 yesterday. He's like, yeah, jury selection's done, so the case is on tomorrow. And I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, it was surprising. Two celebrities uh, in a case that's been brewing forever, but none of the jurors are, are going to be, I guess none of them have ever heard of it. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> some of the some of the stuff was hilarious because the, uh, they were asked if they, they knew who the two people were, and everyone knew who Johnny Depp was, but there were, there were like two people who mentioned Amber Heard. They said, yeah, we kind of know who th- we know Aquaman, but they couldn't remember anything else. And then one juror said, uh, yeah, I, I know her because my wife, uh, he, he pulls up his phone and or he pulls up a message that he had gotten from his wife, uh, apparently saying, yeah, she she says that she's a psychotic, but I can form my own opinions. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can set that aside, Your Honor. Oh, that's good. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sketch EM says your silent trucker still awake. Three iPhones yeeted out of the Jeep. None survived with the case on. So yes, phone cases are trash. You're welcome, chat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, like I said, my, my mom just dropped her iPhone out of a roller coaster at Bush Gardens. And, um, and her phone case is gone. The back of her iPhone, where the case would be, completely shattered. Screen's just fine. So there you go. I'm telling you, they're a scam. Uh, Arosia's NYP says, Nate, we just had 14 people shot and one bomb go off in the subway. Multiple devices found. Blackmail shooters still on the loose. So that's my morning. How's yours? Yes, there was a shooting in uh, New York today. And judges back. There we go. Matt Field says, Commentate louder, daddy. Get wrecked, Holly weirdos. Here's the funny thing. If Amber Heard was suing Johnny Depp, you know this like trial would be directed by John Woo. The audio would be pristine. They would have brought in... <laughs> they would have offered full-on consultations to the court. <laughs> we would have had movie lighting going on. <laughs> well, this seems inappropriate. It looks like the judge and Jenny, Johnny Depp go to the same barber. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, his hair's longer. Uh, yeah, yeah, his hair is much longer. I hope. I hope when I'm on the uh, dark side of fifty, I I can actually, <laughs> you know, I don't look like it's a an old freaking degenerate man, you know. All right. Thank you. All right. Opening statements. I hope I look like that. Yes, sir. Mr. Rottenborn. Right. <laughs> Rottenborn. His name is Rottenborn. Rottenborn. That's you got awesome. A cigar up there on the bench with there. May I approach? Yes, sir. Rotten born. Oh, God. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Ben Rottenborn, and together with Elaine and Adam, I represent Amber Heard. And I will not be In reading a few minutes, a paper. Elaine will get up here and she'll introduce you to Amber. And she'll address the allegations that you just heard. And Mr. Chu and Ms. Vasquez's opening statement. So they're going to do a two-part and she'll two-part explain to you opening also Weird. why all those inflammatory things are things that are designed to mislead you, mislead you from the truth. She'll explain to you what the evidence will show, and that's something that we're going to focus on in this trial, not attempts to distract you. We're going to focus on the evidence. 
not what we wish the evidence showed, not some crazy conspiracy theories, but what the evidence and the facts actually show. And as you assess the evidence in this trial, I would ask that you keep one question in mind above all else, which is this. Why are you here? What are you being asked to decide? Well, they made me You're being show asked up. <laughs> to decide a very simple question. And that question is, were the words that Amber used in the December 18, 2018 contempt. opinion piece that was published in the Washington Post protected free speech under the First Amendment or not? That is the question. And that's what you're being asked to decide. At the end of the trial, the judge will explain to you what the law is on defamation and what <laughs> Mr. Depp's burden or is not? <laughs> to prove in order to establish defamation. And she'll tell you a lot of things about the law, but among them, she'll have to, you, she will tell you that Mr. Depp will have to prove that the words Ms. Heard used were about him and that they were false. And if he can't do that, and if he can't meet the other elements of the claim, then he loses that claim. And he can't do that. He can't come close to doing that. And for that reason, you're going to hear in this trial, Mr. Depp's team is going to make it about trying to distract you from that very simple question. Mr. Depp's team is going to try to turn this case into a soap opera. Why? <laughs> I'm not really sure, because the evidence isn't pretty for Mr. Depp. It's not. You're going to see who the real Johnny Depp is behind the red carpets, behind the fame, behind the money, behind the pirate costumes. You're going to see who that man really is. I've seen Depp's lawyer before. Amber is going to tell you about it. You're going to hear who he really is from other witnesses. And you're going to hear who he really is in his own words, in the vile, graphic, terrible messages that he wrote about Amber and ways he used to describe Amber and what he wanted to do to Amber from the earliest days that they were dating through their marriage and after their marriage. You're going to hear about that. But this case isn't about that. This case isn't about a day-to-day -day chronicle of their marriage. It's not about who is the better spouse. It's not about who you like more. It's not about which party can sling more mud but you're going to hear a lot of that in this trial. <laughs> a lot of it from your client. Because that's yep. what Mr. Depp a little more than mud. Case into. <laughs> he wants to Didn't turn this case in into a six-week-long public spectacle <laughs> of the most used scare quotes around mud. aspects of their relationship and their marriage. And you know what? I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we're going to have to do that. I'm sorry that you're going to have to lift all of it. And I'm sorry that Amber's going to have to relive that. But that's the case that Johnny Depp chose to bring. Start and we're crying. not going to stand idly by and let him sling mud at our client and make inflammatory and false statements like you just heard in opening and not let those go unresponded to. But ultimately, what this case is about is about the First Amendment. The only time they objected about that December 18th, during the opening statement wasn't to a piece. statement about Amber Heard. And whether Ms. Heard's freedom of speech and the First Amendment <laughs> give her the right to say the words that she said that that right that freedom of speech is what amber heard is asking you to uphold and protect do you believe office. in the first amendment or and not that's a very simple question the it's question you could decide this after wait, wait. the people who struck does ask... not require oh, go you i was going to say the people who struck my channel like <laughs> like, <laughs> like okay, going on a dozen times with other things they, they believe in freedom of speech that's awesome and so we're going to focus on those words we're going to look at those words and as it's a we lot look harder at those to sell words, a normal person this in mind that the idea of freedom of speech you means you can say something screen. about someone to literally destroy their life right when he put up it's easy words. to tell a lawyer that but a normal person not you so much see. you didn't see the rest of the opinion piece and what we'd ask is that as you look at those words that you look at them in the context of the piece in which they were written now whether you look at them individually or in the context of the piece doesn't really matter because the words are true, but context matters. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask Heather to put up the article, put up the opinion piece, and I'm gonna read that to you. And we're gonna look at those words in the context of what this piece was about. Because Mr. Depp's team wants to make you think 
that this was that this this opinion piece was designed to destroy Johnny Depp. That this was designed to maliciously talk about him and their life together. Yeah, the whole defamation thing was just a side so let's take a moment <laughs> look, to look at this. And I'm going to read it to you. And I, I'd ask that you follow along if you can. But either oh, way, more reading. Good let's Lord. take a look at what the piece as a whole says. At least he's reading someone else's this words here. This is the piece that Amber wrote. I was exposed to abuse. Is he going to just read this whole age. article, though? I knew certain things early on without ever having to be told. I knew that men have the power, physically, socially, and financially, and that a lot of institutions support that arrangement. I knew this long before I had the words to articulate it. There better not be any men on the jury at all. Like many women, I had been harassed and sexually assaulted by the time I was of college age but I kept quiet. I did not expect filing complaints to bring justice, and I didn't see myself as a victim. Then, two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Friends and advisors told me I would never again work as an actress, that I would be blacklisted. A movie I was attached to recast my role, I had just shot a two-year campaign as the face of a global fashion brand, and the company dropped me. Questions arose as to whether I would be able to keep my role of Mira in the movies Justice League and Aquaman. I had the rare vantage point of seeing, in real time, how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Imagine a powerful man as a ship, like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up holes, not because they believe in or even care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the enterprise. In recent years, the Me Too movement has taught us how, about how power like this works, not just in Hollywood, but in all kinds of institutions, workplaces, places of worship, or simply in particular communities. In every walk of life, women are confronting these men who are buoyed by social, economic, and cultural power. And these institutions are beginning to change. We are in a transformative political moment. The president of our country has been accused by more than a dozen women of sexual misconduct. Whatever happened to those crashes, claims? Outraged over his statements and behavior has energized a female-led opposition. Me Too started a conversation about just how profoundly sexual violence affects women in every area of our lives. And last month, more women were elected to Congress than ever in our history with a mandate to take women's issues seriously. Women's rage and determination to end sexual violence are turning into a political force. We have an opening now to bolster and build institutions protective of women. For starters, Congress can reauthorize and strengthen the Violence Against Women Act. First passed in 1994, the act is one of the most effective pieces of legislation enacted to fight domestic violence. I thought that was already illegal. It, it literally <laughs> it isn't effective at all in fighting domestic violence. And provides funding for rape crisis centers, legal assistance programs. Wait until they get to the draft letters where they're putting all of this stuff together, you know, behind the scenes. That would be fun. And it prohibits discrimination against LGBTQ survivors. Funding for the act expired in September and has only been temporarily extended. We should continue to fight sexual assault on college campuses while simultaneously insisting on fair processes for adjudicating complaints. Last month, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos proposed changes to Title IX rules governing the treatment of sexual harassment and assaults in schools. While some changes would make the process for handling complaints more fair, others would weaken <laughs> protections for sexual assault survivors. Title for IX example, has no protection the for the accused. Would require schools to investigate only the most extreme complaints, and then only when they are made to designated officials. Women on campuses already have trouble coming forward about sexual violence. <laughs> Why would we allow institutions to scale back supports? I write this as a woman who had to change my phone number weekly because I was getting death threats. For months, I rarely left my apartment. And when I did, I was pursued by camera drones and photographers on foot, on motorcycles and in cars. 
the burdens of fame. Tabloid outlets that posted pictures. I didn't know being a movie star would have this consequence. I felt as though I was on trial in a court of public opinion. So when he opened that, did he just admit that that was about Johnny Depp? Ended on myriad judgments far beyond my control. I want to ensure that women who come forward to talk about violence receive more support. We are electing representatives who know how deeply we care about these issues. Deep. We can work together to demand changes to laws and rules and social norms and to right the imbalances that have shaped our lives. Now he's going to ask, what about that article? I know that was about a Johnny lot. Depp? But that is the central issue in this case. Are those words that Amber wrote, are those protected by the First Amendment? And the answer is very clearly yes. I mean, where where was the, the implication of Depp? Did I miss it? First of all, uh, she said that uh, she spoke out against domestic violence name. or something it like that. It never once. Yeah, she makes three statements in there that, that are objective. It is not yeah. about Amber's relationship with Mr. Depp. There are no details of any abuse in that article. The article is about proposed legislation and strengthening of government laws and policies designed to protect abuse victims and people who report abuse. That's what the article's about. And it was on Depp's opening that they point at po the portions of the article they found offensive. Yeah. Like, like yes. for example, then two years ago, I became a public figure Amber. representing domestic abuse, and I felt the, the full force of our culture's wrath for speaking speak for women who speak out. You know, that's when the divorce happened two years did. ago. So that's one um, of the. There's three claims so, that that they object. She drew on her experiences as someone. But this who is a good approach. Domestic abuse. And there's no question. There is no dispute. I mean, I, I have, listen, I've got no interest in Amber Heard, but I, I didn't see much that looked like explicit that. defamation to me there. She talked about her a lot of this I mean, how much reading between the lines are we supposed and to do? Reactions and I think a lot of this case is about clearing yourself in the public, too, because, you know, he, he, he lost everything after that, and he couldn't present his side of things. So <laughs> I think that's been a lot of what's, what's gone on here. That's what the article is about. The article isn't about Johnny Depp. The article is about the social change for which she is advocating and that the First Amendment protects. And well, so I hope you remember. Did, I didn't see the whole uh, plaintiff opening, but did they present the uh, the hot crazy two, matrix? Only the three statements <laughs> in yes. isolation. That seems they a missed opportunity. They don't want you to pay attention to what the article is about. Now, if it had been Amber's intention to use this article to detail the abuse that she suffered, it would have been a lot longer hear about over the course of this trial. Believe me, the article would have looked very, very different. She could fill a book with those details. She probably would have started out by calling out Mr. Depp by name. She probably wouldn't have published it in the Washington Post. She would have described in great detail the man who has described himself, the violent side of himself as the monster. That's what she would have done. If she wanted to destroy Do the Johnny monster. Depp, she would have done it this way. She but she did destroy Johnny Depp. Like that's. But she didn't. That's the problem. That wasn't the point of this article. And she was careful to avoid that, even, even having her lawyer review the article to make sure that it was okay. And she relied on that lawyer's advice. And you'll hear testimony on that during the trial. But because Johnny Depp brought this case and asked for it, all of that is going to come out. Just know that Amber Heard never wanted to unearth for the public who the real Johnny Depp is. Except there's a letter saying that she but would do that if he didn't pay her $50,000 a month and give her three like penthouse also apartments. Take into consideration yep. who isn't here today. You don't see the Washington Post sitting here as a defendant in this courtroom. Depp didn't sue the Washington Post. He had no interest in doing that. It would have gotten destroyed. Amber. It would have brought a lot of orders. He could have sued in. the Washington Post. They published he didn't sue the ACLU that. either. But he didn't. And he chose to bring Amber to court here in Virginia. They published an op-ed penned by no a celebrity. Has never lived. There's no, He's never like lived. Pinning that on Washington Post would be time. almost impossible. Nonsense. Because he wanted to make her life hard. He wanted to ruin her life. 
Is, is this lawyer. lawyer arguing the court doesn't have jurisdiction? That's what he did. It is. And it's a little weird. I wish that I could Virginia. say that that's. But the court already surprising. has. I mean, they do have jurisdiction because Washington Post is based in Virginia. That's where the article was published. Because the evidence will show. She tried to move it. Years. She tried to move it to uh, California, and that was strong. Even though the Post isn't a party. Amber is that right? To haunt her. No, but that's where she targeted the career. defamation because she sent that's it to the, the Post. Show, would be the words, argument. That's what he wanted. And the winning argument. And he made a mistake bringing this case in Virginia. Because you're the people who are going to hear this case qualified, prepared jury who respects the First Amendment. And with that, even though we've looked at the article as a whole, I'd like to spend a few minutes looking at the individual statements that were made, just as Depside showed you, because I think it's important to do that as well. Can we pull up slide one, please? Jamie, pull up slide one. Then, two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. There's absolutely nothing false about that statement. First of all, the evidence will show that Amber did suffer domestic abuse at the hands of Johnny Depp. See, and now he just and went ahead and ruined the argument. Yeah, he just story, admitted it. <laughs> but also emotional, verbal, psychological abuse it's all domestic abuse that she suffered at his hands so that's the truth but what else is the truth is that on may 27th 2016 two years before yeah i mean i would have argued that there's a reading of that sentence that's Amber inconsistent with defamation in California you know, she's not saying she was abused but if he's going to concede the point or make that argument then given to her yeah that's a that, that's a bad that incident in bad approach he started off great going to tell with you that more about that absolutely were given to her and she took out a domestic violence restraining order that she obtained from the court in california to protect herself <laughs> And she was, of course, which they give out figure. like candy. She was a movie star. She didn't want the paparazzi, the press photos. She got those, of course. Who wants to be photographed with a bruised face walking out of court? She didn't want that. And the evidence will show that. But she was a public figure. And two years before she wrote this article, she was a public figure re representing domestic abuse. That is 100% true. And try as he might to take it away, Amber's freedom of speech gives her the right to say that. Can we pull up slide two, please? But the argument is that this she is wasn't a victim state. of domestic abuse. I mean, that's going to be, and you may have the about rare that just a second ago. Point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Once again, that statement is 100% true. Amber did accuse Johnny of abuse. And she saw how he was protected at the same time that her career took a downturn and that he did everything that he could to try to wreck her career, as the evidence will see. But she accused him of abuse. That statement is true. You don't need to relive every intimate detail of their marriage. You don't need to decide what happened on any individual day of their marriage to determine that the First Amendment protects that statement because it is true. He wants you to forget that. Don't take the bait. Let's pull up the third statement, please. Now, this statement was in the headline of the online edition of the article. I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. The undisputed evidence in this case will be that Amber did not write these words, did not review these words, did not approve these words. That's how op-eds work. She wrote Wait, the article. What? She didn't write this headline. And for that reason, that reason alone, it's not defamatory. But here's the thing. Like the first two statements, tragically, it's true. Amber did suffer sexual violence at the hands of death. <laughs> What's with the guy with the blue eyes? Guys, try to minimize that and try to make you Back think there. that it's all made up. <laughs> But it's is, not. He, is he from Marvel? Is he one of the superheroes? Here, 
This is about the the fire later. Retired, became a became a lawyer later in life. He's He's one of the Derby Terminator models. Now he's a super lawyer. It's just Daredevil. That's the actual Daredevil. He's not very athletic. (laughs) It happened. Daredevil's lawyer cousin. That domestic violence restraining order by the blue eyed side of the family. She did speak out against it and all the other abuse that she suffered. And she said, enough is enough. I need to protect myself. She didn't want to do that. She didn't want to be forced to get that restraining order, but she did. She spoke out against the abuse by doing that. And the evidence will show that she did face her culture's wrath, perhaps illustrated no more clearly by the fact that she's here today facing this lawsuit brought by an obsessed- See, you're you're making it about the question of whether or not she suffered uh, this abuse here. again, That's which you shouldn't have done. Wrath. And as you consider whether these statements are true, I'd ask you to keep this in mind as well. The evidence will show that in May of 2016, when she obtained the restraining order, Mr. Depp never denied the allegations. And in fact, he signed a statement that Amber hadn't made any false statements for financial gain. He signed a statement saying she hadn't made any false statements. And you'll see that in evidence in this trial. And it was only two years later, as his career was in free fall and her career was taking off, that he, <laughs> that he chose to bring this lawsuit. Her after career was taking off. She huh? hadn't made any false statements. Super and good. One thing that you'll be instructed at the end of the trial, but that Mr. Depp's side will try to distract you from, is that any damages that he suffered and any defamation has to flow from that 2018 opinion piece. This case isn't about the statements made in 2016. This would have been a lot more fun if this was Mark Richards. This case is about the December 2018 opinion piece. (laughs) That's what the case is about. And I have to say, it's pretty ironic. It's pretty ironic that a piece that briefly discussed Amber moving on from Johnny Depp, that briefly discussed her life experiences after Johnny Depp is the very vehicle that he uses to try to keep her from moving on, to try to keep her from living that life. Rather than give her her life back, rather than take personal responsibility for his own actions, it's ironic that he uses that piece to do that. But like I said, it's not surprising because you will see clear and graphic evidence of his intentions dating back years. Now in five or six weeks, Elaine or I will get up here at closing argument and we'll remind you, we'll remind you what this case is about. We'll remind you that this case is about one piece of paper. Amber's words. But it isn't really. No, it's about an entire career. It's about an entire career. It's about a whole, it's about, about all of the words marriage. leading up to that that are informed by that, that, that everybody that. reading it knew. That's it's the about trick. the freedom of speech. It's not about the soap opera that Depp will turn this case into. It's See, not they about lost the technical like argument. It's not the jury's going to go you agree with or well, that she wrote. they should be trying to convince the jury the right that this speech. is about all those words that fed into those words. Now, before I sit down, I'd like to briefly discuss some of the damages that Depp alleges in this case, because he can't win the case if he can't show damages. And the evidence will show that he has not suffered one cent. Well, winning the case and showing damages are two different things. Now, make no mistake, Johnny Depp's reputation is in tatters. His career is in free fall. But it's because of problems. It has been ever since the tourist problems that he (laughs) is responsible for. And he's here in court asking you to blame Amber for them. But it's not Amber's fault. (laughs) They're from the choices that he made. You'll hear a lot of evidence in this trial about those choices. You'll hear evidence of crushing drug and alcohol abuse. He had had the crushing drug and alcohol abuse while being super famous. Yep. You'll hear evidence that before one of the instances of abuse, a cross-country plane flight. Right. In May I, I, I somehow doubt Pirates of the Caribbean was a sober performance. Amber when he kicked Amber <laughs> in the back on a private jet. 
Disney asked asked about that. They were like, what is he, drunk or gay? They actually asked him if he was gay. That he had had half a bottle of whiskey, that he had had countless Red Bulls and vodkas, that he had taken. Yeah, I heard he actually responded to Disney that, well, he's gay in every role. And when you look back, it'd be hard to to deny. That's what he's saying, actually. Yep. He'll hear evidence of that. And he blacked out on the plane and he abused Amber and didn't remember anything about it when he woke up. You'll hear evidence of drug binges with his good friend, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> You'll hear evidence. Of Another man conveniently recently accused allegedly false. Tried to minimize and tell you was false. A three day blackout in which he abused and sexually assaulted Amber all because she had the courage to confront him about his drinking. Imagine that a concerned spouse confronts her husband about his drinking and gets rewarded with that. That is what the evidence will show. That is what happened to my client. That three day blackout that led her to be so in fear for her life that she barricaded herself in her room. That same three day blackout that kept him from being able to do what he was in Australia to do, which was to film Pirates of the Caribbean 5. Oh my God. His behavior on that trip, both before the blackout and there's, during it, there's one and a half of being those a reliable in my actor. Book. He showed up late to the set. And after that blackout, he was gone from the set for a long time. Now he did cut off his finger. But the evidence will show. <laughs> By the way, he did. did not do it. He did have a finger missing. And, when and just imagine gone, this: but... what Miss Vasquez is trying to get you to buy <laughs> that Heard somehow developed a major league level fastball and cut off his finger with a bottle. You'll see the evidence. You'll see that that doesn't make any sense, and you'll hear from Miss Heard's experts who testify, including orthopedic hand specialists who testify there was no way that that. You'll also see pictures of what Mr. Depp did after he cut off his finger, when he dipped it in blood and paint and wrote graffiti all around the house. That's what you're gonna see he did. And you're gonna ask yourself, how can someone that is blacked out, how can they deny that they abused someone? How can they deny what they were told that they did? (laughs) <laughs> he has no credibility when he gets up wait right what in this court and tells you he didn't i don't do remember doing that when he was blacked out well you were blacked so out so i get to say that. you did whatever you, whatever Those i want problems that he created there gonna, you go they're gonna blame him for putting a cigarette out on his own face which you'll hear evidence of the same addictions that led him to abuse amber also led to the demise of his career as an actor like i said as you saw with disney as you the evidence will show with disney He was unreliable as an actor. And those same self-destructive tendencies led to financial distress. Quite simply, he was running out of money. And that distress fueled his abusive tendencies toward Amber. And it led the public to think less and less of him. And you will see a parade of witnesses who testify in Johnny's case that all have one thing in common. They all rely on him. They're all on his payroll for the most part, or they rely on him for some sort of luxury in their life. And you'll see that of these witnesses. So in a lot of ways, Amber previewed the parade of witnesses when she said in her op-ed, and I'm going to read from it and quote it here. She said, you, you remember when I said this, imagine a powerful man as a ship like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board. Why wouldn't you like imagine him as a ship, a pirate ship? Because they believe in or even care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the enterprise. Remember that as Depp's witnesses take the stand, none of whom know what happened behind closed doors between. It was all a conspiracy against Amber Heard, in fact. (laughs) But remember. Well, there's a countersuit here, right? Care about their own financial yeah. well-being, just as Amber previewed in that article. Uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. And they know what happens to people who stand up to death. They know what happens because they've seen it. They've yeah, their careers Amber, take off, and his career takes. They've seen, they've it, seen with it. Other people in his life who had the courage to ask him to change, 
and who we lashed out against. These are people who helped enable the man who describes himself as the monster. Make no mistake, this man's poor choices have brought him to this courtroom. His own bad behavior, his own refusal to commit to sobriety, his own violence, his poor choices, and the people who have spoken up against it, they've, they're the ones that have suffer, suffered the consequences. You'll hear evidence that he fired his longtime agent, that he got rid of his business managers and his law firms that had represented him for years. Wait, as his and no one business was tanking, he fired all of his management that was to take in charge of it? Weird. Very strange. <laughs> that was well, sucking his blood. You'll uh, hear he, he had, he had $650 million dollars disappear, and that's when he fired everyone. So yeah, I'd fire everyone. Two too. years before that, Mr. Depp brought someone else into his life who helped convince him to blame other people. That man, Adam Waldman, who Ms. Vasquez introduced you to, had never met Mr. Depp while he was in a relationship with Ms. Heard, or while he was represented by his agents or his former business managers. But he convinced him that all these bad things that are happening, happening in his life, he helped convince him of this, were other people's faults. And you'll hear evidence of that. Rather than take responsibility for cleaning himself up, Jeff chose to blame other people. That's why we're here. And the evidence will show you crystal clearly that the op-ed had nothing to do with damages that he suffered. He's going to try to make it sound like this caused him to lose Pirates of the Caribbean 6, that, which ha is a movie that hasn't been made, but that Disney he lost it. wasn't going to cast him in it because of Inkfer's article. But there's no evidence of that. <laughs> the evidence will actually show that months before the op-ed, it was reported that Disney was considering dropping him from Pirate 6. The evidence will show that Disney had a dossier on him that had articles from the press, had other information about Mr. Depp, and they didn't have this article at all in their files. It didn't register with them. Just oh, yes, as it, it didn't did. register oh, with the on. public. The public had known since 2016 what Amber had to say about Johnny Depp. This didn't change any of that. The evidence <laughs> Wait, is that the defense? She defamed him in 2016, so this couldn't have hurt? Even if Disney paid yes. him far more money than Disney you also, yes. Disney also performed a evidence. limited search. They wouldn't sign off saying that they went through everything that they well, had. Any damages Johnny that he's suffered in his career are not because of this op-ed. And it's time to make Johnny take responsibility to tell him, Mr. Depp, stop blaming other people for your self-created problems. To take responsibility for your own life. And it's up to you, ladies and gentlemen, to make him do that. It's up to you because you are uniquely qualified to do that. No one else has the power to do that. Only you to tell him enough is enough to stand up for the First Amendment, to stand up for the truth, and Amber's right to speak it. Thank you. See, if you're going to go with the First Amendment free speech approach, I just don't think you want to get into so many details about this abuse and making it about the abuse. Make it about the freedom to say the things that the article didn't say any of the stuff that he's claiming that it said, and just leave it there. Don't go, I mean, the article didn't say that. Plus, the public already knew she was lying about him. It's, a, it's such a weird way to go about that, in my opinion. But I guess all those earlier lies slash statements are going to come into evidence, right? Yeah. To, to contextualize the op-ed. Oh, she looks happy. Thank you. I don't know why with that haircut. Ben told you we will be relying on the evidence. She had a fresh can of prunes this and morning. Personal attacks, and he was right. The evidence in this case, simply put, is overwhelming and compelling. In the six weeks, we're going to try to show you as much six weeks. as we possibly can. Yep, six weeks there of trial. There are many, many, many photographs. Now, you heard Ms. Vasquez.
try to say, oh, you, you can't trust those. Again, you're trying to tell the jury it's about She's this one little one. article. It's this is what it's about, these three little devices. statements. It's going to take six Ms. weeks Heard now. took all kinds of photographs, and her friends took photographs, and all of those remained on the cloud, and all of them have been imaged, and all of them have been examined by their IT experts, and they cannot discredit one photograph. Then she says, oh, and it's, it's got a photo editing thing. Well, all iPhones have the photo editing. It's where you can make it a little lighter or darker. You can move it to the center. You put a bruise, that bruise filter. Edit the photographs, and we will have an IT expert Black eye who filter. will testify that all of these are legitimate, authentic photographs. Not only that, but Ms. Hurd produced all of her different devices over the years, including her most recent laptop, and they were pulled from many, many sources, and all of them are identical. So if she was going to go in and try to manipulate, she would have had to do it everywhere. And Ms. Hurd will tell you she doesn't have that level of talent. There may be a couple of you She's on the, not on the bright enough, jury really. who have that talent. Oh, she does God. not yeah, have I, that talent. I can't put my, my phone in airplane mode and reset the date on it. So yeah, it's terrible. Horrible. To the evidence from the experts, and you will find every single piece is authenticated and is true. And they show bruises, and they show cut lips. They show hair pulled out of her hair. They pull, they show all hair kinds pulled of, out of her two hair. black eyes when he headbutted her. Those are all going to be there. How do you headbutt someone with two black eyes? We also are going to show eyes. you a video, and I'll talk about mm, you the can. time frame of it. Ms. Hurd took that, that doesn't mean it happened. iPad, um, and it was one day when she was in the, building, the kitchen with Mr. Depp. And it was February 10th, 2016. And he's on a tear. And he's going around, he's yelling at her and being abusive to her, and he's slamming the kitchen cupboards and their glass. And you can hear them rattling, and you can hear them breaking. Then he goes over with a big glass of wine, and he has a huge bottle of wine, and he pours more in there. And Very then she animated. says, did I like you drink this one does. Wine? And then he sees that he's, she's videotaping him, and bam. That's going to be a pretty graphic one for you to see. Then you're going to hear audio tapes. That sounds like a, a stage video too. by Ms. Heard. About the May 2004. Let me wait till he gets juiced up and then go to him into acting crazy. Where he kicked her, where he was so <laughs> drunk and he blacked out. Well, Amber audio taped him when he went to the back of the plane and passed out and was moaning loudly. You will hear that. <laughs> you will also hear some other audio tapes that are very significant. Abusive One of them moans. in Australia at the end of the three-day hostage situation. You will hear, apparently, Mr. Depp turned on Ms. My Hurd's says, iPhone. This she bitch is talking too fast. To Borowski's court reporter would strangle her. He was never allowed <laughs> to do that during their relationship. But he must have inadvertently turned it on. There's five hours Slow of down. audio tape. It's during the cleanup of all the broken glass and the, the liquor and the urine and the blood stains and everything else in that house. And you can hear his handlers talking about it. You can hear them talking about trying to find his finger and that you can hear them say, she's <laughs> she stone off the cold bottle. sober. You will hear all of that. It's very, very significant evidence. What this is gonna tell you is a story of a very different Johnny Depp. Keep telling it's the jury that she chopped off his finger. It's always, going to work well. Uh, always. Well, I can't say always because he has the charismatic side that Amber fell in love with. But he has an enormous amount of rage. You will see the medical records and hear from the psychiatrist that talked to him for a while in 2014, where he admits that he has rage, that he's like a demon, that he views his, his wife, Amber, like his mother and his sister that he hates. Um, that's the, that's what you will see. You will see that. And it'll be fueled by the alcohol and the drugs. Ben told you a little bit about that. You're going to see a list of his prescription drugs that his concierge doctor and team who charge him $100,000 a month and have since 2014, and they are still his concierge doctors. That's the I list he could of get medications he takes in one day that they <laughs> prescribe. That doesn't include the cocaine. It doesn't include the ecstasy, the MDMA, the mushrooms, and all of the others. Now, it's He's on the Keith the Richards starter Mr. pack. Depp engaged in <laughs> emotional, physical, and sexual abuse. Free dose of ivermectin, whatever, blood transfusion replacement. The lesser known body transfusion. Here, and I know when we were doing the voir dire, None of you had even watched as much as three of her movies. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Amber. Because <laughs> you never heard of her movies. She's from Austin, Texas. She grew up outside of oh, Austin, Austin, Texas. That, she has that, a daughter. That explains a lot right there. One last week. 
Amber oh, grew up in, Do it. in a, a <laughs> area. Her father was a construction worker, primarily a painter, but he would break horses as part time. They lived out on a, a ranch area. Oh, and a horse person. Her mother, Paige, oh my gosh. She died at, at Austin, cute horse person. Dropped out of medical school to marry Amber's father. That acronym is C R A Z. The state of Texas in internet communications. Um, they grew up very poor. Amber has a sister, Whitney, who's 16 months younger than her. Um, and you will see and hear from Whitney later because unfortunately she also witnessed some of the abuse. Amber rode horses with her father. She tried to work with him to help him break the horses. She remembers having a broken arm at least four times being in casts during that time. But there were some things she learned from breaking those horses that was very significant. Her father taught her she couldn't show fear, she couldn't show pain, and she couldn't show emotion. That's how she could break those horses. It's significant for you to know that. And so those are the skills she applied to her marriage. To remain in this relationship <laughs> with Mr. Depp for as long as she could and the dynamics of some of the abuse you're gonna hear about because that's what would be her instinct is to stand up and not let him show that he's caused the pain, that he's caused the fear, that he's caused the humiliation. You'll hear about a long line of jobs that Amber started from back, you know, age 12, as soon as she could, working in the soup kitchen, well, that was volunteer, but then back she, when she was in Scranton. Oh, wait, jobs, no, that's a different cards, one. Everything else, trying to improve herself. Whoa, She's she was a lifeguard? somebody who had a great oh, break. Oh, man. What happened was she got recognized by a Hollywood agent who expressed some interest in her. She took her $180. <laughs> well, she was a teenage lifeguard? Is that when that happened? To LA. That's all she had to her name. The testimony will be she worked all kinds of different jobs when she was in L.A., anything that she could get. And she would go on, but she didn't have a vehicle, so she would go on buses. And she'd go up to six, six different auditions in one day. She'd have a map, and she'd have in the bus, and then she would just go around. She had a big sweater, so she could change underneath it to whatever the role was so that she could get things. And she wasn't going for you know famous actor roles. She was taking one-liners, she was taking extras, she was doing anything she could to make money to survive. And then you know what she did with it? She gave a bunch of it back to her parents. She started helping support them. Then when Whitney graduated from over high school, horse she farm in her Austin? out to LA and, and put they a house her roof broke, over her broke house actor and money? put her through community college. She took care of her family with what she made. When she met Johnny Depp in 2009, when he hired her for Rum Diaries to, to star across from him, she felt like she was pretty successful. She'd starred in some roles. She had, a, she had an apartment. She had a vehicle, a Mustang. She could go to Starbucks. She could afford Starbucks. She viewed herself as doing pretty well at that point. Now, during the Rum Diaries, she, she got to know Mr. Depp. Not true that she was pursuing him or anything else. She was in the long-term relationship with Tasha Van Ray. With a much poorer a man. Relationship with woman. Vanessa Parody. Neither of a them woman. had any kind of romantic relationship at that time. She's gay when, when it's she convenient. And she's straight, straight when it's more from, convenient. From the Rum Diaries in 2009. No, she's bisexual. Rome she's attracted to women her. in wallets. Come on, In man. fact, he sent her a number <laughs> of gifts. One of them was a guitar, and she returned it. Now, two years later, fast forward, that's when the press uh, junket started. And that's when she had to come back and meet with him and they ran on the press tours. At that point, she had ended the relationship with Tasha Van Rie and he said he had ended his relationship with Vanessa Paradis. So during the press trips, that's when this they like started dating. It's like a lady giving a president and a by both accounts, 30 second primer on what their love. speech is gonna be. She it's way too fast. Side of Johnny it's way too detail intensive. In this is crazy. The charismatic one, the charming one, the generous one. That's the man she fell in love with. But sadly, the monster came in the way. Um, the and that monster would come out when he was drinking and, and when he would take the drugs. Amber will never forget the first event of abuse. She was sitting in his house in Sweetser on the sofa, and he was across from her. And they were talking about a tattoo that he had that had had, had Winona, Winona Ryder, forever. He had altered that to wine forever after he broke up with Winona Ryder. Just an aside. Turns you know, out Johnny Slim, Depp's just a 40-year-old woman. When they broke up, he's got a wine stone. mom tattoo. In any event, he had that on there. 
And Amber thought he was making a joke when he was talking about it. And she laughed. And he up and slapped her. Now you see the rings that Mr. Depp has on hers when he slapped. And she was stunned. She, she had no idea what to think. And she kind of laughed thinking, that, well, maybe that was a joke. I, 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 what just happened? Just like Chris Rock. Her again. And then she just froze and just looked. And then he like, hit I don't her again. Remember this, this time, it knocked her right off this. the sofa onto the ground. And she remembers her face was in this dirty, filthy carpet. That's what she remembers and fixated on, the dirty carpet. And she's thinking, oh, my God. To be fair, I she's, oh, boy. I she's had her face in some dirty carpet before. But I love him. <laughs> oh. I have to leave. But I love him. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem. I couldn't hold it in. She laid there for the longest time. Then Johnny came off the sofa, got on his knees, started crying, told her he was very, very sorry that he had done this. It would never happen again. And he said some very significant words. I thought I had put the monster away for good. That's what he said to her that day. Well, Amber ended up leaving that day and she went out to her car, her Mustang, and she remembers that it was cold and she sat in the car for the longest time and she remembers watching her breath because it was cold and she was thinking, I have to leave him, but I love him. She just kept thinking that. She finally drove away. But Amber made the mistake that millions before her and millions after her have who are victims of domestic abuse. She chose to stay and try to fix the problem and thinking that she could do that. So she stayed. Now, Amber was also, she grew up in an abusive family. Her father abused her mother and sometimes she and Whitney. So she had that cycle in there, just as you've heard that Johnny had that cycle in his house. And so what's the normal to them is a little bit more difficult for than some of us can understand. You will hear witness expert witness testimony about the cycles of violence and what happens with these people uh, and, and how they react and, and all the dynamics of thinking they can fix them. What do you she mean got, these people? All the way through, she could fix them. If she can Are just get them gender sober racist? and clean, then everything was gonna be that wonderful side that she fell madly in love with. And she kept trying and she kept trying. She went to Al-Anon meetings. She went to therapists. She Why did she go to Alcoholics Anonymous therapy. meetings? You'll, you'll hear about their tape recording <laughs> sessions <laughs> Because she's not a substance abuser. She, uh, her baseline is uh, what, two bottles of wine a day. <laughs> she, she puts it away like everyone we know. <laughs> he, got, he didn't want her to work. Here she's a budding actor who wants to be out there and succeed, and he doesn't want her to take roles. He starts controlling what she wears. He starts looking at her lines when she tries out for places. He nixes any, any uh, romance scenes, sex scenes. Uh, he gets mad and accuses her of sleeping with every Al -Anon single one Al-Anon is addicted of her to the addicted? Is that um, what that it, is? It became a cycle of that, a control as well, emotional abuse as you go. But oh, yeah, they are. Okay, cool. In that is no idea the property that that damage. And that's a hard one for Mr. Depp to be able to escape when he's clam claiming that he's such a docile thing and that it's all misheard. You're going to see pictures. He writes on mirrors, horrible things to her. Writes on lampshades. God, she's terrible on, at opening. You know, uh, on clothing, on countertops. In Australia, when you heard Ben talk about Australia, he, he wrote uh, the, the third day as Amber. I mean, it kind of depends on the jury, jury, right? I mean, if the jury looks like her, this is probably compelling. In a minute. She comes out. She sounds like that neighbor I ignore because she's complaining about my lawn got, being. Yeah. He's written like, along yeah. the yeah. wall Jesus. of the staircase. <laughs> right. But if you have two neighbors like that, they chat and have two. <laughs> they're all like that. If you have 12 neighbors like that, you go to all prison. All kinds of things like that. And then he's written <laughs> on the lampshades downstairs. And then he's got more on the mirrors. And, and then on top of it, you've got all the broken glass everywhere. And you've got the liquor everywhere. And it's it's just and then he's urinating, and, and. tried to urinate messages to her. That wait, he tried to urinate messages to her. She used it to cheek claims. All the way through, she didn't yeah. want the public. Look at the to snow, know love. She didn't want the <laughs> to know this. and so she didn't tell people about it. So let's go back. The first event. I, I'm, I'm, 
actually impressed. He's blackout drunk, but he really he remembers how to spell, you know, like her name. That's awesome. And he can piss it. I mean, that's pretty Well, good. he probably just spells it B-I-T-C-H. So that's pretty easy to remember. <laughs> Even then. <laughs> he should have showed up with his finger like in a mason jar. Chronicles. The first time that Amber tells her that Joni hit it. And it goes through into 2012, 2013, 2014. And you will see and you will hear from Bonnie Jacobs. Her saying... You know, this is a cycle of violence. This is a cycle of abuse. You you can't enable him. You need to you need to stand up for yourself. Amber will testify about how Johnny would get so drunk and so drugged out that he would vomit all over himself and worse, lose control of his bowels. She would clean him up. Oh, and, I'm and not sure I'd focus on bowels. And these notes saying, "Don't do that. You're enabling him. Don't do it. Leave him there." But what would happen was his hand. This would argument shit the bed. If she left. <laughs> So that's the, the story you're going to hear on that. Let me just tell you about a few of the events. And I'm going to start in Australia. That's the three-day hostage. You haven't just she told us about there. a few now, of the you events? You will hear Mr. Depp <coughs> testify under oath that for 15 to 18 months before the March 2015 Australia event, when he's there filming, that, that he's been sober, clean and sober. Then you'll see all the text messages for the last 18 months in which he's scoring drugs, in which you'll hear testimony from people in which he's gotten drunk and, and, and you know, taken all kinds of different drugs. It, the whole time, he doesn't get clean and sober, uh, but he claims that he was clean and sober, that she came there, she, this is a month after they are, just got married. She flew he's like, oh, quitting drugs is easy, I do it every day. He's there and he claims <laughs> That he was just sitting Why there. Why do you think I black out? And, he just, and she was haranguing him. So he took a shot glass of vodka. And when she did, when he did that, she got mad, took the bottle of vodka, was eight to 10 feet about where I am from you, and hurled it at him. And it happened to just take off <laughs> the bottom part of his finger. And then he <laughs> says she came and burned a hole in his, in his cheek. <laughs> Yep, there's the a cigarette. Testimony is going to be that he self-mutilated on a number of occasions and burned himself. <laughs> he he put, a, put a cigarette I mean, out on his own face. Never did that. Well, in <laughs> fairness, they have evidence of self-mutilation. They got that Winona Ryder tattoo. Fantastic. <laughs> but the other part of it was he was with Marilyn Manson for the week before scoring on cocaine. You'll have you'll see text. That was just a contact high from his handlers with the cocaine and the liquor, and you'll hear so much before that. But Amber gets there, and instead what he does is he takes eight to ten tablets of ecstasy almost immediately. And the next three days are just a, a, a cycle of, of, of very, very, very violent. At least it wasn't Viagra. Both ecstasy hands would be violent. like this. Amber keeps trying to calm him down. She tries to get him to eat. She tries to get him to sleep. She tries to do these things. And he would just, at different, he was, you know, at times delusional, paranoid. He would be, you know, mad at Remember that her story is that she is a, she's uh, a perpetual way, victim of abuse. Up, and yet they're, they're pointing out lawyer who she the fact that she was throwing a bottle at him. To give him a prenup and then they got married too quickly. So she was going to give him a postnup. And it just chopped just a little bit of his story, from just the bottom part of it. She never got around to the postnup, huh? <laughs> You'll hear the testimony from the lawyer. Don't worry, honey. I'll do a postnup. Well, that's the type of Johnny Depp that was there. And he didn't want the postnup. He didn't want the prenup. But now they're going to tell you that's that that it was her that was mad. You're going to hear she had a lawyer and she was cooperating completely on that. So as you go through those three days, cooperating of completely on a horrendous things. Post nubital agreement is he rips off. I mean, nightgown. he has her jammed up against. Just means that you're a bar. He has hurled bottles and bottles at her. He has dragged her across the floor on the broken bottles and the liquor. He has punched her. He has kicked her. He tells her he's going to fucking kill her. He fucking hates her. He's pounding at her, pounding wow. at her. Why? And then he penetrates her. Wine mom oh. is losing it. He's pounding at her, pounding That's her, and the then he penetrates death. her. And this brought to you by case. Fifty Shades of Grey. Now, after that, Amber goes to the airport, and what does she do? She buys a book by a, by a psychiatrist who's talking about couples therapy. She's already trying to figure out a way to fix it again, fix this marriage that's only a month old and her husband has just done these horrible things to her. Now they go back to, to uh, LA, he's got to get his finger fixed. So he has to stop filming <laughs> Pirates 5. They get there and there's another fight. 
in just two weeks from there. He's still using at this point, he's still drunk. But Amber finds uh, on a, a TV screen, uh, his monitor, she finds pictures of another woman, naked pictures of a woman and text messages which show that he's clearly having an affair. She gets extremely mad. Amber can be jealous too, she can get angry. You know, she's half his age and you know, she, she's you know, defiant and we're not gonna say she's perfect. She was mad as can be when she saw that and she confronted him and the two of them were screaming at each other. Now her sister Whitney happened <laughs> well, to be I mean, That's like, well, she in fairness, I mean, if she can sleep with other women. <laughs> to come and try to resolve this fight between the two of them. While she's there, Johnny starts hitting Amber. Um, and Whitney ends up getting in between them and Amber thinks that Johnny's gonna throw her down, push her down the stairs because he's in that position. So Amber actually gets up and punches Johnny in the face. She'll tell you that's the only time she has ever laid one on him, you know, in a, a, an aggressive manner. But it's after he's already been hitting her and it's in defense of her sister. And she'll admit she got him that time and she actually did have an impact on him. She'll testify about how many and times that lady in blue in the background, in that calf reminds said, me of one of those giant yeah, Disney turkey legs. Size. So, he, you know, she <laughs> those said, three foot long turkey him, legs. He doesn't people move. He pushes me, I go flying across the, God, the room. I love those things. There, there isn't any, you know, ability on her part to be the abuser. Um, what she'll also tell you is it took her a while to ever fight back. I guess she heard but me. Many she times before that, out. she would do what she did when she was breaking <laughs> Reminder the Reminder show fear. that this is after the fact pain. that she has thrown a bottle and chopped off part of his finger. Piss him off but more. she didn't know that she she'll could fight back. She'll tell you that back. she tried everything. She tried everything, you know, from trying to be nice, trying to get away from him. Uh, you know, she would throw things in his way to get him from running after her. Uh, she would she would try to, you know, flail back. She would use her hands and legs and she would go and try to fight him. She'd run into a room and try to barricade and push his hands and everything out of there. She'd try all those things, but she couldn't figure out what could get him to calm down. I'm going to fast forward now to the next one. And that is, um, I, I'm going to jump you up to after the stair incident and Johnny had to get surgery on his finger. That's the longest period of time he stayed sober. It was almost three months. You're going to hear that he has never been through rehab, even though he has been a lifelong drug addict and alcoholic. Never has he gone through a rehab plan. Oh, rehabs for quitters. Yeah, twice that he went to some New they York tried to go what, make me go to rehab, love. One time it was what, for one of her no, claims no, is about how he abused her uh, while he was in rehab and detox. <laughs> so that's going to oh, oh, that's going to be weird. Drugs. But yeah. this particular time, he did for almost three months. And you'll see the text messages. We're going to take you through this whole story and all the text messages and all the emails and all the testimony that you're going to get. So we fast forward to December 2015. That was one of the worst. Australia was pretty bad, but this one was even worse. In this particular occasion, he gets angry for some reason, and he starts dragging her by her hair. <laughs> this one's starting to sound like Amber's mom talking, talking to the neighbors. Her Tearing her hair out. Seems breaking the news. Her daughter's getting divorced. But it's not her fault. Let right. me explain. Black eyes from it. Then he goes and grabs, drags her up the stairs, puts her on the bed, puts his foot and knee in the back of her, and he continues to punch her, telling her he's fucking hating her and he's fucking going to kill her. And he's got his boot stuck in the, the bed frame as he's doing it. And the force of what he's doing to her causes the bed frame. The I guess this lawyer skipped the a day they taught oh, punctuation. She is suffocating in the <laughs> it's just one 45 minute long she sentence. Truly she's going to die on this one. She wakes up. She, she has not breathed the entire long, time. That she was unconscious or subconscious. She doesn't know. But Johnny was gone at that point and her friend saying, are you OK? Are you OK? You'll see the pictures of all of this. You'll see the pictures of the hair. Imagine how much that must hurt. The hair that's out on the ground. And you'll see the pictures of Amber. Now, here's the ironic thing. The next day, she's got, she's got to be on the James Corden show. And you can see the text messages. She's not sure if she can go. She's worried. She's got two black eyes. She's got a split lip. She's got bruising. She's got her hair and missing. Johnny had drunk his wine out of a box like a normal her. person. She's he never would have lost that finger. Hear from Melanie Iglesias, who does the best job of makeup you could imagine to get her through the James Corden show. Uh, and she does it. But you'll see the pictures, the before, and you'll see them then. And that, that's the resilient Amber who says, I'm going to go do this anyway. 
Now her friends, she tells Are they going to have the James Corden uh, makeup person um, testify York, about how beat up she was when she came in? Really they have a stylist that says yes, but the says, uh, the makeup person actually says stopped. no. I didn't see I, I anything at all. Out of there. I'm flying from New York back to L.A. I see her on the James Corden show. I can see the swelling because I know her well. I can see the swelling. Um, and then he said somebody touched her and she camera adds 20 pounds on the show. That uh, um, that video, by the way, if anyone's interested, there, <laughs> it's it's on YouTube. Almost. I just got he struck for showing it, though, so be careful he, about it. <laughs> all of the other things, and he is so upset. He was a good friend of Johnny's as well. He'll testify about all of this friendship with Johnny, but he put his foot down on that one and said, "You need to have consequences. You cannot do this to Amber anymore. I am not your friend anymore." Now, there were several people that were supposed to go to Johnny's Island, Bahamas Island, on in December. For Christmas, he was going to bring his two kids. He'd invited Amber's parents, um, who loved Johnny, and unfortunately, her father used to drink and do drugs with Johnny a lot. And he was also <laughs> going to take Rocky, her Come friend who lived now. next door, in a penthouse, and her fiance, and Rocky's parents. Imagine being able to go to a Bahamas island for Christmas. What a cool thing to do! Imagine they just being a happy drunk. <laughs> I mean, you, can, can, you got all that Johnny Depp money. You can't just be a happy drunk. We're not going to. <laughs> Good Lord. Us. We're not going. But he talked Amber into going. He guilted her into going. I'm going to be with my kids. Please come. I'll be better. I'm going to get better. Amber went. And then he ends up assaulting her even there and sexually assaults her even there. Now, you'll see a video from them of the Bahamas, uh, uh, the Bahamas, the, the place that they stayed in, in on his island. And the video just conveniently leaves out the wardrobe in the bathroom where he committed the assault. It just goes around and, and makes it look like it's a one room and his kids were there and there's no way they could have done that. But but you'll hear the testimony and you'll see the pictures. What a freak. He didn't and film people from in the bathroom. On, things really were bad for Amber and she was really considering leaving him at this point. And she was talking to her friends and confiding and you'll see the medical, medical records. Um, and in February 2016, I told you, you'll see that video. Um, that same night before the video, he called Io, Till It Right, and left him a voicemail message that he said was just absolutely delusional. He was crazy. He was pretending like- Is there a, a point at which the judge is going to interrupt and say, uh, uh, just, <laughs> what, what are we talking about here? And then- Are, are we going to reenact every moment of their marriage? Of the video. Then we get to April 30th. Or this April sounds like a marriage counseling session. Yeah. Amber's 30th birthday. Well, she's party. added she um, for the UK and then this, she added uh, 11 bad. new accusations that had never been brought up until trial. <laughs> so they've got to they've got to work those in there. They have a, a dinner and a party for her that night. Johnny says, oh, I have a business meeting. At I mean, how, how is this not just I'll, testifying? I'll <laughs> what kind of business meeting? Do you Should she call herself as a witness? Jump up on the witness stand and that's, start talking and then jump fine. back out and ask a question? They can't say that it was jump back in the she hasn't, one because he'd fired his She has not been couching this in the evidence will show. Then <laughs> blaming him for all his financial problems. So he's the, he's the problem. So he shows up late, drunk. Listen, drugs, this is like her telling a story at like a book club. Was there and he's telling the other friends. So he shows up late. One this is them. what's going on. He says, and he's drunk. Very weird. Hide the Bible from Amber. Hide the Bible from Amber. When they all leave, she expresses her disappointment. He gets mad and assaults her again, including sexual assaults her. Then he goes away and he doesn't come back for a month. Now, this is an important event. May 21, 2016. This is the last one. And this is the final straw that leads out to the DVTRO, the Domestic Violence Temporary Restraining Order. So he says he's coming over to get some clothes. He's going to go out on tour. She says, okay. He comes over um, and he's, his mother died the day before uh, and he's already in the state. He's been drinking. He's clearly high. And he comes in and he's got on his mind this obsession that when she, on her birthday, go back to her birthday, the next day she and her friends went to Coachella, but his housekeeper had come in to clean after that. Always did. Um, oh, the poop. And the housekeeper had found- This is like one of those stories where your, your ex-wife comes home and says, oh, you won't believe what happened at work today. And there's 15 different characters in this complicated narrative and you just 30 seconds in, you're completely zoned out. He's got it in his head that Amber has conspired with her friends to get <laughs> like, the bed. What the F were you talking about? <laughs> I was there. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and, and somehow Amber was doing <laughs> he's, this. So he's he's just smiling now. The lawyer's like, don't, don't, don't LOL, whatever you do. Don't LOL. <laughs> and he, he, won't leave, he won't get rid of it. He's just obsessed with it. Then he decides that it's Io Tillett Wright who did it, even though Io wasn't at the birthday party and wasn't even in town. So Amber gets Io on the phone. Io's in New York. And she says, this is what Johnny says. Can you please just calm him down? Tell him this isn't true. Tell him we didn't do it. We don't have a conspiracy here. And, and, and Io's thinking, what? And, and you'll hear from Io, he'll say, Amber's fecal phobia. I mean, she can't even, you know, she, she's so embarrassed about that stuff. She would never, fecal phobia? Would never do anything like that. Fecal phobia. So they're kind of laughing at the absurdity of it. And that was the biggest mistake. Because that triggered I mean, Isn't that kind of universal and after the age of one? started after, started hitting Amber. He took her, grabbed the cell phone from her, wound it up and bashed it into her face. And you will see the pictures. You will see the booze there and you'll see them. <laughs> you'll see the there. Apple logo burn into her very, face very like the medallion was burned into the hand of that guy in Indiana 15, Jones. 2015, and he says, he says, Amber, get out of there. Get out of there. You know, are you safe? You know, get get out of there. You know, as, as Johnny's storming around. Um, and he calls Rocky, who lives next door. Uh, and then he calls 911. And it's not clear, you know, whether Amber said call 911 or he said call 911, but they call, he calls 911. But he's in New York and he's genuinely concerned for her safety. <laughs> Genuine. So he calls 911 there and he but calls a friend this, in LA. The cadence says, of this. Call 911 and just tell him this. But he's so in New York, you see. There so we can get somebody fast. I don't know what's going on. So the police are called twice. Not it's, Queens or Brooklyn, you know, Manhattan, you know, the real New York. Here's what happens next. Johnny goes around and he trashes the apartment before he leaves. He loves to do that. You're going to hear about his pension for that. does it a lot. Um, and you'll see a picture of him in the elevator afterwards leaving with his bodyguards. And he's a little agitated there. Um, and the police are called. You will see pictures. Imagine being stuck next to this woman on a flight. Anyone. Both before, oh, during, and after the police officer hit the stewardess there. bell, asked for cyanide. Amber calls her attorney, <laughs> the one that she had consulted after the December 15th oh. event. And the attorney says, if you press. Sorry, I guess they're not called stewardesses anymore, right? Amber says, I, I can't have that happen. I don't want to. Flight Karen anymore. officers. I don't want the public to know. I can't have that happen. So when the police show up, she refuses to cooperate. She says, on the advice of my attorney, I'm not going to cooperate. But her friend, Rocky, whose fiance was there, Josh, at this point. Um, <laughs> so, so many characters in this play. Oh, my God. Well, and the police officers say to him, look, she's got the red mark on there. You know, on the officer's name, you know, Josh. Go get him. Police officer Josh. He says, I, I can't. She won't let me. So they leave. Now, here's what happens and creates all of the you know noise here that you're going to have to deal with. So the police officer. <laughs> this is going to be like the Chewbacca defense. They don't take a report. They don't document the property damage. They don't document the face. Does anybody Does remember sense. that this is <laughs> a defamation right case? A That's, That's a very simple defamation there. case about they just three statements. Verbal dispute only. <laughs> Let me. Victim uncooperative. <laughs> That's their language for we don't have to write a report. You'll see that the police officers have another one later that night, another, and they put verbal dispute only. That's their magic language. Magic now, words. That's notwithstanding that you will see these pictures, but Amber wasn't cooperating with them, and they were quite convinced she wasn't going to. So, as many domestic violence, you know, calls that they take, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to. This is one that they they figure it's 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 gone. Now, Sorry, it's been decades officer, since police show up to a domestic up, call where there's bruises on the woman and they don't make an arrest. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's, that's 1973. Discourage them even from coming in. Josh answers the door, says, no, the other lawyers, are, or the other police officers were already here. And, and he says, and uh, they say, no, but we just <laughs> the first year this one started practicing law. So you'll see the body cam footage of this. Um, so they go through and, and they do that and. Did she talk uh, to Johnny Depp's cocaine dealer before this opening that, argument? That, that two police officer sets are communicating with each other. And that set, first set yeah, says, I, should have so I, can I don't think up. she's going to change her mind. Um, and they <laughs> they know who the officers were the first time because they say officer signs. You'll hear, hear this and you'll see it in the body cam footage. Um, so they go through. Amber says, no, everything's fine. You can see on there and they leave. Now, I think we have to re-estimate the length of this trial to 12 weeks. Done with this in Just for the opening statement. And what, what their, and their version of reality is, is that, that Amber calls the, clock, the cops, 
then they don't see any injury. So they mess up the place, splash, splash a little wine, and then call another set of cops. Does that sound like the situation here? No, no. And, and it's really no idea what the situation the is anymore. You'll hear from many, actually, I don't know how many of the police officers we'll put on, but we have, you know, between four and six LAPD <laughs> police officers and experts who will say those police officers, even when she- This woman used to work at Gitmo in prisoner interrogation. <laughs> that was police policy. So when faced with this big public- uh, We don't need water bar warning. We got Gertrude. Uh, VRO and all of the publicity later, now they go back to the police officers and say, hey, wait a second, you didn't take- <laughs> We're gonna drown them in narrative. Only. They're stuck. It, it, you know, if, if all of that was true and they admitted it was true, then they violated policy by not doing the report because they were supposed to take a report. So the police officers chose the other and said, no, there was no evidence, but you're going to watch it. You're going to see it in real time. You're going to see it on metadata. So Amber goes to get the DV, the, the domestic violence TRO. You're going to see the letter that her lawyer wrote to Johnny Depp's lawyer that week telling them, They're going to go after two sets of police officers for this. So four police if, officers. But but giving them opportunity here to be you, able you to almost wish this is like the extortion leader, letter. You know, this just make a... sure that she's safe. To oh. Stay in the residence until they figure things out. That she can drive. Her Where she demands until three penthouses. Out, you know, some demands fees, well, uh, a Land Rover and demands and fifty thousand so a month knew. in spousal and support forever. Right in there, yeah, forever. Uh, she's going to go in on Friday. They chose not to go. They keep saying ex parte. And he has to pay all the bills and everything here. on the they penthouses too forever. Well, Amber didn't call TMZ, but somebody called TMZ to take all those photos. I mean, there was a progress bar in this opening. It would be like 1% completed. All kinds of people <laughs> saw Amber that week, and she didn't, uh, she didn't have any bruises on her face. Well, let me show you this. This is what Amber carried in her purse for the entire relationship. Concealer? <laughs> it, says, right. it says bruise concealer right on it scrawled on with a sharpie you think that she oh ever in case of bruise her bruises and her break glass and apply this was what she used she became very adept at it you're going to hear the testimony from amber about how she had i'm good at makeup <laughs> for the different days of the bruises as they were as they developed in the different coloring and how she would use these to touch those up to be able to cover those. She also used concealer, foundation. You'll hear from a makeup uh, person that Amber didn't even leave her bedroom without having foundation on. And one of the people that was at the building <laughs> testified. Many jokes he said about her she had makeup on and it would have covered that bruise. So that's that's the testimony. So when, when the witnesses say there was no bruising, now, you'll know why. Let me talk about the divorce just for a moment. Um, so they go through, they have the two months of trying to resolve the divorce. Ben already told you that they signed a joint statement in which Mr. Depp admits that she did not make any of these allegations falsely and not for financial gain. But they brought up the donations, so I want to talk to you about the donations for a moment. Now, here's the story. Amber didn't have a prenup. She didn't have a postnup. She was more than willing to do that. But as I told you, Mr. Depp fired her lawyer. It just never said, happened. <laughs> only till death. Are, that's the only way we're going to part is through death. We're not, we don't Mr. need Depp a fired her lawyers, huh? That's Johnny. It's true. His advisors were all telling him, get one. And she said, I'll get one. And she hired a lawyer. But anyway, she didn't have a prenup. So what you're going to hear is that meant no matter what, the, whether it was abuse, adultery, irreconcilable differences, abandonment, doesn't matter. She's entitled to 50% of everything during that marriage. Well, he did Pirates 5 and he did two other movies during that time. And you'll see that he made $65 million during those two years. Half of that is 32.5. Amber didn't want that. You'll see a letter, you'll see an email from her lawyer that she forwarded on to yeah, her Yeah, it's, it's not that simple that you just get half, later, by the way. Saying, um, this is her, I'm not a gold digger argument. <laughs> Um, and I don't want you to come basically. I don't they want literally, to they, they call her that in documents. So um, that, that's, that's really what she tried to feel. I'm not going and to then her lawyer says, I offered them even less than they, I, I, I demanded less than they offered. In other words, the 7 million was less than Mr. Depp's team was even offering to her. And she said, I just want to be left alone. I just want to get out of this marriage. I that and a bunch of money. It. I'm not doing this for financial gain. So she didn't take the money. She so she said, I'm going to donate all 7 million of this to charity, half to the ACLU, 
half to Children's Hospital. And and then what happened was, the first, <laughs> then, and then, then what by the way, was, the, the seven million but, I mean, was she, paid out over time. It's in yeah, but she didn't ever donate any of it, though. But then what happened was, let me just tell you why I didn't get to the <laughs> so bank. Her, his business manager, Ed Wick, you'll see the letters, he sends the first 100000 out of the 7000000 It's like that scene from Ferris Bueller with the girls explaining says, that her cousin, a, cousin yes, sister's brother's boyfriend <laughs> said that Ferris Bueller has a really bad cold. Uh, and she'll be paying that in installments. So everybody knows she's paying it in installments. Yeah, so You're Johnny's guy pays the first 100000 to each and then the says, yeah, Amber will pay the rest You're of You're going to hear from Children's Hospital and the ACLU that they assume this was a pledge paid over a period of time because that's what they do because of tax deductions and things of that nature. So Amber does make, she makes a $250,000 payment to Children's Hospital. Then she also makes a $250,000 payment to Art of Elysium, which is another charity that she worked for um, and, and she worked used for, to feed huh? and used to do a lot of arts work with the, the lady that hospital. owns that will testify against her, by the way. dollars to the ACLU. Now, in addition to that, she also was dating Elon Musk by this time. You'll find out that Mr. Deb is obsessed with Elon Musk. But she's dating him, so he gives five hundred thousand to both of those charities. She dated that's him. Who too. cares? Now she yeah. doesn't claim that's part of the seven million. Yep. But what happens well, she is crazy, she huh? makes her payments up through two thousand eighteen. Yeah, you married the same Mr. woman twice. This is her March one, two thousand nineteen, in this litigation. Mm -hmm. She can't afford right now to be making those pledges. She's got to defend herself. But she has every intention of continuing two years to make those before the trial. She has no to defend herself. Elon's what, watching this right now, smoking a giant doobie. Used to volunteer at children's hospital. Counting his blessings. She could. She's very much that kind of person, and she intends to. And both both ACLU and Children's Hospital will tell you they have no reason to believe she won't be good on her pledges. There's nothing that required her to do a certain amount at a certain time, and she will give it to them. I mean, other than her promise to, to do it. it again. Now, let me talk about the counterclaim for a minute. And then I'm going to, I have to promise to let you go at some point, don't I? <laughs> that would be um, nice. I mean, this has been a, so a rambling Depp hour of discussion. Has decided, you heard from Ben. You're going to see some really, really terrible text messages from Johnny Depp on how he viewed Amber Heard. He calls her some horrific names. But in Not the names. summer of 2016, he vows, he vows he's going to haunt her. He vows she's going to suffer global humiliation. He says he's going to live in her and she will never forget him. And he meant it. So in, in the summer of 2018, you heard Ms. Vasquez say he wants to clear his name. He can't be called the wife beater, et cetera. But an article, yeah. uh, an op-ed appeared on the, the Sun Times in London. They called him a wife beater. It was written by Dan Wooten, the CEO, or the, uh, yeah, the, the chief editor. They're going to try and bring in the, the Sun Times and he defamation results as Depp evidence in this case, and it's not appropriate at all. No, it's and not. And so he, he's, the, the article is, why is J.K. Rowling? Just yep, finally there it is. There is no way, no way you can let this shit go uh, unobjected, and we'll see what the judge does. But uh, you you cannot bring in evidence of a of a lawsuit in a foreign country against a different party as proof that your client is not guilty here. With a very different legal standard for defamation. Right. And again, not against Amber Heard. Like she was not sued in that suit. Yeah, she wasn't a party. Yeah. So you uh, you you cannot let that go by. They pulled the objection at the right time. They had to make sure she was actually going to do it. And uh, but they got it before she actually made the statements. It says Your Honor, yeah, we she can't go here, she can't go here at all. Yeah, <laughs> the judge, you can't do that. <laughs> the judge can't get a word in it edgewise. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Your Honor, let me tell you the story about why I want to tell this story. Uh, you know about this lawsuit. You see, there were a bunch of people in this lawsuit. There was the judge. There was my friend Lois, who was there. She's actually from England. She has a really nice husband. His name is Chester. They have a good place just outside of Bridgerton. <laughs> I did a book report on England in the sixth grade, and I got an A on it, which was kind of disappointing. I thought I should get an A plus because it was really colored well and past pastels and stuff. You know how that looks, Your Honor, and. Dear Lord. 
Let's see how she. So you will hear testimony. <laughs> move, yeah. it, move along. Straight out of that. So you have heard from Mr. Depp's team that they are going to claim that Amber Heard abused Johnny Depp. You Her also are busted. hearing from them that he says that she cut off his finger. When you look at the text messages and you look at the emails, you will see that in every one of those, Mr. Depp said to Dr. Kipper, to David Hurd, Amber's father, and to others, I cut off my finger. You will see that. He never, throughout the entire time he was married to Amber, ever claimed that she hit him. He never, ever, throughout the time he was married to Amber Heard, claimed that she cut off the finger. Only two years later does he, for the very first time, start claiming she abused him and start claiming that she cut off the finger. I'm going to ask you to look hard at the evidence in this case because the evidence is going to show that it never, ever came up before. Now, let's talk about the counterclaim for a few minutes. There's a few statements here. Now, they've said, why are you suing Adam Waldman? You heard from, from Ben um, that Adam Waldman didn't come into to, uh, Johnny Depp's life until October 2016. He wasn't there for any of their marriage. He doesn't have any personal knowledge of their marriage. Everything he does is based on Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp used is Adam it? Waldman as his agent, and you will see a bunch of texts where he's saying, yeah, man, he's going after these people. He's doing all oh, this no. stuff for me. He's suing my business manager. He's suing the lawyer. He's going at, you know, he's doing all this. He's also he's doing his job. In the press. Yeah. A yeah. lawyer doing that. It's about Amber Hurt. And those statements are as follows. And, and Heather, if you can pull up the first. Well, why are we talking about what someone else said? They're yeah, going to try is, and make the agency. The first argument. one is Adam Waldman, Depp's lawyer, said afterwards, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and a shield, depending on their needs. They yep. have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Now, there isn't Nailed any it. sexual violence hoax. There isn't any hoax at all. But he's out there affirmatively stating that she's got this conspiracy with her friends and she's making these things up. A conspiracy to defame very, very Johnny Depp? It's and weird. It's almost like there's a court case about testimony this. Testimony will be <laughs> that these Depp fans take and run with these things. And you're going to hear from an expert who talks about computer wise when you search the hoax and you see that it just spreads out into the internet and the social media and generates a lot of negative publicity. The internet and the social media. She Statement couldn't have sounded two. more 100 there. If Spreads she out like that time I got the gonorrhea. This was made in April of 2020. That's awesome. When they pull yes. that up, bought Sentinel. Lawyer Adam Weldon. name yours truly, I'll be happy. Various discrepancies yeah. proved that nothing heard and her friends said about the events of May 29, 2016. update my tags on the stream to add uh, <laughs> sexual simply, assault hoax. this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick. He told DailyMail.com. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine, rushed the place up, and got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. Now, I've already told you all about the events of, of May 21, but I'm also, you're also going to hear from the second set of officers. There's no way that Amber was trying with her friends to now no get way. charges pressed against Johnny. They claim not that the kind of gal. They want him in there. The absolute opposite. <laughs> not the kind of guy. He says there. The third statement, if you may. Depp's attorney Adam Waldman said, "When Amanda Day Cadenet, that's a friend of Amber's, Amber Heard's best friend and Me Too activist, recants her support for Ms. Heard and testifies against her, you know we have reached the beginning of the end of Ms. Heard's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp." Amanda Day Cadney never testified against her, but that's not the part that we're claiming is the, the defamation. It's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp. In other words, in all of these articles, in all of these articles, he's saying that she created an abuse hoax. And you're going to make those determinations of whether that's true or not. But what we're going to show you is that that not only was tremendously damaging to Amber uh, emotionally, and you're going to. So is this the opening argument for the counterclaim? Yeah. Um, is that why they're splitting these? IPV about how yeah. so wait, triggers she, happen when you have somebody. Oh, she has the First Amendment thing? right to say and stuff, but Johnny Depp get, doesn't. And she's trying <laughs> to get past this. And then, bam, you, you come in there and you inflict this and put this out in the public. And everybody runs. Well, there's over a million 
you know, we're, we're going to tell you about a million different searches on the Twitter from the from these different hits, on the Twitter how that impacts her emotionally every time somebody calls her a liar for I mean, what it, she went I, through. I was checking it on the iPhone to protect John Depp <laughs> so that his children and the public never found out about the that internet Depp and how much that has harmed her. And, and, and how much emotion so there I was impacted checking my mail on AOL.com. We're also going to talk to you about the, uh, the reputational damages for that. Amber made it through the divorce. Then she got cast in Aquaman. A few of you have saw that. That was a blockbuster. <laughs> it was the highest grossing movie a few of you. in DC films history ever up to this point. Over It hit over a billion dollars in a very short period of time. Why? It was a mega, mega hit. Aquaman? We were moving forward. Yeah. Then she gets hit with these defamatory statements and all of the Depp followings and the, and the computer and Twitter and everything else. Nobody wants to touch her. Well, Warner Brothers. Lots of people, people want to touch her, to be say, fair. Look at Jason well, Warner Brothers Lowe. came out look and at, said that uh, what look they did had nothing to do with these statements. started statement, coming up in those tracks. From just, she was just Maybe she's just a nightmare to work with. Oh, man. Yeah. Look what they're uh, getting. They, they're getting commercials. They, they, they decided two weeks before her before her extension on her contract, it expired. They finally pulled the trigger, but they weren't going to do it. We're going to ask you, as Ben said, to hold Mr. Depp responsible. Enough is enough. But we're also going to ask you to hold him responsible and, and try to fully and fairly compensate Amber for what he has done to her. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Betterhoff. Holy. Um, based on the ladies and gentlemen, guess. I think I'm going to release you for lunch a little early so we can um, just start uh, with the first witness when we get back from lunch. <laughs> and natural break. So if you want to um, go ahead and go with the deputy. <laughs> Um, just remember, well, they just had an hour and a half of work to anybody solid. about the case and don't do any outside research. <laughs> okay. Job. We'll be back here. At, uh, let's come, let's get back at, I'll give you a little extra time to one forty-five. Okay. Tell the jury that they can't watch the okay? trial on right, law and crime you. network, that they have to watch it on Mercator law, please. Yep. Judge, if you could do that. Ju judge. Damn it. All right. Don't they know who you are, Nick? You know who I am? I'm going to drink four of Johnny Depp's bottles of wine and then I'll tell them who I am. <laughs> it's like two thousand dollars worth of wine. Woo. Woo. Somebody have the motion lemonades for me. I don't think I've ever received those signed orders. <laughs> There's motions the in motion lemonade. lemonade. It sounds like they're letting everything in. <laughs> what was excluded? Okay, first thing after lunch, I get them. Yes. Yeah. What was okay. actually right, excluded out of that? All right, we'll be back at one forty-five then. Thank you. <laughs> Wow. Okay, there we go. So that's the uh, opening statements have occurred for both Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Uh, it's uh, it's a doozy. The two statements for Johnny Depp took about 50, 55 minutes. The two statements for Amber Heard took, well, I mean. Forever. Almost yeah. as long as Johnny Depp's marriage to Amber Heard, I think. <laughs> Holy Ooh. hell. She's her opening started out all right until they put the uh, the older lady on there. She's crazy in the media too. She's made some whacked out statements. So I figured that's exactly what she would sound like. Well, I, I can't believe she would make statements to the media. Like I thought that was against the rules. A no. Adam Waldman can't do it. Yeah. Well, that's that, it's interesting. Everything like you like you said. You know, uh, Johnny Depp. He can't have free speech protections. You know, uh, but she can. That's that's going to be her whole case. So it's. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. Well, God bless you guys. There's no way I'll be following this for uh, for six weeks <laughs> for sure. Oh my uh, God! But Nick, it's I'll probably pop crazy. in and out as uh, as time allows. As something interesting happens. I did want to join you guys for the openings, just so I had <laughs> some context context to the circus that this trial apparently is going to be. Well, you you um, just asked like your mother in law's best friend for the rundown on the case and got it. <laughs> 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 well, I appreciate you popping in, man. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, look, I got the haters in the chat. <laughs> hey, for the Get haters, here's a little up. bit of grift, folks. Uh, I've got a series of uh, law of self defense hard to convict webinars taking place all through this month and next. They're 100 percent free. You can sign up for those at lawselfdefense.com slash hard to convict. Transform yourself from easy to convict to hard to convict if you have to defend yourself or your family from criminal violence. Lawselfdefense.com slash hard to convict. So there you go, grifters. You got it yeah. right there in the in the oh, nozzle. Get your grift on. 
All right, Nick, thanks for having me on. Uh, that umbrella guy, I don't think we've met. We still haven't met, I guess. I'm just looking at a little cartoon here, but uh, nice, uh, quote unquote, meeting you virtually. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, real soon. Peace. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Uh, this, is gonna, right. this is going to be a fun try. I'm, I'm telling you, it is going to be, well, I almost said a literal, it is a literal shit show, I guess. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. I like how they're they're already trying to make, they're like, it definitely wasn't her shit on the bed. No, 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 I mean, it could have been the dog. I mean, the one dog has problems. Let me tell you about it. But it actually could have been anybody. I mean, frankly, it could have been you who pooped on the bed. Uh, Wait till they get to the pictures. They have pictures of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do they were like uh in the last trial they were like you see this picture this is a picture of two small dogs when they take a shit here's what we found on the bed <laughs> it's like oh my god wait uh, so are johnny are the their dogs big or small small dogs little little okay dogs. so it's not it, like they have a great dane up there who's going to be dropping <laughs> man loafs somewhere you know yeah, oh and, and the housekeeper that uh, that found it, her her testimony, her deposition is hilarious. I was reading through it again last night, and uh, she worked with them for thirty years. So apparently, not only did she find that and go through it, but on the twenty fourth, that was the day that they wrote the blackmail letter. Amber Heard confronted her and blamed her for destroying the marriage because she brought up the shit on the bed. She was like, <laughs> oh. "Oh, what a what a what a cluster." Uh, I know that's what I'm Absolute saying. This, disaster. if it wasn't a man's life being destroyed in the middle of this, I mean, this, it, it's hilarious in so many respects. It's just, you know, the w the reality of what happened here too. It is, it's it's fucking nightmarish. If it can happen to that guy, it can happen to anybody. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's wild. Oh, excuse me. Uh, it's wild to see. It's wild how far it's gone. It's wild to see the defense try and claim that he didn't suffer damages. And then in the same breath, talk about how his career is tanking and hers is taking off, about how she wasn't seeking anything. And I love this whole bit. Well, you can see she's not after money. You can see she wasn't after the money. She wasn't after the money. She didn't need the money because she had the Me Too allegation. That That is worth its weight in gold. Yep. That is worth its weight in what whatever, in platinum, in in ice on Flava Flav's necklace. It doesn't matter what you want to say. That currency of a Me Too allegation against a major actor in Hollywood is gold. It is all the social clout you need. It is all the social credit you could ever ask for. You'll you'll be banking that social credit forever. And uh, Amber Heard's still in movies, right? Like it's she, she is, yeah. Actually, you know, when they talk about your your career being ruined by, yeah, she. Uh, it's funny. She burns Disney and all of this. They brought up Disney. Well, she threatened sanctions against Disney and all kinds of other stuff. So she burned Disney. She burned Warner. Warner explicitly told her, "Do not bring this shit into our movies." And not only did she do that, she, uh, part of the exhibit she has James Wan. Jason Momoa, Zack Schneider, there's text from them. We don't know what they are, but they're going to throw them in there. They have all this behind-the-scenes stuff with uh, with Warner Brothers executives. Yeah, so she's working, but somebody set their career on fire to get back at him. And she says the reason he's bringing this is because he's obsessed. Uh-huh, sure. Uh, Colivar says, it would be great if we could actually hear the trial Rakita Boomer on the audio. Dude, It. I have it cranked. I have it yeah. cranked up, uh, you know, and I have I have us turned down. Uh, yeah, we it. we had to go to a, yeah. a, a a method of. I mean, if you turn it up any more, like on the on the feed there, oh my god, it sounds horrible. The first, if if you don't go in through some terrible means to boost the sound, you can't hear anything. But if we boost that sound any higher through the method that we're listening here, yeah, you you won't be happy. You'll be your ears will probably be bleed. So, yeah, it's uh, and the the audio pops that were coming through when it was uh, when the, the, it gets really really distorted. It is it is not good. So I'm looking at Amber Heard's page here on IMDb. 2018 Aquaman comes out, and remember that's that's what we're talking about because she's on her way up until this Johnny Depp stuff that she totally had nothing to do with comes against her to destroy her career. Since then, she's in Gully. Uh, I don't know what the hell Gully is. She's oh, in the Stand miniseries, which goes yeah, from 2020 to 2021. 
That's I mean, terrible. terrible. I love the stand. I love the stand, but that was like the worst fucking adapt I've ever seen. It's awful. But ignoring the fact that it ends up bad, this is a major yeah. production of a major property by Stephen King. Uh, but, and you should have known, Tug, that it was going to be bad because Stephen King books don't get made into good movies. Well, you know, the 80s Except for series, it, it was of. like campy. You know, that 80s series was just campy and kind of fun. This one... It tries to take. I actually think she was um, she was cast for that because the you have your antichrist role that's in there. Um, well, she <laughs> is the the future wife of the antichrist. Basically, she's manipulated and lied to. I think they were making a a casting based on Johnny Depp, and it kind of blows up in her face because that character is 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 a fucking monster through it. But I think they offered it <laughs> to take a shot. Uh, so then, so after that, she she goes on to be in Justice League. Then she's in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, which is in post-production. Uh, she's filming a movie called In the Fire and in pre-production for Run Away With Me. So, I mean, it's not like she stopped getting work. This is, she's got 51 credits to her name. Uh, who the fuck, what is this Run Away From Me? Is she? She's the only cast listed for that movie. Uh, so she's probably had, you know, a star role in that, I would guess. In the Fire, who is... Uh, Who's this? Shit, I don't recognize any of these people in the movie with that. In the fire movie, but so, but she's still got, I mean, having two more DC movies after that doesn't sound like your career's destroyed to me. Maybe I'm, oh, no. maybe I'm, you know, a little, maybe I'm crazy, but uh, seems like she's still on the up and up. But that being said, uh, there are there are some super chats to read through here uh, while we have this break, and we'll we'll keep going uh, after that. Matt Fields uh, read read that one. Ryan Clark says, "Check your Twitter DM uh, for a meme of Rackets versus Attorney Tom." Uh, okay, I'll I'll check that in a minute. Uh, Uncle Brat says she reads poorly. Training is needed. This is back during Depp's lawyer. Who is reading from the paper? And, and again, I I think uh, I I lay some criticism at the feet of Depp's lawyer there. I did not like the reading uh, element of it, as as stated before. Doug Murray says, "Rackets, this Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial is way more unbreaded than anything going on in the Ukraine's. <laughs> Thanks for bringing us back to our Ricada roots. Also glad to see your sidekick, the Burning Branca. Hello, Tugger. Hey there. Uh oh." Uh-oh, we've got danger incoming. Danger, danger. What's up, buddy? Oh, man, I'm just about to go to bed, but I wanted to pop over to say hi real quick because uh, I'm sure you had to pop as much uh, speed as I did to stay awake for Granny over there, uh, lecturing us on uh, why to stay in college and uh, not defame people. Jesus Dude, Christ. Uh, how, how, how much did she manage to get in? Her, her opening statement was, uh, was like, a recitation of the epic of Gilgamesh. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was a Cimmerillion. It was it was it was ridiculous. It was beyond. It was beyond. And and it was it was so contradictory to a lot of the facts that um, the that Johnny's team put on that clearly like one side or the other is going to be exposed as, as full of shit. The only thing that she's got going for her is that there were so many words that uh, you know you kind of lost it at some point. I mean, we, I was checked out uh, about fifteen minutes in. I don't know about you guys. Uh, it was it was really hard to follow what she was saying. Um, yeah, it it sounded like uh, when my oh this I I have the perfect analogy for me. You guys won't necessarily understand it in the same way. Perfect analogy for me. My I play a game called Risk of Rain two from time to time on my computer, oh, and yeah. my son does too, who's fourteen. And because we both play this game, he comes up to me, or when I'm driving him somewhere in the car, he's like, "Oh hey dad, did you see the new Risk of Rain update?" Like, no, he's like, oh, well, they did this and this and this. And by the way, did you know about the lore behind this character? It's really interesting because this character actually is related to this other character from the first game, even though they died. And that's part of the plot of this game. And I'm like, ah, uh, <laughs> this is too much. I don't understand. Like, why are you talking about this? Uh, and how do you know all this? Frankly, like, that's right. what I'm really confused about. 
save it save it for the guy who's really really interested in the lore when you want that you go to the wikipedia like when i was you know there you're like clicking through the chapters you're like oh this is cool let me click here let me click here click there yeah six hours later you know you're finding about some elven lore you never even gave a shit about you never you know it, it's just <laughs> it is what the it baileys is. here telling a story <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I'm I'm getting a report that uh, from the chat that Emily Baker got struck by law and crime during law and the, cuck um, did it again. Oh, oh man, they're they're getting people left and right nowadays. I mean, I guess you were the one only one to successfully fight them off so far. Well, they uh, they they can't get me today. <laughs> 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 but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's absolute bullshit, uh, and and they're gonna keep like they're gonna keep doing it now. This is this is their move. Um, well, they're going to the, abuse the system as much. But as here's possible. the thing, Nick, the pool is public. Now, if you go to the website on this one, it literally clearly makes the pool public. Also, they're not in charge of this pool. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I guess the what they're going to, what they're going to argue is that they're uh, maybe they're. So I, I looked at court TV's feed and court TV actually had some, they had multiple camera angles, which I'm not sure how they were doing. And they were displayed mm. simultaneously and then they had their little, you know, court TV branding and they had like a little ticker on the bottom and stuff. I'm guessing that uh, I don't know if Law and Crimes feed is doing that or if they're just pulling the feed like everybody else. But uh, maybe maybe that's what they're going to argue is that these things that we're doing are uh our, our artistic vision. Their I angles. The, the angles are special. Like we got the regular angle. We're not just looking at Amber. We're looking at Johnny. You know, I mean, okay. They're both acting. They're both putting on a face, like a specific face, right? Amber's acting like she's about to cry. Johnny is like having the what the fuck face. Although I yeah. think, um, I don't know how you guys felt about the faces, but I think, I think uh, Johnny probably needed to, you know, tone it down a little bit, but. Uh, Maybe. I'm torn. Someone asked I don't me know. what I thought thought about the faces in the chat like should his lawyers be telling him to calm down but it is still johnny depp though he's unrelentingly charming and if he reminds people that he's unrelentingly charming without being obnoxious about it it could play in his favor but it's you i you can't know we can't see the jury right well, if, if every one of these uh jury members admitted that they knew him from pirates of the caribbean so <laughs> you know when they look at that guy i wonder what what their expectation is you know mm -hmm. one thing i will yeah. say though this is a clear victory for johnny um his female lawyer was hotter i'm just gonna say it out right i'm just Much. gonna say it right now i mean yep. come on now come on now. yeah oh yeah but wait hotter than elizabeth warren's body double <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, look, Camila should have not been reading. She should have been behind the lectern if she was going to have the notes thing. Like, grandma did yeah. it better. But, I mean, that hair, come on now. Come on now. Oh, yeah, she she looked way better. Uh, that's why, that's the problem with having the paper. It's like, no, you want, like, look at look at me. I'm professional. I'm well presented. I'm pretty. You want to listen to me because I'm pretty. And, and I'm a woman, and I'm here on Johnny Depp's side. Very important, by the way, mm -hmm. in these types of Me Too things to have female representation on yep. the uh on the team and prominent female representation on the team so that was good stuff but uh it's uh it, it i i just don't like the look of holding something in front of your body it again yeah. you just use a podium then it's horrible body language it's horrible body language especially when you're in the well like if you're if you're in the well yeah. it's just don't do it like when i was on i was on mock like trial oh, you don't do it no, no no i was just saying on mock trial as a moot court like I literally would have slapped somebody if they did that on, you know, either one. And, and it wasn't that long. If it was grandma, I can understand. Cause you know, she had the Gettysburg address times a million, but <laughs> for her, for, you know, Camila, I mean, hers was short. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's what I was going to say uh, that her, her overall speech is probably like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Like you, you can memorize this. You can do this. It's 25 minute speeches are not that hard. You don't even really need to like rehearse it. You just need to run through it a couple times. You need to get it in your head what you're going to say. Uh, get your extemp talking points up there, and and bust it out. It's, if it's a two hour opening, right? And like, and you're going to get really detailed, like Grandma did. Uh, you could, you probably want, you might want an outline. She should have had an outline. Um, I, I mean, she she went off the cuff, but like her her 
testimony or yeah, her testimony. There you go. There's the subtle slip. <laughs> We're opening. Testimony. Well, it is. It was testimony. It was testimony, yeah. though. You're saying it because it was yeah. there. And, and by the way, Nick, what did you think about the uh, objection about the uh, Sun trial, the British trial? Uh, what did you? How do you feel I, about that? I called it right before it happened. I said they they can't let this happen. Cannot let this come in. Uh, they gotta object to it. And then uh, it was it was like 20 seconds later. They you know they asked to approach. And I I thought the timing on it was really good. They didn't let them get to the uh, to the actual statement and object afterwards, but they let them get far enough that they could go before the judge. And say, this is clearly where they're going. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought they were going to maybe just mention this thing, but they're they're going to go into it and they're going to try and show that he lost the case. It's not admissible. You can't do that. And uh, the judge, you could see on her face when she was talking to the lady, like you you can't you can't do this. You know you can't do this. So, right. I thought that it's was like they well, don't have a constitution. Well they don't have the first amendment. Like, why are you going to bring in people who literally don't have the first amendment in that, in that country? I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, even that, that, and it's against another party in another continent. Like you just, you cannot bring that up as somehow evidence, even if it was in the States, well, this, you wouldn't have been able to bring that up. Right. It was a dumb play anyway, because this judge went on record saying that they didn't feel that J Johnny Depp had a fair trial. <laughs> so they know that. So bringing it up, uh, they tried for it. But again, they already knew how the judge felt about that case. Yeah. They wanted, uh, they wanted, they wanted to catch him sleeping, right? Catch the other side sleeping, get, get in there to sl slip it in that he lost that case. And now he's trying to bring it here, whatever you want to do before they object, get that in mm -hmm. the mind of the jury, but they were on top of it. Thank goodness. Uh, it's uh it's crazy yeah uh emily baker got struck down wow that is crazy i'm yeah i'm seeing that i'm seeing that right now too nick that that's that's insane um you know and it, it, that was the the second lawyer it's happened to recently uh via lawn cuck yeah it sounds like uh court tv struck her also uh she Weird. says it's wild uh, this is, uh, it's, it's going to precipitate Wait. the fight between Cor independent media and these, these corporate media companies that want to claim ownership of public proceedings that they have, they, they're not bringing this about in any way. Uh, and the, the only thing that they do is they put some cameras in some courtrooms, but not all of them. And so they're going to, they're going to argue that their media pool, uh, which, is already a little bit suspect, suspect, by the way, the fact that there is a media pool where people, appropriate parties get to report on something that doesn't sound very First Amendment-y. Mm. <laughs> and the use of the copyright system to enforce it sounds like a First Amendment issue that that could be brought up uh, in, in a way that um, uh, has not really been done before because right. uh, copyright is copyright and free speech is free speech. But the right of the press being uh, in for or being suppressed by copyright means that private companies are able to utilize a governmental function to take away the rights of someone else. And if once that happens, you suddenly move into the place of being able to assert First Amendment rights against a private party. So that's mm -hmm. uh, it'll be really interesting to see how this keeps playing out with with all of us here on the law too. Especially fundamentally, this stuff should be part of the public domain. I mean, like th this this type of this type of you know film i mean it's being provided to them to distribute you know for these purposes um the fact yeah. that they're trying to use it for their own kind of nefarious uh nefarious methods is it's i don't know it's very suspect I just... yeah it's it's crazy because uh, again what what they're trying to claim is that they own this public thing that they public aren't thing. making and mm -hmm. uh and they they own it because they're a media pool but that's not what copyright is. I mean, that could be something else. Not not much mm -hmm. else that makes sense since none of us are in a contract with any of them. But they're they're right. also doing this wrong. These people should be partnering. They should be partnering with us. And I don't mean mm -hmm. monetarily, just as as creators who are disseminating this information. We'll see that, but that's the problem, Nick. But that's the problem. They only care about the monetarily. I mean, that that's the that's the, that's the full stop right there. You said it. You said it. It's like they just want their they want their cut, and they see anybody with more than a thousand subscribers, and their red flags go off, and their bells go off, and they you know target them with their lasers. Yeah, uh, it it it's and it's it's silly because if they partnered with us, they would actually find growth. 
they would find mm -hmm. uh, they would find exposure and and those partnerships would actually work out. But they're they're too dumb. Uh, they're 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 dumb. They're new media trapped in old media ideas, and they will. Uh, We'll see how it goes. I mean, that's that's at the end of the day, that's what's going to happen. We'll see. Best how of luck to them, right? I mean, best of luck yeah. to them in their in their endeavor. It's uh, it's insane. Um, are you going to be so? It's it's a six week trial officially, or is it between four and that's six the, weeks? Six. It's expected to be six weeks. There's something like 120 witnesses on the list. Yeah. Oh God, uh, that's that's so long. Uh, you <laughs> asking if I'm... you got you got Hollywood celebs like James Franco coming in after he. No, was I know, in... and you got Elon, and you know, but uh, I mean, you could you could get the big guys out, you know, and are do they have to call everybody on the list? Not necessarily, right? You can have right. a list and not call everybody on it. Um, so, you know, we can see that. But from me, from looking at this, just from the opening, my sense, especially grandma, that team is calling everybody. I mean, I think they're, oh, yeah. you know, it looks yeah. like from the opening, if I'm reading tea leaves here, they're trying to muddy the water. They're trying to throw out a whole bunch of information. So mm -hmm. you kind of get confused as to what's going on and what facts are relevant versus irrelevant. Um, you know, they accused Johnny Depp of doing it, but that's the, essentially it was uh, legal gaslighting. You know, they say, you know, they're trying to confuse you. Well, you guys are trying to confuse by throwing out all these facts, which are completely irrelevant. I mean, reading the entire article, um, I got why they did it. I saw the point, but did it need to happen? No, no, it did not need to happen. Yeah. Uh, I just, I want to offer a quick correction. Uh, Emily was not struck by court TV. Oh, I, I okay. kind of misread the, uh, the way she wrote that. Um, Cause she said that they struck me while the court was on break. The they was law and crime. A uh, long crime. Uh, yeah, it was long crime. Yeah, so long crime struck. I thought I thought long crime got her taken down, and then she went back up, and then someone else got her. But no, it was just a long crime, and she's probably going to eat a seven day suspension for that. So uh, you're you're going? Are you going raw from? Um, how are you? How are you doing it from court TV? Uh, I'm I'm on Sky News right now. Oh, Sky News. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I was on like Washington Post for a while, and then their their audio was trash. Sky News is <laughs> a little louder. Well, hopefully you didn't think it was the the lav mic on the um, on Camille, the Johnny Depp's lawyer, uh, because that was that was just in general bad quality. No, no, no. It was. Um, did you notice Depp's first lawyer when he was first at the podium was mm -hmm. really, really loud? Yes. And then he got dropped to like 10 percent volume. Uh, did that happen for you, too? Yeah, um, yes, I believe. Yes. OK. Yes. Yeah, because that was that was brutal. Uh, and so then we, we had cranked it up and then, yeah, her, her lav mic just like never worked. So they, they picked some random area mic and so it sounded so bad. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. I mean, they got to really figure this out. We're in 2022. Like we have the technology. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can do this. Uh, hold on. And I guess the thing is, is that they don't, you know, in these proceedings, they're not stopping them from, they're not saying, Hey, hold on. Let me fix your audio levels. Let me fix your mic. Let me like, you know, adjust it. They're letting them flow uh, without, you know, trying to go over it and correct anything. I mean, if it, obviously if it's a hardware problem where she's wearing it wrong or whatever, um, that's difficult to correct, you know, mid opening statement. Right. Yeah. And, and you can't, you can't sit there and be like, okay, are we good now? Are we good now? Or eventually right. you just have to go because they can hear you. <laughs> the 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 important people are the jury that's one one hard thing for all of us watching these jury trials is like the only people that really matter in this we're we're spectators we get to see what's going on it's important for court transparency yada 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 but the uh the jury and the judge they need to hear everything and everybody else is is not even tertiary at that point like the, mm -hmm. we're all this is all gravy on top of our salad by mm -hmm. the way, if you want to make salad better for you, put gravy on it. It's, really? It's Come true. on, Nick. Come on, Nick. That's some Midwest <laughs> shit right there. Gravy on a salad. What are you going to call it a sandwich next if you have croutons? You know, It's only if you put gravy on both sides of the salad. All right. All right. See, this is why I don't show up to this. This is, this is why I don't come on here. Start talking about sandwiches, salad. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> no, it's uh, I was just thinking salads don't have enough calories. So you got to add gravy to them. But um, but yeah, so the those those our our petty concerns are ultimately petty. We, the, the most important thing. And that's why you can't sit there and fiddle with a mic forever and try and get the volume right. I just 
I, I am surprised that they no court can competently pull this off. It seems none of them can get even remotely decent audio, even actually in the, the local courthouses here. And these things aren't televised, but we use mics that then play through speakers in the room just in case people are quiet. Even those they're, they're terrible microphones. Like they, they pick up everything. The gain is off the charts. Uh, but they, when you speak directly into them, they sound like trash. It's yeah. Like, oh my yeah. God. Just get some, just get a couple decent mics, and put them down. This isn't not that, that hard. expensive. <laughs> not that expensive, not that hard. But right. I mean, it is, it is, it is, you know, the public, it is, you know, the public court. Come on now. Virginia. So you're going to be, you're going to be here every single day with me for the entirety of six weeks, every single second, right? Then I heard you commit to that. Yeah, about ago. that. I think I have to walk my goldfish. Um, <laughs> it really needs to pee real bad. Um, no, I, I, I think I, I, I've gone on my stream and I said, look, I'm going to try to, you know, pop around. I, I was on the Legal Bites stream early. I'll be on your stream. I'll pop in and out, uh, over and around. I'm not going to be on for every single. There's no way. I mean, literally no way. I, I have a, a job, uh, you know, oh, sure other you than do. YouTube. Oh, listen yes. to this cool guy over here with work <laughs> oh. to do. Yeah, I have on. a job sorry, too. I'm sorry. still here. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't and, see you don't see Tug pussying out like, oh, I gotta go to work. No, he's yeah. here. This this man's yeah. an Iron Man. Uh, I died after Rittenhouse, uh, and not just on the inside, <laughs> on the outside too, Ricada. Like literally on the outside. Um, but I will I will definitely be here for all the highlights. Uh, I will be here for a lot of the big stuff, and obviously, um, any of the big witnesses that are coming in, I'm gonna jump on and and you know uh, give my 42 cents on that. I'm also going to try to stream because obviously here in Korea, a little bit of different time zone. It's two o'clock in the morning now. So I'll try to stream in the morning, probably after everything's wrap up and a little bit later um, as well. So, well, man, uh, you'll be welcome here anytime, of course. And uh, I, I always appreciate it when you stop no. by. I appreciate it too, guys. And it's a, it's an important one to cover. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, and this is something I, I kind of was musing about on here. You know, I, I don't think this case changes the laws for men. I don't think, you know, and I don't think any of the laws on the books come out and become more favorable for men. But I think for it, one of the things that it does do is it does put out some visibility that men can be the victims of domestic violence as well. And I think that like little bit of red pill out there and also busting up this narrative, busting up the Me Too narrative, busting up the very much the the article, the article that was read, kind of busting up some of the presumptions and narratives as part of that. I think that's that's a good thing for people to see that, look, um, men are not protected by these structures and powers. The court is not out here to protect Johnny Depp, which is pretty much the principle behind that article. Quite in right. fact, you can see that's in favor in many cases of, you know, Amber Heard with her, you know, ex parte hearings, you know, getting a TRO. And I understand that's normal. I understand that's not anything that's too crazy. But you just have to understand, you know, that can happen in a DV situation. Um, and how in a DV situation, uh, if you have a girlfriend who's like Amber Heard uh, and who's saying some crazy shit uh, and you're the guy in that relationship, uh, do not be surprised in a mandatory arrest state if you're the one who's dragged away. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, these are the things well, that, that happened happen. with uh, that happened with uh, Chuck Liddell, the Iceman Chuck yep. Liddell. Um, he was the he was the victim of the uh, domestic abuse in that case. And uh, this is what came out later. But uh, he ended up going to jail that night um, because it was a mandatory arrest state and they had to take someone to jail. He's the guy who went. Uh, and I think he I think he chose to basically go like he said, well, take mm -hmm. me. Uh, you got to take somebody. Take me. Um, but but he wasn't actually charged or anything. And, and it was it was her who was the abuser in that case. Um, but no, this the, I, I agree with you. I don't think the laws are going to change. But one other thing that I wanted to add into your sentiments, which I all uh, agree with fully, is that I do think that uh, this is this is starting to lay down a roadmap in a couple ways. That's really, really important, especially as more and more men will be men in particular. It, it, look, it can happen to women, but the Me Too shit is aimed at men. And that's where yep. uh, that's where this is going. And that's what's what's important here is they need to find the appropriate path to do this. And you see right from the the herd's first lawyers opening statements, which were much better than the second, in my opinion. But um, he was he was demonstrating how hard this is. Look. She didn't write this article to defame Johnny Depp. It's just these three little sentences where it's mentioned. These 
these things don't even say anything about Johnny Depp. And it's like, but then he has to immediately go and say, this is a, all of the years of a, of all of this stuff are baked into these statements. It's like, yeah, but they try and work this technical angle where uh, every statement becomes an island unto itself in a defamation case. It's like, but, but those three statements destroyed Johnny Depp. He was not destroyed yep. prior to those three statements. And all of the baggage is solidified and condensed into those three statements that are made in this particular op-ed, run in this particular time, written in a very specific way to do this. But she even, and they even said she even talked to her lawyer to try and minimize the uh, impact mm -hmm. of Johnny Depp. It's like, no, you're trying to minimize your exposure to a lawsuit. Exactly. Why would you yeah. talk to a lawyer? And when, of course, we can't hold that against her, right? Right? you're always allowed to no. talk to counsel but you know just logically like mm -hmm. once again remove yourself from what's admissible in a court into logically in her, her thought process is hmm maybe i shouldn't be saying this right. maybe i need to be careful here and, and her lawyer took well, a bunch of those those approaches that were just baffling like the, the fact that they they kept mentioning the finger getting cut off like as if that doesn't matter uh and it's like and they keep and they mentioned well you know he burned his own face with a cigarette and it's like yeah so you see Johnny Depp's injuries. You never see Amber Heard's. Well, she's always got makeup on her because she's a she's very she's an actress. So she knows how to do her makeup all the time. It's like okay, but someone somewhere has to have seen two black eyes, a busted up lip. Like somebody had to see this. Where where is it? Where's the picture? This is a photograph person who's in front of cameras every day, going on live television with James Corden, and no one knows except for one guy. Well, she looked a little swollen. It's like, oh, stop, yeah. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yeah, she makeup she saw covers no everything. The the only the only doctor that she saw, she asked somebody over the phone to do a concussion check for her, so she didn't see anyone. She they talked about the three day hostage ordeal, so she was supposedly. Uh, drug through glass you know all of these other things that would have they would have scarred you and not just scarred you in the moment they scarred you for life and yet uh, she has photo shoots within two or three days like you said james corden show the james corden show comes right after she claims that she uh johnny depp broke a bed because he was sitting on her back bracing his leg and hitting her so hard that it that it broke her nose it blacked both of her eyes it busted her lip ripped out uh, huge clumps of hair. Again, she goes on a show the next day and she has no range of motion issues, no swelling issues. Yeah, that's some magic concealer. I want some of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah, Tug, when, when he when he said that, 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 that fact about the glass, I mean, that was the one you, that you said that it's like, that is some saw shit. That is some stuff like that yeah. you don't like recover from getting dragged through broken glass easily if that actually happened. Yeah. Um, uh, which, you know what? I, there's a documentary she, though. There is a documentary out there about this. Uh, it's called Die Hard. And <laughs> <laughs> he had to traverse some broken glass, but he was still uh, able to carry on through the rest of the documentary. R.I.P. Bruce Willis. <laughs> R.I.P. Bruce Willis. And I know he's not dead, but I, I, I do, I do love me some Bruce Willis. It's very sad. Well, yeah, but the uh, he's yeah. he's retiring because of the aphasia, which is mm -hmm. uh, it's a shame frankly yeah. like because he's he was so good uh and we but we, we get those good memories of bruce willis right like mm -hmm. we don't we don't need the sad piece maybe you can get a lifetime achievement award while he's still yeah. alive now he, he he's not gonna be hamled oh yeah Ooh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, All right, guys. Well, on that note, listen, I, I got to bounce out. I'm going to catch some Z's and uh, be back at it tomorrow. But, you know, Nick, as always, appreciate you covering this. And Tug, it's good to meet you, by the way. I haven't been on yeah, the stream. Good to meet you, bro. Yeah. Right. Take care, guys. All right, buddy. Have a good night. He left before I got to say goodbye. Ugh! I hate when they I hate when they do that. I hate when they leave me. All right. I'm out. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. Uh, okay. A couple more, um, couple more uh, chats here. Lancelot. 652 says rotten born after Elden Ring. I'm triggered by anything named rotten. Uh, Texas Red says, I wonder if Lou Sazzle, a friend of Johnny's, will take the stand. Any idea? No, not that I know of. I haven't seen that name. I don't even know who the fuck that is right off the bat. I have no idea either. It might be a joke that I don't understand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like with, with, the, uh, with the chat, uh, I never trust the chat. Yep. Uh, Matova, I, I have invited Emily Baker to pop in if she wants to. Uh, also, she's over on um, 
uh, she might pop over on legal bites. I, I have no idea, but uh, she's welcome to do, you know, whatever she wants to do. She, she has an invitation here yeah. and she's welcome to join. But I'm uh, also talking shit about, Oh, uh, loose Crow. asshole. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Thanks chat. Lovely. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> Lose that soul. <laughs> See it now. Is oh there an God. IP freely here? Everybody, uh, IP freely. Uh, Lewis Sasshole. Come to the office, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Andrew War Snowboard says, Does this absolute charlatan just say that Ed Harris was wrong that putting a little jalapeno or some snot on the ball can't help your fastball? I bet he also believes that Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball. Mo says the public is on the side of Depp. The media is not. This lawyer's mouth is full of BS. Well, maybe he's eating some dirty oh, man, I haven't even looked at the headlines yet. I'm, I'm going to look at them while we're, while we're sitting here and see how the media is actually covering this. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, if, if you if you get any juicy ones, uh, share them, right. and I'll, I'll pop them back up. Or I'll pop them up. Uh, I'll pop them like, uh, like Johnny Depp Xanax. Uh, Snuggle Struggle says Amber Turd was already in communication with her lawyer prior, which could have gotten the restraining order on Turd's behalf easily. Instead, she publicly went to get the restraining order. The paparazzi there by co coincidence? I'm sure. Lol. Uh, Keldrig, or Keldrig says, uh, Hey, you, victim, your wife abusing you is your fault. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, can you imagine uh, a woman being told that, oh, my God, someone put a cigarette out on you? No, no, you did that to yourself. Oh, they would be if this and this is what Andrew was laying out, which uh, I, I think is really, really important, is that um, domestic violence occurs against men at a rate that is much, much higher than is given credit credence oh, yeah. or credibility uh, in in the public. And to to see the tactics that amber heard is complaining about for women being openly employed by her team against a man is is amazing right like because that's what her article is about well i became the face of domestic violence in a system that propagates and perpetuates men allows them and enables them to be abusers and it's like you're doing the things that men are accused men and institutions are accused of doing to women right now to johnny depp uh well, by, it's a fantastic method of defense too, because anytime you try to say no, 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 she uh, she did this to me, or someone did it to me, no, well that that proves that proves that powerful men they destroy women if you dare speak up. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. I remember Earl Silverman, you know the uh, the at the Canadian domestic abuse uh, advocate. He was trying to set up uh, domestic abuse shelters because there were none. Um, he uh, yeah for men. He said you know yeah he went in and he said uh, that. When he was abused, he wanted a shelter to go to, but instead the cops referred him to anger management. So when he was setting it up, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So they, the system there, the advocates for, um, at the time you didn't have me too, they were just feminist advocates. They drove the man to suicide because all he wanted to do was to help male victims. Uh, he wrote a, 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 a few pages about that, like a four page uh, suicide note essentially. And it's yeah. fucking sad. Like you want to see what this stuff really looks like? Look up Earl Silverman, and I mean it is, that's horrible. And look up the articles from when he died because the media, they attacked the hell out of him, saying basically, essentially, well, he kind of deserved it because men. And it, it's it's crazy. I remember um, my uh, someone how do I word this? Uh, someone I know was supporting a charity. Uh, and the charity was the first and only men's shelter in Minnesota. And like the, the numbers of, of women's shelters that exist, this was a private business is not a government thing because they don't have them, but they have, you know, they have domestic violence abuse shelters for women, uh, and kids, you know, they, if they have to flee an abusive husband or whatever, they'll take them in, they'll keep them protected. They'll keep their you know, location safe and all that stuff. And, and, uh, they have security and so you can't, can't go visit. And, uh, I have my wife and kids and I have taken, uh, we've taken like treats and toys and stuff for, for charity to, to these places. And they do like, they are suspicious. They do not let you in. 
you know, they, they're very, very protective of these women. There was one in the entire state for men and they had like 11 beds. That's it. That's all it's you got. A, it's a big money institution. A lot of people don't understand that. It's not, it's not about men or women. It's about those funding dollars. And if a man though, if they try to work their way in there, cut into those funding dollars, hell yeah, they're going to, you're going to try to cut your throat. That's why, uh, like you said, you have to, you have to support these things yourself. And a lot of people that have tried to do that, they not only uh, run into funding issues where it bankrupts them, they run into very powerful institutions that will destroy your damn life. Yeah, B-Man0013 in the chat says they tried setting up a men's domestic violence shelter in Mankato, Minnesota. The people setting it up got run out of town. It's, it, it, what, is, what is so offensive about it? That's the crazy thing, right? But they can't. Men, if, if men aren't the abusers that they, they paint out, if they can actually be victims too, well, I mean, you have a whole system of, um, of empowerment that's built on that. A lot of people, a lot of people have, have, co-opted things like me too they've put themselves in power and and it is it's predicated on this lie that women are the abuse victims men are always the abusers look look at me too look at how it's it, it, when it first started out it's, men were sounding and real, off and yeah. real quick uh, just to be very clear women definitely get abused by men too like that oh, yeah. that's obvious and no one's denying that that happens the the weird thing is the denial that men can be abused at all it's uh, it's sad when, you have to even add that to pre, you know predicate the statement of men are abused. Well, that has nothing to do with women. You know, right. that men men face their own distinct challenges. We are we are facing an epidemic of false allegations. We are facing an epidemic uh, in mental health. I say that as a mental health uh, mental health practitioner. I mean, you it's insane if a man comes up very rarely will you get a man that comes in and says something like i think i'm going to hurt or kill myself uh, when you do it is normally very serious but uh, it's just it's crazy stuff man yeah it's uh well because that that's the the thing is i, I think suicide attempts are massive amongst women and suicide successes are massive amongst men um like uh, men, men, men tend to be something like four or five times more successful at suicide than women are. And, and so it's just a different it's just a, a different function of how the two genders process things. Right. Like uh, and that's what what I think you're kind of leading into is that when a guy comes in and says he's going to hurt himself, like it's it's very serious at that point because men don't do attempts at that as often. Yeah. Uh, they they tend to just do it once it's once it's that choice is made it stays made and and the uh, the thing goes well, through and it, and it and it ties into there's no way out again you know you don't have help for for a lot of things you don't have help for homelessness I mean, if you look at the homeless numbers men don't have certain things they can trade for a home like that that's a fact you know uh, men that's why there's an epidemic of that but there's also an epidemic of men that if they're abused there will be no help in fact. Like I said, if you're if you're an abuse victim and you're a male, you may get referred to anger management. You may not get any kind of help whatsoever. Absolutely. Uh, Rumble username suck says the reason all this shit is in opening is because they won't be able to build their narrative with actual evidence. If they could do that, they just outline it and do this in closing. Awful open. Yeah. And yeah, I think uh, I think that was a big part of the opening is she wanted to plant the seeds of look uh, of course all this stuff happened and and put it out there very matter of factly uh, i think her storytelling sort of approach was intentional i didn't like it but i think it was intentional it's it's meant to be gossipy it's meant to be that thing that you hear and believe right I, I was laughing at one of these uh, super chats. Somebody said about the suicide rate. They were like, once again, men being more successful than women. That's patriarchy <laughs> at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, let's see. Uh, Mo says, growing up poor is supposed to be part of her defense. If anything, that makes her more capable of doing this, not less. Lancelot says, Starbucks and a Mustang talk about a stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> How many pumpkin spice lattes were spilled in that Mustang? That's the real question. <laughs> Part of her defense uh, is going to be that he isolated her. You you heard about, you know, her, uh, she has her own vehicle. She drives around. All of her buddies, they, they live there. They were talking about her going to Coachella with all of her friends. But 
they're going to say he was an abuser. He isolates her. Ah, it's going to be, it's an epic when you start, when you just look at a little bit of what they say. So, of course, they have to say it really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, the, to the super chat, and I see in the chat someone saying, her didn't grow up poor. Yeah, I didn't get the impression that she grew up poor from the statements, but it, it was like the, the guy tried to walk two lines there. Her family was horse farmers in Austin. Uh, raising horses is not cheap in any way, and living in Austin is not cheap in any way. Like the, those two things are incongruent with being, and, and when you combine them, especially, it's incongruent with being poor. But the way he's like, mm -hmm. and she came back and she she helped her family with her meager earnings from her one line job appearance. It's like, what, huh? Like her her parents were they desperately in need of this? Like how many how many horses did they actually raise? I, I hope we get some testimony, kind of about that backstory from Herd I would, on probably on cross examination. I want to hear her throw her dad under the the bus because you know they say all these things about him too. Like she has this relationship with him. She's around him all the time, but she accused him as well. Um, so well, yeah, and that didn't they they even said something like sadly he was. Yeah. Uh, because they, they mentioned that he and Johnny got along famously. Yep. Uh, so that's that's good. Imagine imagine bussing your own dad because you can say, well, my husband. It's because the uh, the mother and father did. They loved Johnny Depp. In fact, uh, before the mother died, there's another witness. Uh, they brought up that that one charity uh, that she supposedly gave to a smaller charity. Well, the owner of that. <laughs> Her testimony is amazing. She's going to claim that Heard had a fight with Elon Musk about embryos. That's where her baby came from. You know, that baby that just popped out of nowhere <laughs> with a yeah. surrogate. That's Elon Musk's baby. But she also talks about, um, about how they both loved Johnny Depp to the point that they wanted them to get back together. And that Amber Heard admit that she had to do this stuff. She had to hurt him because she loved him so much that it hurt her. <laughs> insanity yeah imagine your mama uh, saying that though yeah well it's it's uh that's the new thing though that's that's becoming more and more common you know outside of the context of of amber heard and johnny depp this uh we saw it with the january 6th stuff especially like the political divide and me too is a political movement everybody needs to always remember that me too is a political force it is effectively a political party there is a person who is uh, there, there's, there are leaders of Me Too. They're a grassroots organization in the loosest sense, but they are an organization. It's not just a concept. And, um, and so the, the, the thing with that is what, we're, what we saw with January 6th, right? People turning in their parents who went to the Capitol, like ratting them out to feds and say, oh, you know what? So-and-so I know was in there. Blah, blah, blah. And you, you see this, it's like between parents and kids, their political divisions are uh, eroding their family ties and stuff like that. And so to, to see, uh, to see Amber Heard throw her, her mom or dad or whoever under the bus over a political thing is not super surprising because, um, not at all. it, that's just the way people are handling the stuff. She also will, will have her mental health notes brought in and, you know, <laughs> mental health, like you, I, I, when I see things like people aren't using their coping skills, you know, it's, I, I read the code to that. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. she's a, with her diagnosis, she's a monster. She likes to yell and beat on people. And also she's a, she's one of those people that as a cry for helper, you know, she, uh, she showed her arm. The one thing that she says is an injury. She has a picture of her arm and it has what, I'm going to say are self-inflicted marks. They're very shallow self-inflicted marks. And, you know, you combine that with her statements. I mean, she meets a certain personality type that we diagnose all the time because you're not allowed to truly call a person what they are. You know, a, a nasty bitch that will ruin your life. There's no diagnosis right. in the DOC. So instead they're that. histrionic personality disorder or whatever. Yeah, or they have borderline personality, you know, or yeah. 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 It's insane. Uh, that'll be, that'll be interesting to get that, that stuff, uh, to show up because that that's one of the things that, that people will be looking for and could really put this case to bed really quickly is some solid evidence that Johnny Depp abused her. Um, but, uh, the, the other thing that I caught during opening statements that really kind of made me chuckle was that, um, they called out all of Depp's witnesses, 
straight out the gate, right? Oh, they're all on his payroll or enjoying luxury at his expense or whatever. That that's immediate. Well, first of all, yeah, if if there is someone who is uh, like Johnny Depp, the people around them are going to be enjoying some sort of luxury at their expense. That's just the reality of who they are. Uh, just like Amber Heard and her friends, by the way. Like I'm I'm guessing I'm gonna bet Johnny Depp paid for that trip for Amber Heard to go to Coachella with their buddies, right? Like that's probably out of his uh pirates money is where that goes. <laughs> I don't think she has her own separate banking account that she was saving up her pennies from her little acting gigs or whatever to to fund those trips and those cars and stuff like that. But well, they you well they he also supported all their lives. So if we're saying that Everybody, you can't trust them because, you know, he was supporting them. Okay, well, uh, he was providing homes for uh, for all of her witnesses. He uh, paid all of their bills while they were there. So do we trust them, too? I'm confused on that. Well, and the, the other thing that I love is the one the one witness that they have towards some level of domestic violence is Amber Heard's sister. But she doesn't count, though, right? Like, that's not too close of a relationship. She She's <laughs> trustworthy, uh, even though that story is about Amber Heard punching Johnny Depp. And it's really... Um, it's really their mitigation of the fact that she punched Johnny Depp in the face. Like that's what they're trying to do. Well, she, she was justified in doing it because he was beating on her sister and she thought he might throw her sister down the stairs. Therefore she had to hit him. She had to hit him that time. But what's funny is he has a cast on at the same time. So they're, they're talking about how he's grabbing people and stuff. Well, he has a, he has a cast on and yeah, when you start again, when you start breaking that down, it, it doesn't make sense. But the reality is that there's no one else that can claim that they saw him do anything. So the sister is the only person that will make a claim. And she claims I saw this one time. So. Thomas Fitzpatrick says that she allegedly paid for her sister's college and that her sister will testify. And, you know, they very likely will be asking those questions. Oh, so, you know, how did uh, where'd you go to college? And then on cross-examination, it'll be like, oh, you see, you you're educated. You went to college. Yeah. Uh, who paid for that? <laughs> it was Amber Heard, wasn't it? In there fact, she pays for a lot of stuff for you, doesn't she? Well, in the UK trial, there was a, a huge screw up by her sister and by her. They uh they got the timing of one of their incidents wrong. They forgot Oops. that there were texts out there <laughs> that this blew their time. There there were texts and there were pictures and so they, nobody knew about them. They came up right in the middle of the trial, but the judge would not allow them to press that. So they went in, they gave the wrong timeline after that was brought up. They corrected their timeline with some of the flimsiest excuses ever. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about this. But now I remembered. So both of them, they course correct and they adjust on the stand their testimony. Both of them saying we didn't collude or coordinate on the timeline before or after. I can't wait to see that brought up. That's yeah, that that type of stuff's amazing. And just uh, the more you hear about the UK court case, um, the more of a disaster you realize that it was and in the UK courts justification on paper on Britain was that it uh, was that this, you know, well, this, this case wasn't about Amber Heard. It was about what the UK sun posted, but in the States that doesn't fly like anybody I mean, who's involved in this stuff gets brought in. Let's, let's figure out the truth. Anyone you can feasibly get in front of the court, who would have useful information for the court to determine the truth of the matter is, uh, is, you know, they're subject to it. They're witnesses. And so the fact that they weren't able to really go after her there just shows more and more. And it'll be interesting to see what happens when he, when they are able to go after her and hopefully they'll go full bore. I'm, I need a betting pool on how many times she'll cry, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a lot. You, she, <laughs> She, uh, th when her one-year-old son was mentioned or whatever, she, she did the, <sighs> which is a court thing. I don't know if anybody knows this, but here, like, look, ladies in the chat out there, you and your one-year-old sons, very beautiful, perfect, uh, perfect little children that you brought into this world. How many of you actually started crying when I mentioned that? None of you, but in court, you do every time. <laughs> My memories. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about it okay this is something that <laughs> i'm lactating now i know it just it oh i think you're oh man you know every now uh, these days where i can identify as whatever i want every now and then when i flip a coin sometimes i lactate sometimes i'm angry i don't know 
But no, it, it's... <laughs> do I have do I have a that's when I have sex male chest that, today? I like the whole uh, you can't determine like what a female is. I was like, so every time you you have sex, it's a coin flip on whether or not you'll get pregnant. That's that's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, stuff. it's coin flip on who, who gets pregnant, and it's also a, co- uh, a coin flip on if you're gay or not that particular day, right? <laughs> like because you might be oh. like. I don't know. I might be having sex with a man, I guess. The kid thing, before I forget this. Um, so the kid, the timing of that, so suspect. You know, right before the last trial, that kid pops up via surrogacy. I mean, we're talking weeks before it. Now, you cannot tell me that that was not a timed publicity thing for, you know, outside of the courtroom. It deflected away. Now, they, they had the delay, so she was probably like, oh, shit, I had this kid. I have to wait another year. I have to deal with this. What's up? But it, it was amazing to see. Like, that. that is the ultimate trump card for court. Oh, you think you can go out and, and you can uh, make me face what I said? Psh, look at this little kid here. Yep. I'm a mother. How dare you? Elizabeth Holmes tried the same thing, right? Her criminal yeah. trial coming due, and she's like, Oh, I, I wasn't. And look, I, I don't know anything about Elizabeth Holmes and, and I didn't follow the case closely. So I assume she's innocent, even though she was found guilty. But uh, I, look, I assume she's innocent because we need more women in STEM, frankly. Uh, but uh, she uh, she gets pregnant, right? Like, boom, pregnant. And uh, oh, oh, uh, it gets really hard to sit through the days in court or whatever. Every, every time you, you, get, you use that card because it works. Use that card because it works. Also, if you're pregnant, you might not go to jail if you're a new new mother, depending on the crime. Uh, that that type of stuff works for judges. So it's great. I love it. Uh, Hike Craze says, if emotional distress is a tell body language wise, Johnny is screaming and Am- Amber looks to be faking a sob. Oh yeah, the again her little her little cry when the one year old was mentioned was obviously oh. fake. She knew yeah. that line was coming. Her lawyers have probably talked about how they were going to mention her kid, how that'll play really well with the jury. The fact that she's a mother and why, you know, uh, trying to bring good back into the world in a world that's so dark with, with all these things and break the cycle and raise a kid. Right. And all of that stuff that, that shit is, is all, she knows it's coming and she was ready. Horowitz Feinberg and Horowitz says, what's the legal version of a gish galop? We just watched it with, uh, with lady lawyer there <laughs> lancelot says and then and then and then come on lady you have six weeks <laughs> it was the connections that she was doing that were getting me right like well and then they went over here to west hollywood which is a little bit better than east hollywood i don't know uh maybe you've heard i know a couple people in west hollywood my sister francine is over there and her husband her husband eric he's a he's kind of a monster reminds me of johnny depp a little bit but back to what we were saying they weren't in east hollywood they were actually in west hollywood and amber was there visiting her friend sarah and sarah she has a whole bunch of other friends emily tina and tiffany that were all there as well they were doing a thing they do a book club on the weekends the latest book was the sisterhood of the traveling pants ironically although i'm not really sure that's irony that oh my god like the this little stream of consciousness tangent that she was going on was driving me crazy. I hope it drove the jury nuts, frankly. I had trouble keeping up with that. I, I know this trial, and I had trouble keeping up with what the hell she was talking about. It was ridiculous. And and if you have trouble, I had trouble. I think the jury probably had some trouble with that as well. It was just too much presented too fast and it was um you know they say i i don't know if if you're a mental health person so you know this this is true men are waffles and women are spaghetti have you heard of that no no okay so men are men are like a waffle because their their brain is little compartments right and you you put a drop of syrup in each compartment but it's it's its own thing and women are like a plate of spaghetti because they're everything's intertwined and it's a mess in their brains uh and they they do these like here's a link to this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. Whereas guys like, no, here's the compartment that I'm opening and I'm going to shut it again and no one can get in uh, later. So that's, that's the idea. It was very spaghetti brained. Uh, That's, that's all I got. I can't believe you don't know about this mental health. Uh, This is doctrinal. I now doubt your credentials and credibility. I don't know, man. God, how dare I? (laughs) I should have spent a few more years in school. This is in the science. They actually opened up a woman's head and started, they've just poured marinara sauce on it and started eating. <laughs> right. 
I, I watched uh, that. It was in Hannibal or whatever. Oh, um, that's <laughs> that's that's kind of sexy there. Oh, did they pour it on a waffle? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Walking Bread says, "Hey, that umbrella guy. Those hey are there. some dulcet tones I miss." Miss, why are you missing it? He's, the man's I'm got right a show. here. Exactly. What's up? <laughs> uh, got laid off last time I donated <laughs> November before COVID. Oh, shit. Best of wishes for your health and YouTube career. Dude, I, I hope uh, that you are no longer laid off. And I hope that this donation doesn't lead to another one. <laughs> so I'd, I'd be hesitant. I'd be bruised. Oh, my God. You, you caused that, Nick. How dare you, buddy? I'm sure I, like, well, I, I did actually, I, I canceled him. What I did, I got the donation, which had all of his subscriber information. And then I got a crack team subscriber information being his name. Cause YouTube doesn't tell us anything, but that's beside the point. I got a crack team of Amber Heard's investigators to track down who he was. <laughs> we got his real name. I called his work and I said, you won't believe who this guy donated to on YouTube. <laughs> it was me yeah i tried doing Scra that to someone i did it to myself though no. <laughs> scrape says looks like no charges for the only stabs thought wait what <laughs> did you hear about that chick the only fans no. chick who stabbed her boyfriend to death uh, uh well i heard i i heard about a, a, a case recently i i didn't realize it was a only fans uh thing i think i heard you talking about that i just caught part of it though yeah, this uh, this OnlyFans chick, she she stabs her her black boyfriend in the shoulder and he dies from it. Uh, and of course, she she's claiming self defense, but there's no it's it's a he said she said. But she's they're in Florida though. They're in Florida, and actually in Florida, she probably has a very strong case. Um, uh, I think it's more like he's dead. she said he's dead because I mean he's not saying much, right? <laughs> well, yeah. He probably moaned a little bit for a while. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just think it was for revenge for all the stabbings he gave her. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Daphne Lansborough. I should do a. I should do a video on that. Daphne Lansborough sent a crying hippopotamus that says "epic fail." Uh, thank you, Daphne. I'm not sure what what exactly that's in reference to. I I know I did it, but I'm not sure what. <laughs> well, there were a few in that trial part, so. <laughs> Weird Anomaly says, when Amber Heard loses, how long until she appears on a victim track featuring Juicy Smollett? <laughs> oh, here's a funny one. So her lawyer at one time, the person that was discredited and took down hashtag times up, you know, that whole uh, Robbie Kaplan that I think it was uh, Cuomo. She ended up, you know, helping Cuomo behind the scenes at Burning Down. She represented Juicy Smollett, Harvey Weinstein, and Amber Heard. <laughs> so There you go. No, oh, that's, that's great. Emily is back. She's back up. That's great. That's good. Uh, good good news good. for her. That's good. what people are reporting anyway. I, I assume. Good. I assume it to be true. But uh, next, Squizgar twenty three twenty two says once again, men being more successful than women. Patriarchy at work. Yeah, you you read that one earlier. That was good. I can taste fried food. Says Tug. Are your books canon, or can I pick up whatever and enjoy? Uh, like back, like backing those I like, I -E R G E Doug, Ethan, and a few others wanted to add you to the list. Thanks for streaming this, by the way, Tug. Oh, hey there, lawman. Uh, do you want to tackle this one, or you want me to? Uh, why don't you tackle the comic book thing? You, you may, I don't I know, it. man. Like you're, it's bad. It, it's it's cool and yet sad that you're better at pushing on comic <laughs> books than I am. <laughs> Look, uh, this is uh, Tug's third book. It's his third book. But you know what? And, and you, so you're asking, can you can I just pick up and read it? Is it canon or whatever? But Tuck, if I'm not mistaken, there is a tier which gets you all three books. Is that, that right? Is correct. That is correct. Yes. So let me go ahead and solve that problem. Is that the hundred dollar tier? That is correct. Yep. Let me just go ahead and solve your problem there. I can taste fried food. That uh, that one hundred dollar tier will get you all three of those books. So you don't have to worry about if you can pick up in the middle because you can pick up right from the start. You can get all of the goodness that Tug has put out so far. Plus, you get a couple extra goodies in there as well. It is a great deal. It also is supporting an independent comic creator, something we all need to be doing because they can kill characters we like. They can kill franchises we like, but they can't kill our actual hobbies 
because when they try, we can go out and make them ourselves. Tug's a guy that's done it. He's got a good track record. Two books put out on time and uh, and in high quality. So go check out this campaign, The Littlest Umbrella, uh, on on uh, Indiegogo. And yep. show my man some support. It's good stuff. Is it, You're still selling, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Uh, okay. We... Did you extend? I did. I extended 30 days with all the craziness good. and stuff going on. I just, I was no, like, man, 30 it. days is good. You know, you got to extend it 30 days. Uh, that because it doesn't change the, the delivery date of the book. It just opens right. the window longer for the funding and, and for people to get in there. And the, the way the internet works, man, notifications don't go out. I see it all the time. When I went on vacation, two days into it, someone's like, I haven't seen your videos in forever. I'm like, well, it, literally every night, but people don't get notifications. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, go go check it out. Uh, maybe maybe I'll get it pulled up here in the break, uh, so people can actually uh, have a link to it. Here I'm gonna put it in the. No wait, I dropped that's... a I dropped a link in the description or in the chat too, so people okay. want to check it out. Perfect. Yeah, so go check it out, guys. Uh, I've I've got the link there as well, dude. You're at one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars on that thing. Hell yeah, man. That's right. That you know, when we awesome. look at this stuff, too, I love the idea that <laughs> when we're walking away from a company, we're building up alternatives. All of these people are watching us. You know, all these pros, <laughs> they're, they're, they're looking at these people that they consider unworthy. Like, for myself, I've never been in the comic book industry. The people that I work with, they should be, but they are not in the comic book industry. We have these numbers. We can say, ha ha, look at that. So you support something and you send a powerful message that way. Could have been yours, but it's not. Yep. It's, it's, uh, it's great. I love seeing it, man. I'm, I, I hope it gets to 150. Uh, thank you. Oh no. Ah, oh, damn it. My nothing big. My YouTube uh, chat page just ran out of memory. Oh, I thought something terrible happened. After, no, it's uh, with this. It's I, just I, what I'm happens. Always, oh, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say after the striking and stuff, I'm always afraid somebody's going to try to take us down live or something. Yeah, I I would not be surprised if we get something like that over the course of this trial. I think especially as long crime starts losing viewers uh, yeah. and and uh, the independent uh, communities keep growing, I think that's going to be. That's going to be their weapon. Uh, they they act like the old uh, the old monopolists that people used to complain about. They, this is my thing. You can't do it, and they they will they will work to take you down. No, what happened? Uh, it happens a lot when you get um, around ten thousand or more viewers. Even with slow mode, there's just so many chats that if you don't refresh the the chat windows um, on the studio side, it is different. The studio chat window is different than your chat window. I know your guys' chat windows don't do this, but on the studio side, uh, there's a lot going on that YouTube is processing data for from me. And so with that, it, uh, it does a memory stack overflow and it, it, you have to refresh things and then it removes the super chat list. That's the best part of it that I love that I think is great. So now I have to go back and find where I we love were watching Flash spot. try to work through that every Saturday. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the chat, by the way. What's up, Yellow yeah, Flash? Yeah, I want to give him a shout out too. Check out Yellow Flash 2's uh, videos that drop on this stuff. Make sure to support him as well. He's been keeping up with it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. You want some dulcet tones? Get yellow flash. S. Asp says statistically and from LEO experience, men are actually more abused than women, but men are conditioned to not report it. And actual bias system uh, uh, and the actual bias system against men have seen officers tell uh, men to man up, even with injuries and evidence. Yeah, this is a this is a consistent problem. Um, it's uh, I I had a guy. Uh, I had a guy, a client who was, uh, he comes, uh, no, he was home, he was home. His girlfriend, 10 years, they've been together for 10 years, not married. Um, and she had a 16 year old son. This is a little bit of an older couple. And the 16 year old comes in and starts throwing a tantrum, uh, was, was doing all sorts of, doing all sorts of shit, had some problems at school, had some legal problems that were following him. Uh, usually legal problems are referred to as police and uh, police that were following him literally. And he gets into a fight with his mom and my client uh, goes to break up the fight. 
And so all he does is he puts his arms around the kid, right? Just grabs around him. Uh, the kid fights his way uh, away from him and runs outside. So the mom and this guy go outside to follow and the kid is waiting and clocks the guy in the face with a shovel, right? Bashes him with a shovel, knocks him down, starts throwing rocks at him and runs away. My guy gets arrested for domestic abuse of the mom because the kid said he was beating my mom because he was trying to avoid trouble. Right. Uh, the mom's the one who hires me <laughs> to, to go and uh, provides a statement that, you know, he's never laid a hand on her in his entire life or whatever. But, but imagine this, the cops show up, this guy's face has been bashed in with a shovel. Uh, there are rocks all around. He's got the corroborating testimony and he's the guy who ends up catching the charge. Uh, it's, it's just how the system works, but it's, it's very biased in favor of men. You know, Amber Heard's right. Really? Like that's, that's how it goes. Uh, Kiernoth says Zoe Quinn of Gamergate fame was also the daughter of rich people and apparently had borderline personality disorder as well. She outright admitted it and was still defended by the media back then in 2014. Typical. Didn't Zoe Quinn also bully a man into suicide? Yes. Yes, she did. Um, Alec Hawaka, I, I forget how his uh yeah Hal Halaka Hal Halaka yeah. or something like that yeah, yeah she, uh Holakawa yeah she made accusations about him which were disproven by her own tweets you know she <laughs> she's so addictive to Twitter that you know she liked to tweet about just walking down the street or going to this play and she was saying he was holding her a prisoner much like we hear in this you know from that three day ho hostage ordeal and yeah none of that ended up being true at all but. The, the horrifying thing about that is no law enforcement ramification whatsoever. Yep, not at all. And uh, just a reminder out there that Zoe Quinn bullied a man to suicide openly and in public and was not only not punished or, or really even given any negative criticism about it, but she's supported through it. Uh, that's 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 how biased the system is in favor of men. The victim Zoe Quinn. <laughs> You fucking just kills a guy. Uh, just insane. And by the way, I, I do not suggest that there should be criminal penalties for uh, for talking to someone and they commit suicide. I think um, we, we typically do not have criminal penalties for that. It's really rare. Usually it involves a plea, uh, but that's a hard case to prove because free speech is uh, a very important thing. So, um, But that doesn't mean that it well, doesn't happen. And that doesn't mean that you can't see it happen. She wasn't also, you know, saying, hey, you're fat or you're stupid. She was saying, hey, you know, you held me hostage and you did all these terrible things to me. And it cost him everything in his life. Uh, just overnight, bam, he lost his career. He had everyone that he knew turn on him real time. So, yep. yeah, it has a, it's a lot more than freedom of speech. We have motion lemonades. Okay, if I could just get those, I'd appreciate it. Well, we're back. <laughs> She's back from the barber. So we do have the order for Ms. Hur's motion limine, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Depp's, Mr. Moniz, and I just agreed to it. Okay. I don't have it printed, but I can tell you, Your Honor, based on the representation he gave me, it is agreed. Okay. And we will have it printed as soon as I can, but we're not right. going to obviously hold up court. With That's that. fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. All right. Are we ready for the jury then? Yes. Okay. Why couldn't their microphone sound like that the whole time? Yeah, I don't. Maybe they worked on it. Some, you know, the tech came in, hope. worked on it while uh, they were gone, or something. <laughs> okay. I guess we're waiting for the jury to come back into the courtroom. All rise. Welcome to the courtroom of Southern Delectables. This is a Virginia court, and this lady does not sound like I wanted that deep Virginian accent, right? Oh, wait, a, do they have one? I'm it doesn't even Carolina. look like they're full there. You know, the back row doesn't look like it's full or anything, huh? Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, this, I was well, so surprised they seated the jury as fast as they did. I mean, Oh, this yeah. is Johnny. Half a day, really. 
All right. Your first witness. Kristen Zembrowski. All right, Kristen Zembrowski. Is oh, she outside? That was horrible. That was okay. brutal. So who's Kristen Zembrowski? Any idea? Um, she's a. I, I think that's Depp's sister, maybe. Um, I don't. I think she's kind of. I think that's his sister. She solemnly swear or affirm to testify truthfully in this case under penalty of law. You have to verbally answer, ma'am. Okay. Johnny Depp's sister is what the chant is saying, so that yeah, that's also yeah, that's what, what you. This will be interesting. I love, I, I hate direct exam. Most of the time I love cross examinations. I love to see how lawyers pick people apart <laughs> when they choose to. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Ms. Dombrowski. Would you please state your full name for the record? Alisa Christine Dombrowski. Ms. Dombrowski, what Dombrowski. relationship, if any, do you have with Johnny Depp? He's my younger brother. How much older are you than Johnny? Two and a half years. Ms. Dombrowski, I'd like to ask you a few questions about your and Johnny's childhood. Where did you all grow up? Um, we were born in Kentucky and we moved to Florida when we were kids. Who lived in your household, you and Johnny? Our mom, our dad. Um, we have an older brother and older sister and Johnny and I. Who was the youngest child in your family? Johnny. Would you please tell the, the guy she's what 60. your relationship Johnny's with Johnny was like when you were growing up? <laughs> um, Johnny and I were very close. Uh, with, with having the older brother and older sister, we were the two younger ones. So we were really close and we basically were together all the time. Um, we played together. We <laughs> played Hot Wheels. We, you know, played... Uh, Batman and Robin were, we each had a role in that. Um, what? And Weird. he's probably going to be embarrassed if I say any of this, but, um, you know, we. He was always Robin. Practiced, you know, karate <laughs> kicks with each other and chopping. We were just friends. We were like best friends. What was Johnny like as a young boy? Jackson, you're on our 404. Character evidence. Approach. Uh, so they have to be very careful. They cannot raise Johnny's good character. Uh, so this is the objection. They they don't want her to say, oh, he was such a nice little boy. Good thing. Of course, uh, that would allow them to impeach his good character at the same time. But uh, they, they're they going to object to it and and uh, not really allow that character evidence to come in. Or they're going to ask the judge not to allow it, of course. I'm waiting for the cross where they're like, he karate kicked you? Does that mean he was violent? You know. So. He has a habit and a history of kicking women then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, what a disaster. <laughs> well, she had ties. They're, they're going to talk about him trying to destroy uh, the connection to Warner Brothers. And she was part of the tie to Warner Brothers. So she works in as not just saying, as, Mr. hey, I'm a sister. But... Uh, what was Johnny like as a little boy? Um, he was and overruled. He was a, a, a shy, sweet little boy. He had a, a very caring personality, um, but also <laughs> was a he was a little bit of a, a clown. He loved to, you know, play tricks. And of course, and what they said is scary. We're asking he what he was a, like as a little a boy. It's not his character now. Boy. Your Honor, I'm going exactly where I said I was going. All right, I'll stay in the, the, the last part of her answer, um, and we'll go forward from there. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Ms. Dombrowski, how would you describe your parents' relationship? They can't have him that be nice, ever. Would you please explain to the jury what you mean when you say your parents' relationship was complicated? Our parents were, they had two um, completely different personalities, and where our father was a 
also a very kind, patient, loving, gentle uh, man. And our mom was the opposite. She was very high strung, very nervous, uh, anxiety, angry. So they, they were completely opposite people. What was your mother's first name? Betty. Did your mother, Betty, ever get angry with your father? Yes. How would your mother express her anger toward your father? Mom would, she would scream. She would yell at him. Um, she would hit him, call him names, that kind of thing. Did your father ever hit your mother back? No, dad, dad never reacted um, when mom would hit him or scream at him. If he didn't hit her back, how, if at all, did he react? Basically, um, he would let her scream and get it out or hit and, and, and be done. And the, the, the way that you dealt with my mom, the way that he dealt with my mom was he always tried to keep the peace. So he never wanted to, you know, he, he didn't want to engage in anything. So he was very, you know, uh, sort of, he would step back and whatever it was that she was angry about, he would try to go ahead and make sure that he took care of whatever she was insisting that he do. Is it fair to say he did what she wanted? Yes, it's very fair to say he did. What, if anything, did you and Johnny do while your mother was hitting or attacking your father? We would, we would leave the area. We would run and hide. We would go to our, our room, uh, you know, either we'd go to our room together or, you know, depending on where we lived, you know, our, if our room was close, um, we would sort of run off and get away from it. How did your mother treat you and your brothers and sisters? Well, there's a, there's a similarity, I'm sorry, um, in how she treated dad. Um, again, she was a very anxious, high strung. Uh, she screamed, she yelled, she hit, uh, she threw things. She called us names. You know, we each had our own Sounds little like special uh, set of names. Some we wouldn't repeat, but um, so she gave each one of us a name. My, my name, for example, was uh, Violet, uh, which to some people, it, it wouldn't seem like it's anything, but Violet was my father's mother and my mom hated my father's mother. So that was my special name, one of them. Did your mother have any special names for Johnny? <laughs> yes, she did. Um, she had a few. Again, some to not repeat. Um, her favorite, I think, was she called him one Sounds eye. Like my mom. Um, and she called him that because uh, when he was young, the, the doctors thought he had a lazy eye, so they, they would put a patch on his good eye so that they would strengthen the other eye. So well, that's how he got good for his role as a she pirate. Used that as, you know, a way to find a, a new fun name for him. Welcome to the How show. Did Johnny potentially respond criminal. when your mother would call him. What's up, Why everybody? Not? Hey, umbrella guy. He didn't hey, respond in any negative way. Those names were, they were just a way of life. We, we got used to them. We accepted all of it. Putting aside the names, did your mother ever get angry with you? Yes. Did your mother ever get physical with you? Yes. She did, but I was um, also very quiet, very shy. And I, I learned early on to stay back. Um, so I was, I was more in the background because I would constantly sort of stay in the background to stay away from trouble. Ms. Dombrowski, when she, your mother did get physical with you, what forms did that take? Well, she would she would hit us. Um, she would throw things. Uh, she would have us go pick a switch, you know, off of a tree, you know, so that that would be what she could 
hit us with and make sure that we got one that was nice and green. So why, that, why, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Why did it have to be nice and green? Well, so it didn't break? Um, if it wasn't a nice green nice. switch, twig, it would, it would snap. Those didn't break. If you got a dry one, they snap. They don't, they don't work the same. Did your mother ever get angry at Johnny? Yes. Did you ever observe your mother hitting Johnny? Yes. Did she ever poop in his bed? Oh, come on now. <laughs> How, if at all, did Johnny react when his mother would hit him? He was a typical little boy where if it hurt, he would cry. Um, that was it. I mean, for the most part, you just wanted to get away from it. Did Johnny ever hit his mother back? No. What about when he got to be an older boy? Did he ever resist or hit her no. back? No. No. When he, when he was older, even if she hit or threw things, you, he never went to that place. He always, he would get away. He would, you know, leave the area, go to his room. Ms. Dombrowski, did there come a time when you left the family household? Yes. When did you leave the household? Um, I left when I was 17. Um, I was pregnant and got married and moved out into my own place. How did it feel when you left the family to go out and go to your own place? I think uh, there's a bittersweetness to it. Um, I, I was really young. I had just turned 17. Um, but I was so looking forward to this new life that I could create that was different from what we had at home. And uh, so there was a part of me that was really happy to, to be able to do this, really excited. And there was another part that was sad because I left behind my little brother and my dad. If you could explain that a bit, how how did, if at all, did your experience with your mother affect your ideas about what you intended to do with your own family? No. Um, I beat my kids harder. Really oh early God. on, um, as a young <laughs> child, uh, none of what was happening in our home felt good. Um, and so as I got older, you know, both Johnny and I actually, um, we decided that once we left, once we had our own home, that we were never going to repeat ever anything similar in any way to our childhood. We were gonna, we were gonna do it different. So Johnny felt the same way? Absolutely. When you left the home to start your own family, who among the original four children were left at home with your mother? Johnny. Did there come a time when your parents separated? Yes. Would you please tell the jury what happened? There was a, a our, our father one morning um, decided to uh, pack up everything and, and, and leave early in the morning. Um, we didn't, we didn't know it at the time. Uh, I don't mm. think, but I, I didn't, I didn't live there. I was at work. <clears throat> and then I got a call from my mom in the afternoon, right after she got off work, she called me and, and I could, it was hard to understand her voice. Um, she sounded faint and uh, kind of, kind of groggy. Um, but she kept saying, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. And I was trying to get out of her, was it dad? And she said, yes, uh, your, your daddy. And, and I said, mom, are you okay? What did you, what did you what's going on? You know, um, did you take your pills? Cause she took uh, what she called nerve pills. And she said she had, um, I asked how many, she, she couldn't tell me how many she took, but I knew she was getting fainter on the phone and it was more clear to me that she was not in a, a good way. 
So I called, uh, I called our friend, uh, our, my, our parents' friend actually, who was a police officer and told him that he needed to get to mom and what was going on. And so he got an ambulance to get over there. Too. Man, that mic is picking up every ambient sound the in the courtroom. Yes, this is the day. Ms. Dombrowski, do you know why your father left? I know at the time, um, because I did try to speak to him after, because mom continued to not do well. Um, at the time, he said that he said that they had had the last argument that he felt that they could ever have. He felt he needed to leave home this time, and. To be honest, I, I, I didn't really understand. Um, it had been so many years that he had been taking all of the, you know, um, all of her personality. Um, and I didn't really understand exactly uh, fully what that last argument was, uh, why it was so intense. Um, we did learn many years later in our adult life that what he was referring to when he said he I guess the objection is hearsay. Uh, Your Honor, again, I think it's it, it's not offered for the proof. It's offered for for the the state of mind of the witness and the culture in which <coughs> I'll sustain the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Did your mother uh, recover after she took the pills? Yes. So wait. They she moved to strike all of that. Not be well, but she. I guess she, they struck it. And after yeah. that time, uh, did she ever take more than more pills than she should have? She did, but she didn't do it to the degree that she had at that point. And going back to the incident that you described, someone earlier asked me what I think of this. Do you know where approach. Johnny was? If you can get away with this, great. Pills. Build a bunch of sympathy for Johnny. Johnny was home. Uh, Did there come a was, time oh, they're going to let I'm you? Sorry, do this. I think he was. I think he was sleeping at the time. I think he woke up when. Yeah, they're they're, they're trying to lay down. Yeah. I would never do this because I live. So he he saw all of that. Right. Did he see? That she said well, she I, testified he was in the home. He was in the home, but was she in the home? I guess how did she know? So I, how, I'll sustain to a foundation. Thank you. Did there come a time <clears throat> when Johnny left his mother's house? Yes. And after Johnny, what did Johnny do when he left the house? Jackson's foundation. All right, I'll sustain his foundation if you want to lay a she, foundation. Um, are you? Do you in, know what he did? Were when you he in, in communication with your brother at the time? Yes, he, he came and lived with me for part of the time. So I think that I think that's so the foundation. What, what was your what did your brother do after he left your mother's house? He he you know lived in different places. He lived with me and he lived with another family. Did you and Johnny continue to communicate with your mother Betty after you both left the home? Yes. Yes, we did. And after what you have described, why did you and Johnny continue to communicate with your mother? Objection foundation to Johnny. I, th I think she's already laid the foundation. They're very close. She was in communication. I'll sustain the objection if you want for this particular question. Why did you continue to communicate with your mother? Because she was our mom and we loved her. I mean, we we knew you know even when we were younger that things weren't they, she gets around it just by saying we i know, love but, that but what we understood was that you know <laughs> like that mom had her own upbringing you know so she had her own past and the way she was raised would affect the way she lived um and so she in our mind she was doing the best she could do you know um we sort of treated it like it, 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 she she did the best that she could do with the tools that she was given you know um from her her life in the past and what we decided to do was we just decided to to get new tools we chose different tools mom's that. tool was a hammer that and when you say oh, we, to whom are you referring i'm, I'm referring to johnny Foundation, that's 
I'll, I'll overrule that objection. Right, next question. Thank you, Ron. Did you ever live with your mother again after you and Johnny had left the house? I did. I did uh, live with her briefly. Um, she had uh, gotten uh, diagnosed with asthma when we lived in Florida, and she needed to move to a, a drier climate. So um, Johnny moved her to uh, California, to Palm Springs for the drier weather. And um, I moved also so that she wouldn't be alone. So I lived with her for a period then. He's a good man. Yeah, you could just please her. elaborate on what role, if any, Johnny played in your mother's move to Palm Springs. He he was he was the only reason the move could happen. He he purchased her a home, um, and and paid to have everything moved out there. Did there come a time when your mother ever left Palm Springs? She she moved from Palm Springs. Um, to be a bit closer to where Johnny and I lived in the LA area. She lived there for a bit and then ultimately she went back to Kentucky. Um, she had, her siblings were still there and a couple of them weren't doing well. So she wanted to be closer to them while she could. And after she moved back to Kentucky from Palm Springs, did there come a time when your mother became chronically ill? Yes. When was that? 2011. Would you please describe briefly uh, this what is setting her health up condition why was Johnny Depp doesn't leave the abusive relationship? It will, that he's capable of loving someone who uh, abuses him. That he's passive in the in and accepting and of the he, abuse. Uh, uh, received a call. He doesn't she fight back. Yeah, with, uh, he's the battered man. The final stages of Parkinson's. Um, but then when another doctor uh, looked at her scans, they um, they felt it was something different. So we we had the scans brought to a doctor in California. Um, and they suggested that she come out and see a neurologist right away. So uh, Johnny got a plane, um, a, a private plane, and, and he and I, we flew to go pick her up and bring her back to California to start seeing the doctors. And when she moved back to th in 2011 to California, was that a permanent move? It became basically a permanent move. Um, she still, she still had her house in Kentucky in the hopes of you know, her being able to go back and forth. Um, but her health basically kept her in California. So she lived here or there. And by that time, 2011, when she's moved out to Los Angeles, had her treatment of you and Johnny changed in any way? Yes, Mom's, mom softened as she aged. She, she totally softened. And once your mother moved to Los Angeles permanently in 2011, what role, if any, did your brother Johnny play in her caretaking? All right, I'll sustain as a foundation. Did, to what extent, if any, did your brother play any role in her caretaking? I, I think that's still a foundation objection. Do you? Did your Do brother you play any role in his caretaking? Just ask if she did. Brother had any role in her caretaking? Yes. Um, Would you please explain to the jury because I think Her Honor needs to hear whether there's a foundation. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, yes, um, when we brought mom out, you know, over over time. Objection, foundation. Just ask if she knows. Other uh, and then how that, that came there up. There are a lot and of attorneys that uh, think if you ask a yes or no, it's automatically leading. He, so. he dealt directly right. with the doctors like we did, um, hired private nurses so that we can make sure that you know mom was taken care of. You know, uh, he basically Johnny was the finance, he took all financial responsibility for anything and everything that mom could need or want during this time. All, all medical care, doctors, hospitals, nurses. How's Johnny you know jingling that? his gold coins? I hear clinking. I was directly involved. Who knows what is going on in that courtroom? Is it fair to say you <laughs> saw Johnny do those things and yes. have those interactions? Yes, I was there. I was directly involved in all of that. Did you witness your brother having any interactions with the doctors relating to your mother's care? Yes. How yes. often, if at all, 
did your brother visit your mother, Betty, after she came to live in Los Angeles in 2011? Were you ever present uh, with your brother and your mother when you all were visiting? Yes. Um, Mom lived in a house uh, that was basically a, a, across the street from Johnny. Um, it was a house that he has on his street. And uh, I, I was there you know, quite a bit. Johnny was pretty much down there every day, a couple times a day. Um, you know, Mom, like she would see them all the time. You know, one of her favorite things was watching Johnny take the kids to school and waving at them because she never got to do that before. So, who were your brother's kids? Oh, um, Lily Rose and Jack. We'll get to that a little uh, in a little bit. These foundation objections um, are ridiculous. Did there come a time like they, she clearly has not when the family was considering uh, putting your mother in a hospice? There was. Um, there were, there were conversations with the doctors that we should start to consider that since we, we weren't 100% sure with the variety of conditions that she had, um, what we needed to do. Um, the idea of hospice um, was something that felt like since we, we, we didn't know a time frame, um, the idea of introducing you know, a, a new nurses or something, you know, uh, at a certain point in someone's life where they recognize there's a difference. Um, and that could be, that could be, a, a, you know, frightening for them. So we didn't want to instill any fear. You know, Johnny's big on mom not having fear. Um, so instead, that's when we hire nurses so that the nurses could be there 24 seven and you know, and she, and she would have people continuously throughout her life that she knew that they were friendly and you know uh, cared for. Did you actually have a conversation with your brother about the possibility of your mother going into hospice? Yes. Did did he express an opinion about it? Yes. Well, this is where it all comes from because the idea, again, the idea of hospice, which is an amazing thing. But for someone who, when you don't know with the variety of illnesses, you don't know what a timing is. Um, the idea of introducing it, uh, new people, is, is something that becomes almost a signal. You know, and this was a very big discussion. This is why the nurses were hired. Just jing, jing, jangling was this my keys. Was just one discussion or was it a, a series of discussions? It's, I'm not uh, asking for hearsay. I'm just asking about uh, the, whether it was discussed I'll, once or a number of I'll times. overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank was, you. Was this just one discussion or, or were there more discussions among you and your brother about how to care, how to best care for your mother? We, we, had, we had continuous discussions. As a matter of fact, I mean, I, I, there were daily updates. He, he knew every day everything that was happening with mom, whether he was in town out of town because he had to, he was working or traveling. He had, I made sure because it's hard when you know that someone wants to be there um, and they can't. So I, I made sure to, to fill him in on yeah, everything. It's not offered for the truth of it. No, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. So this is how it's going to be. Did you ever <laughs> He's see going to object to literally everything. Johnny's be great. children, Jack and Lily Rose, over at your mother's house across the street from Mr. Depp? Yes. Ms. Dabrowski, I'd like to change subjects uh, right now, if that's all right, and ask you to please tell us a little bit about your work life. Did there come a time when you worked in the entertainment industry? Yes. She got Johnny's I started, coke. I started uh, working when we moved from Florida to um, Palm Springs. This is why I lived uh, for a short period with my mom. Um, I ended up, I got a job um, at one of the studios in Los Angeles. Which studio was that? It was Columbia Pictures. I, I was, uh, my title was, I was an executive assistant to the executive vice president of comedy development. And what were your job responsibilities when you started there? I 
I handled um, my executives' uh, daily schedule, meetings, budgets, scripts, um, phone calls. Uh, and then in addition to that, we had, uh, there were four other executives and they had assistants. So m my desk was also to oversee those assistants. And when we had writers come in, I oversaw those assistants as well. It sounds like a big job. It was a good job. <laughs> How long uh, did you work at Columbia Pictures Television in that role? I think it was about a year and a half. Why did you leave after a year and a half? Um, Columbia itself uh, started folding different departments and, and ours, our comedy development being one of them. Um, and so some of the employees that worked there went to work for Sony or TriStar, other sort of arms of the, of the corporation. And I was the last one there um, sort of wrapping up the department to go on to my next job. So after you wrapped up the trans transition, the closing up of the department, mm -hmm. what did you do in terms of your work life? I, I went to work with my brother. In what capacity? When you say your brother, which, uh, to whom I'm are you sorry. referring? I'm sorry? I'm sorry. When you say your brother, uh, to whom are you specifically referring? I, I went to work with my brother, Johnny. Uh, what type of things uh, did you do for your brother, Johnny? Um, similar things to what I was doing with uh, the other um, uh, boss that I worked for before, but um, with Johnny, he was, um, I was helping him anyway uh, as a sister, um, bits and pieces before I started working with him. So there were things like travel and you know, meetings, setting meetings, making sure he had his, you know, the scripts that were coming in and he knew, you know, all the information about them. Um, and, you know, any kind of publicity stuff that he had to do. Oh, they're going, um, they're going to the point it, where I am it, it, I really completely tuning out started of whatever to do she's job saying. With him because there was one time <laughs> that I had gone to his house and I was helping him get ready to like the abuse stuff was and interesting his, uh, and, ticket, and relevant. I read this it out loud and it said standby. And I said, why are you on standby? Exciting. He had no one looking out for that kind of stuff, you know, so. Does she manage part of his career? And How, if at all, did be your that. work for now, your brother? I want, to, I want them to get into the matter of time. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I think this just shows she was well, over neck time, deep in it. It, it sort of grew. Um, yeah. Well, not sort of. It did. And we know they're going to object to foundation um, on everything agent, with her anyway. So they yeah. got to do this. I worked it's um, just sort of hand in hand with his agent. And, you know, as she got to know me more and I got to know her more, um, there were other parts of her job, actually, that she would give to me. So, you know, instead of just doing scheduling meetings and calendars and travel, um, now I become a person who's talking to producers or, you know, as it expands, you know, all the executives at the studios and studio heads and, I be, you know, become a part of contract negotiation, et cetera. It just grew. What role, if any, did you play uh, in dealing with Johnny's movie contracts? Movie contracts, I, um, because... I know the history and because uh, there's a certain amount of uh, uh, parts of life that are important, you know, to a, a human being, not just to an actor, but to a human being. And I know the human being, um, I, I was part of mostly um, negotiating parts like it, uh, there's an area called perks and perks means um, anything and everything that an actor would need in order to perform his duties and in order to you know to also move right to the to the location to do the duty so i i was part of all important dates that you know needed to be considered in a calendar um making sure the house was what he needed to have for the family the travel to get there making sure he had his staff uh, driver security pretty much anything necessary was was in that Ms. Dombrowski, can you give the jury some examples of some of the things um, you put on the perks list? Uh, sure. Um, we, it was, uh, it was really important, um, you know, as Johnny had a, a family, it was really important to be able to uh, 
make sure that we um, were given the opportunity to find the right accommodations and the accommodations for the children, a, you know, a house that, you know, could, uh, you know, um, give them a home away from home with a garden, um, all, all the travel to make sure that they all get there. Um, there were really important dates that uh, we carved out in every contract um, for Johnny's kids for their birthday. He, he never wanted to miss their birthday. So if he wasn't able to be with them because of filming, it was built into the contract that he had their birthday off and he would have the day before and the day after so that he'd be able to travel to get to them and then get back to working. Um, so in, in addition to that, I mean, there's, there's, there's quite a bit. Um, we also had it built in that if, if he was to be away from his kids filming, if the kids couldn't travel and the family couldn't travel to be there, um, we had in his contract that he would be able to fly back to them from wherever he is every two weeks. So he, he didn't go beyond every two weeks not seeing his children. It, you know, it, it's that kind of stuff that, you know, was important. Ms. Dombrowski, do you know what a personal manager is in the context of the entertainment world? I do. What, what is it, if you could explain it to the jury, because I just learned it myself. <laughs> well, I, I, I believe it's basically what I, <laughs> a lot of what I was doing. Um, they, um, they work with the, their clients on um, maintaining different items in their personal life, as well as uh, you know, projects coming in, uh, production, um, all of the representatives. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of a big scope of, of uh, duties. Has anyone ever referred to you as Johnny's personal manager? I have been called that before, yes. Do you perform uh, the responsibilities of, your, of jo being Johnny's personal manager? I, I did. I did. Do you still work with Johnny? Yes. Do you also work with any of Johnny's companies? Or strike that. Uh, wait, if I'm, does, does your brother have any companies associated with him? Oh, yeah. Got to lay that foundation. called Infinitum Nile. What type of company is Infinitum Nile? It's a production company. We develop, you know, projects uh, for films or television or, you know, different things. And put it, putting aside your responsibilities as your brother's personal managers, what role, if any, do you play in Infinitum Nile? Uh, I'm president of Infinitum Nile. <laughs> when in did fact, you start I working the company. at Infinitum Nile? Um, from the beginning, um, in, in 2004, I think we started in July, 2004. And would you please explain to the jury, uh, some of the, th some of your responsibilities as president of Infinitum Nile? My, my duties as president were to, I oversaw. I yelled at people. <laughs> everything much. in the company, um. The, the staff where we were developing projects uh, where, you know, the, maybe there's a book that people want to develop. Do you know who my brother or is, or you son of a bitch? Show or different ideas. So I oversaw that, oversaw all the all of the development, um, their schedules with meetings uh, with different people to go, to take those projects out, um, to, to pitch. Uh, I, I, it, I, there's so many uh, tasks in that job. I don't know how to, I don't know how to, really play them out. I'm the president Mr. of the Brusty, company. The I do all of Pirates it. Pirates of the Caribbean movie come out. I, I think it was 2003. I think. What what was your brother's role in Pirates? Um he he was Captain Jack Sparrow. Can you tell He's us the pirate. plot of the movie? You to say that was the lead? That was that was the lead. How did the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie fare at the box office? Captain Jack Sparrow. It, 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 it did very well. I think it surprised people and did very well. Um, people really, they loved, you know, the, they loved the entertainment of it, you know, the total ride. Did the success of Pirates 1 change Johnny's career in any way? I, I would have to say yes. Um, yeah. 
the success of Pirates One, it, it became um, Johnny with that role and and other studios and everybody seeing the success of that film and 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 how the audiences reacted to that character. Um, they were there was a whole lot more people wanting to be in business with him. It also changed his career because the rest the of his roles were imitations of Jack Sparrow in various ways. <laughs> also made him six or his day to day dollars. It, it, it did. Yeah, it that did. too. Um, because where prior to that, you know, he was able to go out um, somewhat. You know, he could, you know, go to different stores, go to bookstores. Hey, Nick, I got to head out. I'll see you guys um, in a little bit later when pirates you, one Spider-Man. came out after that he was much more recognizable now you know so many people loved that character and so he was much more recognizable so it, it became harder for him to to go out in public without having a lot of people come around that you know rightfully so wanted to meet him and um but then it it, it also became a uh, really big and so we had even people that were chasing you know chasing in cars so we had to at that point we had to we had to t- have get security team to kind of come in and help us manage how this all works you know who is jerry judge jerry judge was he was basically johnny's head security when did jerry judge start coming to work with with your brother well we um we started working with Jerry Judge back in the 90s because um, Jerry had his own security company in London. And uh, when we would go over there for press or premieres or whatever, Jerry was the one you know, that set everything up. And, and we became really close with him back then. And as things grew with pirates, we brought him over more and more you know, for some of the items that we had, some of the work that he had, if it was a show or whatever, um, or and brought him on. And then he started just working basically on every film with us after Pirates, probably right around that time. How long did Jerry Judge work with you and Johnny? Well, again, um, we met him in the 90s. So in around Pirates is what, 2003? Um, and Jerry was with us up until we, uh, we lost him. When did you lose him? Uh, Where did you lose him? him in a, a forest? A couple years or? ago to cancer. Oh. What was Jerry's relationship like with Johnny? <laughs> um, Jackson Foundation. All right. Did you ever see Jerry Judge <laughs> interact with your brother? Sustain the objection. That's leading the, the next question. That's fine. Thank, right, thank you, Andrew. What, what, if any, um, observations did you? Were there any times when you saw your brother interact with Jerry Judge? I, I saw I saw the two of them interact Constantly. quite a lot, um, and uh, they 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 loved each other. They were like you know, Jerry thought of him as his like a. Son. These are dumb objections on this foundation. <laughs> um, She's they really clearly there all the time, so involved heavily ways. in these relationships. I don't think there's any basis to strike that. I think it was most responsive. To the I'll question. overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you, Ryan. And I wanted to touch on something you mentioned a, a few moments ago uh, when you were referring to um, Mr. Depp's children. I believe you said it was uh, daughter Lily Rose and Sunday. son Jack. Who is the mother of Johnny's children? Vanessa uh, Paradis. Did Johnny and Vanessa Paradis ever lived together as a couple? Yes. How long did Johnny and Vanessa Paradis live together as a couple? I, I, I think they were together 14 years. And did their children live with them during the 14 years? Yes. How much time would you say you spent with Johnny, Vanessa, Lily Rose, and Jack. When when they were in Los Angeles, I I would say I saw them all daily. Um, our office 
where we work, our office is only, it was only 10 minutes from their house. So I would make trips back and forth or every day after work, I would go straight to the house. So I, I saw them daily. Would you please explain to the jury what it was like spending time with Johnny and his family? He was great. Um, he was great. It was a normal, happy family. You know, uh, you go there and the kids are playing and you, like a you know, friggin' Christmas card. Eating dinner, everybody having dinner, cleaning up together, <laughs> sitting around, laughing. It was, it was great. Did you have occasion to see your brother interact with his children? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> what did you observe? What, what can you tell the jury about what you observed? Um, he's, I'm proud to say, he's, uh, he's one of the most devoted fathers I think that I've ever seen. Like, I think these objections are a big misstep. Uh, everything in life. Because every time they get to just show how much she kids, does know about like, this. The attention that How entwined them, she is. You know, yeah. It was just constant. I mean, she was attached to every facet of his them, life. So. You know, laughing with them, reading to them, Barbies. I mean, you you name it. And he. Oh, that he noise is her bracelets. It's hers. Did you ever yeah. observe? Yeah. Well, I arm. think she should be publicly Treating executed for that. <laughs> the way you saw his mother treat him no. when he was young. No. Have you ever seen Johnny? hit either of his children? No. Have you ever heard your brother raise his voice at his children? No. And you may have touched on it earlier, and if so, I apologize. But how, if at all, did Johnny communicate with his children when he was shooting a film? Objection foundation. Were you right, I'll sustain the objection if you want to lay the foundation? Did, um, fair, fair, understood. Okay. Uh, did you have occasion to observe? Were you ever with your brother when he he was shooting a film? Yes. Did you have occasion to observe your brother communicating with his children while you both were there on set? Yes. Yes. So when, with that, when, when, please sorry. go. No, please go ahead. When. Excuse me. When when Johnny was filming, most of the time, um, the family was with him. The family would travel and go. You know, it was like I said earlier. Um, we would get a house and garden and and all of that to make sure that there was a home. So his family was with him most of the time. What about when the children got older and they started going to school? Did that change in any way? It it changed in that. Um, they, you know, they didn't want to disrupt the children's lives when they were on cross exam. School. They're so going to ask her all if, about his drug abuse. Dad had to go off and oh, go yeah, work. They're gonna, oh, and that, that is their home. their main part. Um, substance abuse equals into. domestic we abuse. Still, we still maintained a home for the family wherever he was filming, you know, um, because they would. So he's a good dad. Was that between cocaine snorts? Um, and, but know, at the same time, that's the kind Johnny of shit you're going to see. He would travel back every two weeks, you know, to see his kids. And when you say he would travel back, who was it who made those travel arrangements? I'm, I made the travel arrangements. Did you have occasion to observe Johnny interact with the mother of his children, Vanessa Paradis, over the 14 years they were together? Yes, I did. Would you please tell the jury what you observed about the interactions between Mr. Depp and Vanessa? Which, this is not, this is directly. Uh, I'll allow observations. I'll overrule the objections. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Your Honor. What did you see? Uh, objection. What did you observe about <laughs> Mr. Depp's <laughs> interaction? She's called a witness for a children. reason. They, what did you they witness? Were a, a, a great couple. I mean, first you could see that they were friends. Objection um, to the word witness? They, they just. <laughs> They were happy together. They, they, you know, um, they got along great. It was, it was a, a happy, normal. I'll, I'll, I'll sustain the objection at this point then. All right. Did you ever hear your brother yell at Vanessa? No. It's not leading. That's not a leading question. To what extent 
if any have, have well, that, that wasn't the question mr chair or a horse okay I'll, I'll sustain on that objection next question what if any violence did you uh, observe between I'll, I'll go ahead finish your question first well if, if i think you're going to sustain the <laughs> objection perhaps i should read maybe read. should move on yes okay okay all right so the 404 is character as Did well as Vanessa prior ever claim acts. that Johnny Johnny can't ever prove that he abused her. He didn't hit no. Amber Heard because he didn't hit his previous Hearsay wife. Hearsay objection. It's not. It's not offered for the proof of the. It's what she observed, what she heard. She was the personal manager, Your Honor. Thank That's you. Would be hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. No, it's only hearsay if it's used to prove the truth of the matter. Did there come a time when mm. Johnny and Vanessa separated after 15, 14, 14 years? Yes. How would you describe their relationship today? Same objection, 404. All right. And it calls she, for hearsay as well, and foundation. I don't think it calls for hearsay, Your Honor. Good God. Just, you can't even describe what you think of their relationship. Like what how do you think of the relationship? Your evidence issues, I'll sustain the objection. Who is Amber Heard? <laughs> Objection. Um, my brother's ex-wife. Which you said I have no when idea. When did you no one first else does meet either. Amber Heard? I first met her when she uh, came to the office um, for casting on Rum Diary. Um, probably late 2008, I think. Remembering that this entire... This entire thing is Ms. about Heard Johnny Depp's set? character for violence. Yes. That's what they're going to make it about. They're objecting to his character. It's amazing. When she was working on set, um, I mostly observed, you know, some of the, you know, I, I was there for some of the scenes um, and in, in, in between, you know, She was a bit sort of like, you know, standoffish, had all, you know, thought she was going to call her a bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought it was. She was a bitch sort of standoffish. When was um, Rum Diary actually released? 2011. Was Johnny in that movie? Yes. What role, if any, did you have with respect to Rum Diary? I was one of the producers. And after seeing Ms. Heard on the set in 2009, 2010, when was the next time you saw Ms. Heard? I think the, the next time I saw her was we were, um, we were, we were promoting Rum Diary towards the end of 2011, I think. Um, I was not able to go on the full promotional tour um, where we do uh, um, screenings for people around the country. Um, but I was able, because my mom was sick, but I was able to attend uh, the one in Los Angeles. So I saw her at that event. What uh, did you observe? So you attended the premiere? I attended the premiere and uh, and um, the dinner afterward. Yes. Would you please describe for us what you observed at the premiere? At the dinner. At the dinner. Because I, I I sat outside at the premiere. I didn't actually watch the movie. I'd already seen it. Um, <laughs> I sat at the same table um, with some of the other. Uh, people involved in the cast. So I saw um, Johnny and Amber, you know, they were seated together. I saw them talking quite a bit and she seemed very friendly that night, yes. Did there come a time when you learned that Johnny and Amber were romantically involved? <laughs> Amber yes. heard just staring at the camera. When was that? Why is she looking at the exactly. camera? I, I know it was some time after the Rum Diary premiere. To what extent did you have occasion to observe Johnny and Miss Her together early in their relationship? I 
I would see them. There were times when she would come and, and you know. She wants to shit on my bed. <laughs> our, our mom, you know. Um, I would see her then. I would see the two of them then. Um, I didn't really spend a tremendous amount of time with her. Had you formed any impression of Miss Heard at that time based on your observations? I, I, I did. Um, I did. Look, um, I didn't I didn't know her very well. Um, and I would spend time, like I said, she would, you know, she would come to my mom's house. I've I've sat with her and my mom. Um, check on what? What was your impression of Based on her observation, she's describing what she observed, Your Honor. This is not 404. Right, Your Honor. She's describing what she observed. Right. Okay, we want to approach for a moment. Let's start. Yeah. Okay, so uh, again, this is the the character and prior acts evidence that they're trying to exclude, but it's not just any like evidence of someone's character. It's if the character is being asserted uh, to this, but observations about people's behavior is allowed. What did you see? What did she do? Did you talk to her? What happened? Um, also, since Amber Heard is an opposing party, they, she can admit statements against Amber Heard uh, because they're, opposed to her interests so it's not it's not hearsay there did there come a time when your um did there come a time when your brother and miss heard started to live together yes and when did that occur approximately if you recall i don't i don't recall the timing um I don't recall the time frame. I, I believe they had moved downtown um, to the Eastern Columbia building, but I don't remember exactly when that was. Uh, what type of structure was the Eastern Columbia building? Was that a freestanding house or was it apartments? It, it's apartments and he had, uh, he had the penthouses on the top floor. How many, penthouses did your brother own on the top floor of the Eastern Columbia building? I, I think it was, I think it was five apartments. Do Ooh. you know who lived in those five apartments when your brother and Miss Heard went to live there? I know, um, I, I know who lived down there. Um, I know Isaac, a, a, a friend of Johnny's named Isaac, lived down there. Um, These are nice know, fucking apartments. Uh, I'm looking at pictures. Oh, yeah. You know, he uh, he provided friend. multiple uh, ones to her friends for free. He paid for their um, freeloading asses, and they turned on him. <laughs> lived in one of the penthouses. When you say Rocky, are you referring to Rocky Pennington? Yes. And was her boyfriend Josh Drew? Josh Drew. Ugh. Did uh, Rocky Pennington and Josh Drew uh, pay any rent to your brother? No. What about um, Miss Heard's sister, Whitney? Did she pay any rent to your brother? No. One of his uh, penthouses went for one one point four million. Do you know why? Yeah, they're nice. He owned that entire floor. brother allowed them to live rent free in his in his uh, at the ECB because they were. They were. Hey, wait, hold on. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, foundation. We asked, do you know why? So if she knows, she can answer. I'll allow it. I'll leave it. She was his personal Sit down. manager. That's fine. Go ahead. Did you arrange for uh, handling a lot of your brother's uh, bills? I, I, I would give them to the business manager. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I believe they were Amber's family and friends. That's why mm -hmm. he let them live there. If the objections are getting annoying, it's because How often they're did you not see just for us. Brother when he was the jury will be getting annoyed at, at the these ECB constant penthouse. objections as well. They need to be more strategic with it. We didn't 
we didn't see him as often. I didn't see him as often. Um, he pretty much stayed down there. He didn't come back, you know, towards where we were in West Hollywood uh, very often, unless he had a reason to. And on those occasions when you did see your brother, what observations did you make? He, uh, he was always in a hurry when he was able to come back. He, you know, he, he could never sit and spend the time, you know, he, it, it felt like he was always trying to, you know, get back uh, downtown. He, he, he just seemed so much sadder. He did not seem himself. He was, he was always, his, his, his person was much, uh, just sadder. Did in that time period when your brother and Miss Heard were living at the ECB, did you have occasion to observe them together? On occasion. Would you please describe for the jury what you observed on those occasions when you saw your brother and Miss Heard together? I mean, there's different occasions of, I've, I've seen them together when they've come into the office. I mean, um, when you saw them together, did they appear to get along? All right, I'll, I'll sustain this to leading. All right, next question. How is that leading? Just because Did it's a yes or no does not make arguing. it leading. It has to suggest the answer. Okay, I'll sustain this. I'll sustain this to leading. How? She could say yes or no. Did, in your capacity as Johnny's personal manager, do you know whether your brother and Amber ever trial, uh, ever traveled together? Yes, they did travel together. There were... Uh, I'm eating right into the microphone. I'm gonna do it twice Johnny more. Had to go do <laughs> press you gotta get a little more pop into it. Film. They traveled together. I didn't know the mic was picking me up, sorry. What type of travel <laughs> arrangements did you make for the two of them when they traveled together? Um, we we would get a a private plane that took them to whatever the destination was um and make sure that we had you know the hotel accommodations uh taken care of um part part of part of what we did uh was to always make sure that we anticipated you know everything so we would do the uh the travel, the hotels, uh, cars, drivers. Um, I would I would make sure that there was an extra hotel room, you know, for trips when they would go. Would you? Why did you make sure there was an extra hotel room when Johnny and Miss Heard went on trips together? Because they're objection to the extent of the answer. All it's right. not hearsay. I don't believe it does. Okay, that's fine. Not you what did Johnny me. tell oh, you? Thank you. Um, I, I booked the extra hotel rooms um, because <clears throat> if Johnny was at home um, or you know anywhere like that, he was able to he, if they argued he was able to leave the room, leave the argument and go like he's always done and hide in a different room to get away from it. When, when he had to book two for, hotel rooms because she's such you know, a bitch, a that's room. amazing. That's, that's jacked up, man. Um, and we booked the hotel rooms. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that there was an extra room, you know, because it, it wasn't unusual you know what I mean, for them to have an argument. So I wanted to make sure that there was an extra room. 
Did your brother years. ever have occasion to use that extra room that you booked for him? Yes. Foundation. All right. I'll stay with foundation if you want to lay a foundation. I think the foundation was she made all of the travel. Well, I can actually lay it through okay. some other questions as okay. well. She was person, personal manager. Um, whose idea was it? They're very scared of her testimony. An extra room for your brother when he traveled. It, it, it was my idea. And it, why did you do that? It, it was my idea because, you know, um, I saw a repeat happening in life when we were <laughs> when we were kids. Oh, and, and Oh, man. Arguments I, and I observed it. The thing you objected to earlier, I watched to go it happen in real time. And, you know, uh, get away from it. And since I recognized uh, what felt to be a, 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 a pattern that was a repeat pattern from his childhood, um, I I wanted to make sure that there was a place that he could do just that. Mr. Chu, the question was, do you did did Mr. Depp ever use the extra room? And the objection was foundation. So if you want to lay a foundation of how she would have known that he used an extra room. Yeah, but he just got that hearsay. snuck in there. That's, that's the issue. And I move to strike that. It's not a All right, I'll, I'll, I'll strike that. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Strike Ryan. it. Yeah, the jury didn't hear it though. Yeah, I know. Ever this book an extra, did you book your brother's hotel accommodations during the 14 years that he, when he was with Vanessa Paradis? Yes. Did you ever book an extra room when he was with her? Objection leading. No. Overall, I'll allow that one. Go ahead. This is not a leading question. If you question. could repeat it, I don't think the jury heard that. I'm sorry. No, I did not. Did you ever hear your brother and Miss Heard argue? Objection. Also, it, it, that's not hearsay. So you may answer that. No. Did you ever see or hear any physical altercation between your brother and Ms. Hurd? No. What can you tell us about what you did observe of your brother and Ms. Hurd together? What to to me, um, to when I saw them, to me, um, he was always trying to make sure he was always trying to make her happy. Um, He always made effort to, to sort of make her happy. I, I, uh, I, I think she had a very, uh, she has a very strong personality. Um, and, and my brother's personality came off much more soft at that point to me. Did you observe any occasions in which Ms. Heard was nice to your brother. Yes, I've seen her be nice to me. Would you please explain that? <laughs> Why um, are you asking I, this I've, question? When she would hit him, she would sometimes nice stop. And, and, you know, uh, you know, offering <laughs> to, you know, uh, bring him a drink or, you know, Notice they're not objecting. Maybe this is the whole uh, point. They're not objecting to nice I mean, stuff about Amber Heard. Whatever. I mean, she left him chocolates on his pillows. Nice. God, if his I've sister said that. something like that, that'd be amazing. Have you witnessed any occasions <laughs> on which Ms. Heard wasn't nice to your brother? I, I have, actually. Would I you have. please describe those to the jury? Yeah. Um, we had, um, I had had a, on one occasion, because this one, this one really, this one really stayed with me. Um, on on uh, one occasion, um, we were. I was at the office, and I'd had a meeting um, with. Get those eye rolls in. Who had wanted to uh, 
sit with Johnny and um, talk about, you know, working together. And Amber had come in and asked if she was interrupting us. And uh, we said no. And we weren't supposed to really talk about the meeting with anyone. Um, but Johnny, Johnny told Amber that uh, I had just had a meeting with Dior and that, you know, they were interested in him. Um, her, her reaction to that was she was in disbelief and sort of disgust um, because she said, Dior, why, why would Dior want to do business with you? They're about class and they're about style. And you don't Ooh. have style. You know, so it was a damn what a insulting monster. kind of taking away that one moment. You know, that insult is there. You can't object to that as hearsay you know, because I've, I've seen, it was said I've by seen Amber Heard. Uh, multiple times, actually. What, if anything, did you hear Ms. Heard say about Mr. Depp's physical appearance? She called him an old fat man. <laughs> Rip. How did he respond? He, he had, he, I believe he's heard her call him that himself. Now, Ms. Dombrowski, I'd like to ask you about a specific event that is relevant to this case. Um, and just for, to, for the background, I'll say, did, did there come a time in 2013 when your brother was working with Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones on a documentary? Yes. Were you present? Yes, I was, I was present at the... Was Miss Heard there as well? Yes. If you could please tell the jury how physically close you were or how far you were from Ms. Heard while the three of you were on the set. I was, I was, um, I was right next to her. Um, they had, they had uh, gotten there and I was close enough that I hugged her um, and, and was standing next to her. It was a small set. And when you were standing next to her and when you were hugging her, what, if any, marks or physical injuries did you see? I, I didn't see anything. Did you observe your brother's interactions with Ms. Hurd while the three of you were on the set? Yes. What? If anything, did you observe her doing? They, they, they were fine. They, she was laughing and happy and holding his hand and, you know, leaning on him, hugging him. Did, did your brother hug him back? Or hug her back? Yes, but it was mostly her hugging. And, and switching switching subjects from that uh, time on the set, did there come a time when you learned that Johnny was going to marry Miss Heard? Yes. And this is a little <laughs> complicated, so I'm just going to ask you in, yes. a, in a narrative form. Uh, I understand there was a, a, a wedding, and that there was uh, there were a couple of ceremonies. If you could just please describe that uh, to the jury. Um, they, uh, there was a wedding, uh, celebration that was, um, put together, um, on the island. So, uh, they had a, a like a, a wedding ceremony on the island. Um, but prior to, uh, going to the island to do that, they actually got married in Los Angeles, um, because they, they had to get married in Los Angeles because they couldn't get married you know, uh, paperwork, et cetera, on, on the island. So they got married in LA. How did you learn that they were going to get married? We were, we were already working on um, 
the celebration part. And I knew, I knew that the date was at some point, um, they were going to pick a date to, to try to get married in Los Angeles. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know the actual date that had been decided until he called me, which was pretty much right before the date. What was your reaction upon hearing from your brother that he was going to marry Miss Heard? I was, uh, I was um, scared. I was devastated, actually, that it was, uh, it was going to happen as, as, uh, as quickly as it was being pushed for. Um, I, I actually tried to talk him into just, just waiting a little bit longer, just a little bit and not, not rushing. She tried to save you, Johnny. <laughs> don't marry her. I know you you've been dating her for three or four years, but don't marry her. There had been, there had been conversations she about ain't nothing but a gold a prenuptial dinner. agreement that had been going on. Call her that in the documents. <laughs> um, <laughs> And as the if date the was approaching, fit. you know, for the island ceremony, um, there was no success in the prenuptial conversations. And I knew it was important. Um, his representatives had explained the importance and I knew it was important to him for his children. And I, we were rushing to do something without his children being protected. Specifically, if you could explain to the jury what involvement you had in those discussions about a prenuptial agreement. Um, Jackson just foundation is the She's testified yeah. about her. Uh, I'll allow it. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. I think um, <laughs> what was your involvement in the discussions involving the prenuptial, a prenuptial agreement? Uh, mostly it was a. Uh, I spoke with um, the attorneys and the representatives so that they they explained the importance of it and, the, and they explained the reasons behind it. Describe hearsay. I, I'll allow it. What what hearsay? That means you can. She's keep saying going. okay. So she's saying what she <laughs> said. Um, so that uh, so that we could have further conversation and and uh, with with Johnny and and they there was a, an attorney that they coordinated with. For, um, for Amber, um, so that that was where I was involved in the coordinating that part. Which side wanted a prenup? Johnny's side wanted a prenup. And I believe what you said may have gotten lost. Why did Johnny's side want a, a prenup? Well, he was rich. The prenup was to to make sure that his children were protected. That's Jack and Lily Rose. Jack and Lily Rose, yes. So remember the narrative Dear, your from brother and Ms. Amber Heard's team is that she wanted the prenup. prenup indeed. She yeah. just never got around to it. Why not? I, I, Amber didn't sign it. Did you end up, despite your misgivings, did you end up attending the wedding uh, between, or the ceremony uh, between your brother and Ms. Heard on the island in the Bahamas? Yes, I did, but I, I also attended the actual wedding um, in Los Angeles. And that's that preceded the celebration yes. in Bahamas, is that correct? Yes. Did you have occasion to speak with Ms. Hurd either at the ceremony, the formal ceremony in Los Angeles or the celebration in the Bahamas? I did. Um, at the actual, at the actual ceremony, um, in Los Angeles, they, they, uh, they had the ceremony at our, our mom's house. Um, and at that ceremony, I didn't have occasion to really speak with Amber. Um, she, Rocky and Whitney, I, I don't believe, uh, wanted necessarily to speak with me, um, on that day. I did. I did, after the ceremony was done, um, 
I was standing not far from them and they were having a conversation. Um, they were having a conversation actually about, <clears throat> excuse me, about uh, should they leak the uh, information that they had already gotten married at the house uh, to the press so that they could, maybe they didn't have to worry about the island when they did the celebration. Um, and Amber, Amber actually uh, reached out to me and said, because I was standing seven, eight feet away from her, um, asked my opinion, you know, what I thought about that, which I, I basically said I didn't know why they would do it since all the information for the island was already out and that it wasn't gonna help them. I didn't know why they would wanna leak, leak it at all, but it was up to them. Where was I saw her on the island as well. Um, but on the island, she was actually extremely friendly uh, when, when I got there. Because if I'm honest, um, I, I debated going. I, 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 I didn't really want to. Um, I almost didn't, but I, I took my dad. Dad wanted to go and uh, I wanted to make sure that I showed up anyway, because I wanted to make sure that honestly, that my little brother would know that I was going to be, I was always going to be around no matter what. Um, but Amber was extremely friendly and thanked me for coming to her special day. You know, it was a very big day for her. Can you remember any other interactions you had with Ms. Hurd or your brother on the island at the celebration? The heavy breathing is from the court, guys. Interactions on the island. Her Not mic really. is. And when was the ne next time million. you saw Amber Heard after the celebration on the island? It was, it would have been, it would have been when she came back from Australia. And I, I, I will get to that, Your Honor. Um, is it possible for us to take a very quick break? Sure. Are you going to, you, you still have quite a bit of direct left, I assume? Oh, uh, I do have a, a fair amount, Your okay. Honor. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, well, we go ahead and have you take your afternoon break of 15 minutes, okay? Ooh. Again, don't do any outside research and do not talk to anybody about the case. I know you're going to hear me say it so much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, Your Honor, while you're, while you're there, why don't you learn a little bit about hearsay objections? <laughs> Yeah, I haven't said yet. Yeah, the law book. <laughs> so, so, let's see. I'm gonna make sure. I haven't said yet. No, it's okay. I usually wait till the jury goes out, so we can make sure. All right. Amber needs to go find a bed well, to shit in real quick. Go ahead and make it. Then, so, <laughs> so she's like, uh, they period. have a men's, women's, and then they have a yes. bed sure. for Amber Heard just to shit on in the back. All right. You understand that, you, ma'am, since you are right now uh, on the stand, you can't discuss this case, not even with the attorneys, okay? So don't discuss it with anybody until we get you back here in 15 minutes, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we've had some uh, questioning of Big Sis. Once they got into the meat stuff, it's it's pretty yeah, interesting. It gets interesting. Yeah. She uh, she she's made a lot of statements about the the prenup, about the arguments that came with it. Again, she's the one that they say uh, Depp approached and tried to knock her off of uh, Aquaman. There will be there will be some interesting statements, and there will be some interesting cross. I think. Yeah. Like you said they're scared of her. They are absolutely scared of her too. Yeah. Well, the the testimony very quickly you could see when those objections start coming in around stuff that doesn't seem that important, but they they want to chip away at her ability to lay the foundation. They want to chip away at her ability to say anything. I think they're objecting too much though. Um, yeah. I I think they're running the risk of making the jury say, "Man, what are you hiding? What are you hiding from me?" Every every court that they've been in, I mean, they've burned the judges too. The judges have gotten just, I mean, annoyed enough that again, there were there were minutes from L.A. where the judge just balls them out for ten entire pages of just insulting the defense to the point the defense 
actually begs the judge to stop. I, I'm sorry, judge. Could you stop? I mean, it's amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the hearsay objections real quick. What hearsay is, it sounds simple. It sounds like I hear something and then I say that something back. So it's like the playing the game of telephone, but, a he hearsay is not allowed only when the object of the hearsay is intended, like the, the statement that you're they're repeating is intended to prove the truth of the matter asserted. So you can actually, people uh, testify about hearsay evidence all the time because it's admissible unless it's being used to prove the truth of something. So if the proposition of did Johnny Depp beat Amber Heard is the proposition and you say, did you hear someone talking about Johnny Depp beating Amber Heard? If that's the proposition, then that's not acceptable. That's not allowed. Right. However, if the hearsay is uh, because you're trying to develop a present sense impression. So uh, why did you run to the apartment? Well, I heard Johnny Depp was beating Amber Heard. I wanted to run and make sure that was okay. Well, you there was hearsay, but it's not explaining that he was doing it. It's explaining why you're running why to you the would. apartment. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of the big distinctions here. They're playing fast and loose with the hearsay objections. They're winning some of them, so they're going to keep doing it. And they're also doing it with the character and prior acts evidence. Like you said, that runs that risk of uh, making the jury wonder what the hell you're trying to hide. Yeah. Uh, right. And because that's what I want to know. And that's why I said they're scared of her. I wouldn't think they would be like based on her early testimony. OK, she's testifying about how bad his mom was. His mom being bad doesn't mean that Amber Heard is bad. I guess it right. means he might stay around. But none of that proves that she was bad to Johnny Depp. Right. So right. It, it seems very safe. But then they started objecting even back then. Then they want to object to her talking about stuff that she would obviously know as a business manager, as a president of a company. Well, how would you know how many rooms they were booked? Uh, I booked them, right? And when they did that, she gets to point out, no, I actually do know this man, my brother, very, very well. I'm very intertwined with his life and how it's been going. Uh, and, and I am conscious of these things because they happen around me because I'm always there. That... That hurts the defense, I think. And and I don't think that those objections were were super helpful uh, because she got to explain that a little bit more clearly. But that's, you know, that's what I'm getting out of this. Any Anything particular interesting uh, for you from her testimony, Tug? Uh, I, found a, I found a couple of the statements. Interesting. Again, just chipping away at... Amber Heard talking about, you know, uh, I, I didn't see any injuries. There's actually a, a lot of physical uh, proof that goes along with the I hugged her and I didn't see anything. That's the incident that they screwed up so badly on in UK 2020. And the judge would not allow them to go forward. I also thought the the uh, Dior statement was uh, it was interesting. She was disgusted because, hey, they're all about class. Why would they want Johnny? <laughs> yeah. That was good. <laughs> that's good stuff. Uh, oh, and that's that's an exception to the hearsay rule that I should explain as well. Um, if the hearsay statement is a statement from the opposing party and the statement is against that party's interest, it is admissible through hearsay evidence because th she's not going to come out and say, like, you know, well, didn't you say this? She didn't have to, she didn't say anything, right? She doesn't answer that question or she mitigates and equivocates. But if someone, if she directly told, or if someone overhears her directly telling that to Johnny Depp, uh, yeah, why would they hire you? You're, you're disgusting heap of trash. Um, that is against her interest again, because this is, this is about her defaming him and, and trying to ruin him. And uh, therefore it's admissible at that point. And in the same way, anything that Johnny Depp, someone, you know, has heard him say, uh, to them or overheard him say about Amber Heard in the same way, those statements would be admissible too. And we'll be looking for that as the uh, defense witnesses come out. I think, I think you have a giant hurdle convincing the world, you know, convincing these people that know Johnny Depp and have seen his PR forever, that he was this monster in this one relationship. I mean, that, that would seem like a huge hurdle for me. Yeah. And they, they tried to get that in and the jury heard this, but whether or not the jury takes things home is always the question, but uh, it was objected to, but 
Did you ever have to book a second room for Johnny Depp with his first wife? Ever? Yeah. Did they have any kind of relationship like this? Ever? No. 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 Objection, objection, objection. <laughs> we, we can't have any sympathy for this well, man. That's what the tapes, you know, they they back up. I wonder how much of the audio files will actually play through this. But they, um, he talks about, you know, fleeing to other rooms, falling asleep in other rooms, leaving rooms because she, she starts physical fights. You know, she's like, you always bail. And he's like, it's because you start physical fights. <laughs> I'm out, you know, so. Yeah, and that's uh, that's one of the things that came out. I think wasn't it in a deposition, or or maybe it was just a release of the recording where she did that. You always run away, which is of course consistent mm -hmm. with his sister's testimony. That was in um, that was in some leaked audio that ended up you know in the courtroom later on. But uh, there's a channel called Incredibly Average. They broke down every one of those. That's where. Uh, when you're online, you know, you see the the two of them talking back and forth, you know, with a, a video with audio. That's from the channel Incredibly Average. They did a damn good job with that early stuff. They didn't do anything after that. Uh, they just stopped. They're still on Twitter. But if you haven't checked them out, for sure. If you want to see the lengthy bit, and you, you should. You should check it out because you can, you can hear, you know, you don't have to take my word or anyone else's word on it. Listen to the tapes. Listen to the ones where she knows she's being taped. And the ones especially where she's taping it herself, uh, because you can not only hear the manipulation, but what she's willing to say on record. And that's that's mind blowing. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, it, this is the type of case you get when you when someone believes they're invincible. Right. Like that's yep. that's the whole thing. Well, um, you're going to get a lot of accusations, too. And the metadata thing, you know, they, they brought up metadata. We don't know what the. The ruling was at the end of metadata. J, uh, JD's lawyers insisted that they wanted metadata from her. She was actually, uh, the court ruled that she had to have everything turned over, all the drives and stuff, by November the 30th. JD's team said that she didn't turn anything over until March the 2nd. She just started turning over pictures, and she just dumped everything that she could on their witnesses. Dumped 56,000 pictures. Like, obviously, a lot of them have nothing to do with this. And they said yep. they didn't have time to go over it. So they asked for a ruling on that because she didn't follow the court's instruction. But we don't know what the answer to that was. So I'll be curious. They presented it like, hey, we have all of this proof. And... I, like I said, I don't know if they'll be able to say, well, she faked data. I, I guess we'll see <laughs> what the judge's ruling is and the way they respond. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how they how they handle that. Well, the because metadata that... is fake. There, there's there's a lot of metadata. Sorry, I didn't mean to catch you off. Uh, just, no, go ahead. Uh, meta, there's a lot of metadata it, it discrepancies, and you can tell. There's uh, a few people broke this down really well. They would go through like security video and they would show timestamps. Like, for example, they have a guy um, that supposedly took pictures of, of the last incident. He, he takes pictures of the damage. Uh, the pictures come up at 904 by metadata. Well, the guy enters this building, the one you were looking at pictures. He enters the lobby at 902. He goes up. Yeah. Right behind that at 9.04, so at the time he should be taking pictures, the police enter. Well, he doesn't stop in the hallway. He tells you he goes and he meets Amber Heard. They go to a different penthouse. The metadata doesn't match up. He would have to really walk in there, get off the elevator, start taking pictures right then for the metadata to be right. And that's obviously not what they did because, the, you know, the timestamps show it. Yeah. It, 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 that... The witness, the expert witness testimony in this is going to be interesting because the, yeah. the defense has already asserted that they're going to bring an expert in to say that none Make of Amber Heard's pictures were manipulated or anything like that. Makeup or I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a makeup artist to say she could have put foundation on and hidden all of that breakage. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be exciting um, or really boring. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the expert witness conundrum. Some of them can be uh, terrifically informative and some of them can be terrifically informative on why you want to end it all. And hopefully they're the first one uh, in this case. Let me hit some of these chats that are in here. Storm Crow 9. By the way, uh, just so everybody knows in the chat, I, I read all of the $20 plus chats kind of as soon as I can. When there's a break in the flow, we try and get those out of there. The rest of them I will read at the end of the stream. But if you're wondering why your chat isn't being read, it will be. It will be, but uh, we tend to 
we, there just tends to not be as much time to read everything that comes in as it comes in. Sometimes I'll, I'll dip back into the chats uh, and, and try and do them in the middle of the stream. If we have some dead air or whatever, some silent space, but um, it all depends on how the conversation is going. Stormcrow 900 says Koreans, Indians, and swamp things have suppressed our accent. Talking about Virginia. Also, this is in Northern Virginia. Many of these people work in D.C. You get the Southern twang gentlemanly accent from the more South or West you go to the mountains. Snuggle Struggle says, if anything, Depp is making a great play in creating the first ever national advocacy for abused men. If Turd wanted to be famous, she'll surely be infamous for finally allowing men to enter this very profitable marketplace. Seth Covington says, can someone please give me the gist of this story, please? The gist of the story is that Amber Heard uh, and Johnny Depp got divorced. And then Amber Heard said a bunch of things about Johnny Depp over the course of some time. And those things eventually destroyed his career. And he says that they are false. Uh, he says that they are false. Those things are accusations about physical and uh, sexual abuse that Amber Heard suffered at the hands of Johnny Depp. He says that's not true. He says, in fact, she was the, the abuser. Uh, against him they, and he has documentation of all that and therefore uh, his life should not have been destroyed by her and so he is suing that's the gist of the story mandalore wise one says could you toast my grandfather dean who passed away this morning most likely from his long personal fight with pancreatic cancer yeah i can do that give me just a second here All right, let's do this real quick. Uh, to Dean, the grandfather of Mandalore Wise, O1, a man who was uh, found, found that thing that we're all looking for, the expiration date on our biological clock, the time when we go. We never know how, we never know why, and we, we will never know when, but when it comes down, we hope only that we leave behind people who miss us, and people who remember us. And uh, it seems like Dean uh, left behind at least one and probably many more. And the best part of this, though he will be missed, of course, is that he is now free from a very painful ailment that has probably plagued him for quite a while. So to Dean, cheers, buddy. Tell God we all say hi. Much love to your family, too, man. Uh, Matthew Vicari says, I'm betting this super chat that the judge drives a Subaru. Seems <laughs> like it might be the case. Yeah. <laughs> that haircut, man. Ooh. That haircut is, uh, judge is sus. Yeah. She's been <laughs> she's been hardcore with uh, Amber Heard most of the time, though. Amber, you know, she elevated claims to, she used the word rape. You You heard how they brought up sexual assault. They have never said that before until now into this trial they've they've started bringing it up into uh into new filings but every other time they've talked about it uk 2020 they weren't alleging sexual assault they were alleging physical assault now they've taken right. it up that that another step so then this is this is the pattern of these accusations especially against high profile people because when you're going to accuse a high profile person of a heinous act, you have one big hurdle to overcome, and that is their inherent profile, like that that level of likability that they typically have. Typically, if you've got someone high profile, right, they're they're high profile because people like them. So you have to do it. So you'll have a wave of accusations that will come. And a lot of times it will not be effective. And then what you'll find is those accusations get tweaked, modified or added to in some way until they find the level of outrage that they're looking for. And there's remember that there's basically for the, for almost everybody on earth, there is zero cost or risk in making these objections or not objections, making these claims about someone you go ahead and you just, people just go out on Twitter or whatever. And they say what they're going to say and it can be complete lie and nothing will happen, but usually nothing will happen. But if you elevate the line, elevate the line, elevate the lie, eventually you'll get to the point where you uh, garner negative backlash against someone. There's a big combination. It's not just anybody can do this. But if you've got someone in a trusted relationship like Amber Heard to Johnny Depp, 
you know, wife, ex-wife, whatever, she can come out and make that accusation, give it a ton of weight and still not get there. So then it has to get, you got to turn that dial up, right? You got to turn that dial up to sexual assault. Now, now people are outraged. How dare, how dare he do this? Now you've got it. There were no consequences before and only rarely are there consequences to the subsequent act. And, and that's only coming when someone like Johnny Depp has $6 million to spend on lawsuits. You, <laughs> yeah. Like normally you can, I mean, we saw that. We saw how many people got to act with impunity with like Vic Vignana. I mean, good God, look at the, the accusations thrown out the, the specific words they try to attach to him were like, like pedo, for example. Oh God, societally, that that's the worst thing. Pretty much you can Sec be yeah, accused. Pedo, of. sexual predator, uh, or whatever. And, and then when you, uh, with the Vic case, it was interesting to see this play out live because what happened in the Vic case was the accusation was that he would, uh, when someone would come up to his table, he would hug them without their consent or he'd give them a kiss on the forehead or the cheek without quote unquote, without their consent. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that didn't really bother anybody because that happens all the time. So then it would be tweaked. Well, he'd kiss them on the face without their consent. And then it would just be he'd kiss them without consent. And then suddenly he's a sexual predator because he's doing this. And like that progression eventually gets to the point where people are like, oh, my gosh. And they don't know the backstory. They don't know the underlying allegations that everybody uh, just dismissed a little bit ago because now it sounds worse. Speaking of sounding worse, uh, we've got someone new to add to the show. I want to bring him in here. Hey, what's up, Joe? How you doing, buddy? I'm great, my friend. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Welcome to the show. I never We're met the nice umbrella guy trip. before. This is a new thing for me. Hey, how's it going, man? Hey there. I am. I am awesome. How are you doing? Good, good, man. Good watching this. Uh, this literal shit show. So okay, you're not an attorney, right? No, no. You, you just... just follow. You just follow like the world a little bit. So at he's least... been following this case since uh -huh. it started. Like, I wasn't questioning his 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 no, expertise. No, no. I yeah. come from the mental health background, actually. Uh, I, I work as a <clears throat> mental health practitioner, so mm -hmm. you know, with, with so, these kind of claims. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to ask because I wanted to know what your take was so far. Like, because I'm curious about someone who's not. I want. I like any opinion. Of someone who's not an attorney who understands what's going on to sort of see what your feel is for what you've seen so far. Well, I, th I thought I thought with opening, you know, if I were just looking at that for like a lay person, I thought that the defense started strong and then the uh, old lady came in and wrecked that shit really well. Um, Depp's team, again, I agree, like putting a piece of paper in front of your face and reading it just, it looks so disconnected in a lot of ways. Uh, some of the stuff they brought up worked, but... I didn't think anybody really opened strong, strong. And right now, I mean, okay. with the first witness. So. Mm -hmm. Before he takes the witness back, okay. Your Honor, really pleased we have that second order fully I endorsed. I am so. very pleased. Yes, yeah. both my, of them are completed. That's great. I'll have an entry from my diary. will not you? Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Kato Sierra says, what is it with you and attracting Thank therapists you. like flies? <laughs> I must be an interesting <laughs> specimen. <Yes, we're> <laughs> uh, Carol Holbert, while we wait for the jury, Carol Holbert says, Riketa, can you explain venue to the audience, please? Well, venue as a concept is merely, is this the right place to be hearing this trial? Uh, in this case, this trial is brought in Virginia, which may surprise people because you have, you know, two people who uh, live in California. Uh, suing or suing each other. But the reason it's brought in Virginia, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is because the Washington Post, where the op-ed yep. that Amber Heard published, was published, uh, is based in Virginia. So um, since the defamation was directed into the state of Virginia, they could bring the case here. And you really don't want this case in California. This would be a nightmare case to run in front of a California jury uh, with California's uh, anti slap rules as well. Virginia has an the, anti slap, but California's is mean. That was the first move they made. They tried to move uh, move venue to California, and the judge struck it down. That's actually yeah. something people tend to overlook is that saying a Thanks state has an anti. Good afternoon again, Mr. Mbrowski. I'm told that both you and I need to speak a little closer to our microphones. Oh, sorry. 
Right. The, oh, the fine, chat has heard. And when we <laughs> took the break, the an- I'm just, just saying anti slap is diff- very different from one state to another. So much so it's like a completely heard, different thing. Uh, was when she had just returned from Australia. Yes. Um, what, what, if anything, did you discuss with Ms. Heard when she returned from Australia? Yeah, I'm working on balancing the mic, guys. Excuse me, we met for dinner, late, uh, a late dinner, and she was uh, she was telling me that she and Johnny had had a a fight um, in Australia, um, and I was I was trying to talk to her about the idea that that kind of fighting is um, not normal; it's too much, you know. Um, it's 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 not okay um but she uh she told me that i needed to uh <clears throat> basically get down off my cross and my mom business uh she said that johnny liked that she was feisty you know she was feisty and then he loved it and that jerry judge and i needed to stay out of her marriage so that was the basic conversation did you respond at all when Miss Heard told you to get off your cross? I just kept saying that it, fighting is not normal. This kind of fighting is not normal. How close were you to Miss Heard when you were having this conversation? We were right next to each other, right? Like right here. Did you see any marks or any discoloration on her face? No. Now, Ms. Dombrowski, I'd like to shift gears again and ask you about the period in April and May of 2016. If I have you could no please idea let what us know, they have uh, as of April that is picking 2016, up some, some guy just breathing. What was constantly. the state of your mother's health? Um. Mom had been, um, she had been in the hospital uh, for quite some time and uh, like a long steady pace from November. So by April, she was, uh, we knew that she was um, towards the end of her life. So um, that's what April basically was. And it went into May. In May, we gathered everybody to come say goodbye to her. How often, if at all, did you visit your mother in April 2016? She was in the hospital, so I was I was with her pretty much every day. I was a 24-7 when I wasn't, uh, you know, at, at the office or something, you know. Did you ever see Johnny at the hospital? Yes. How often did Johnny, did you see Johnny at the hospital in April 2016? I don't know how often I saw him. I mean, he, he would come and see her, you know, regularly. Um, even before that, when there was a period we were trying to uh, help her communicate and he, you know, brought in, you know, different type tools, of pens, pencils, you know, of drawing crayons just to try to help her uh, communicate. He, he came as often as he could. He was, he was there quite a bit. And when you said you called the family together in May, would you please explain what you meant? Um, we were told by, uh, by the doctors that uh, mom was at a point where there was nothing else um, that we could uh, do for her. And um, so that we should start calling anybody that wanted to you know, come and, and you know, spend a little bit of time and say their goodbyes. So we did that. Um, we did that in May. What was the objective of this client? And, and moving ahead to May this 19, witness, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, 2016. Oh, she knows. What was your I mother's mean, condition that day? Like all of his personal she affairs. Was, she was basically in a coma. She was medicated and uh, and and just on um, machines. She. Uh, uh, she testified that she used to have to book an extra room for Johnny to retreat to because of Amber's bitchiness. Wow. How, how do you know that? I, I was with her. 
Did you see uh, your brother in the hospital that day? Yes. What happened the next day, May 20th, 2016? Well, mom, mom passed away that morning. Um, we had had all the family was there. Johnny was there with his kids um, until the wee morning hours of May, you know, uh, May 20th. Um, my kids, uh, my sister, we were all there spending our last bits of time and uh, everybody else had, had gone home um, and uh, mom passed away probably a few hours after that, maybe five, six hours after that. Who was with your mother when she passed? Uh, I was. Who, mm -hmm. if anyone, told Johnny that your mother had passed? Take take your time. Um, I did. I I um. I called him and I called my um our other siblings to tell them. And I'm sorry. I know this is painful. Um, how did Johnny react when you told him that your mother had passed? Well, he was uh, he was sad, but there was a also there's a a relief that you know suffering is is done. So, he was mostly trying to make sure that I was okay and I was going to uh, leave and not stay there and, um, you know, sort of take on everything uh, by myself. So, he asked about how you were doing. Oh, yes, that became quite a big topic. Johnny looks like he needs Biden's medics to give him the right dope. Mr. Dombrowski, did you see Johnny the next day? I think Saturday, he's been told May to mitigate his reactions I did, um, to things. And he's probably I focusing had, really had, hard uh, on not emoting. I gone to my guess. Uh, his house the the night we lost mom, I think we all kind of gathered our children, right? And I had I had my sister with me. So I had driven her back on the Saturday. And we were going to go to the funeral home. So I was, uh, while I was waiting for her, I, I went to go check on Johnny and uh, see if he was okay and wanted to go. And did you check on Johnny Saturday morning, the 21st? Yes. Yes. I, I went, I went to see him um, because he was, we had talked about maybe he would also go to the, to the funeral home. But um, when I got there, he seemed he seemed upset because he and Amber had been fighting. Um, what else happened when you first met with your brother on the morning of the twenty first when you were talking about going to the funeral home? I just I. I I went to go see if he was going to go with us. I got there. He was upset. <clears throat> Excuse me, because they were fighting. Um, I got upset because of the day that was chosen to fight. Um, but I, I went ahead and left and went to the uh, to the funeral home with my sister, and then came back that evening. Why were you upset? about their fighting on that day in particular? Our, our, we had just lost our mom the day before. So I, I feel like that, you know, there might be the need for a little compassion, no fighting on that day. Did Johnny end up going with you to the funeral home that day? No, I went ahead and, and went, um, and he was he was gathering his stuff because he, he had to go pick up some items because he was going to go on tour. Had to go return Did you some see videotapes. Johnny again <laughs> that day once you left him to go to the funeral home. Yeah, I, I came back um, that evening. I came back. Uh, I was taking care of my sister for a bit. And then um, before I left to go home, I stopped at his house to make sure that he was okay, you know, um, and 
I saw him then. And what happened when you went over to see that he was okay? He was, uh, he was talking to a couple of people. I, I, you know, I saw him briefly. He, he seemed to be all right. And um, I spoke to Jerry Judge and uh, they had, they had just come back from um, him picking up items down at. Um, Is any of this relevant to her test? Is it to so anything? when you uh, met him the second day that time, strike that. When well, I mean, the fact that they were the second time that day on May 21st. Fighting on the day that his did mom you meet died. With him or day of his mom's funeral. House or yeah, or or it seems like, with him. No, I went to the sweet like house. It's very drawn and out. Going down to um, the, the penthouse to pick up some of his stuff. Uh, because he was going to be leaving, you know, to go on, on tour. Um, and uh, I just stopped by after, after he, they had just gotten back. And as of that time, the evening of May 21, your mother had just passed. What plans, if any, had been made for a funeral service for your mother? We, we hadn't made any plans for a funeral service. Um, we wanted to wait until we could get, you know, all the friends and family because we weren't expecting the date necessarily. Um, but we wanted to wait till we can get all friends and family to come together to have more of a, like a dinner, like a celebration, like mom would want at her favorite place. So we, we waited, we decided to schedule it like a month or so out instead of immediate. So you had referred uh, to your brothers having plans to go on tour mm -hmm. that next week, obviously not knowing that his mother was going to pass. Right. Um, what, if any other formal events had been planned for that next week before he was going on tour? Well, he was, he had a, um, he had the premiere for um, Alice that was on the Monday night um, mom passed on Friday, um, and the premiere was Monday night. Um, and then he was going to take a flight after that, immediately after uh, the premiere. He had to get on a plane to go to New York to, you know, to, to meet the band and go on to Europe. And when you say Alice, just so the jury may understand, if you could please explain to them what Alice is. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Alice... Uh, and, and I'm so sorry right now. It, uh, I don't know if it's, it's Alice through the Looking Glass. Maybe was that one's name or the Alice in Wonderland Disney sequel. The Alice in Wonderland Disney sequel. He played uh, Hatter. Tug, was this the premiere that and Amber Heard would then so that use in the extortion that letter? for Alice in Wonderland. I, I can't remember what like premiere on Monday. The, and the what day I guess? was I can't remember. Mr. I can't Depp <laughs> planning to go on tour with his music band? He had to be there Tuesday morning. He, he um, so we we had to schedule it. It was very tight. We scheduled a a, a plane for him immediately after the premiere. Yes, that's what it would be. It would be Alice he through the, get on the plane. Um, so he was expected to leave on Tuesday. So how long was he supposed to be on tour? I, I believe it was a couple of months, something like that. And going back to the premiere, how, if at all, did your mother's passing affect the premiere of Alice in Wonderland? We didn't, we didn't let anybody know that mom had passed away. We kept that really close um, to just our, you know, just family and friends. Uh, because he, because he had to go do the premiere, and with the premiere, he's on the the carpet, and on the carpet, he does a lot. He does interviews, and it didn't feel right um, on many levels to have him where people knew that mom had passed away, and um, while he's trying to do interviews to to sort of you know give their condolences and their sympathies and all of that. So we we kind of kept it just with us so that it wouldn't become a you know a, a worldwide thing and he could just 
do what he was supposed to do and do his job. And Did you think he could handle hearing all that sympathy at the premiere? I, I didn't think he should handle it. I didn't think, I thought, I thought it would be very hard on him. You know, I, I, it would be very hard question after question and condolences. And, Did there come a time when Ms. Heard filed for divorce from your brother? Yes. When was that? I learned, I learned that she had filed on the Tuesday morning. Um, after the video looks oh, yeah, was that premiere? Funeral home, and I got a call from. The video is very jerky. The attorney. Yeah, there's a. That she had filed. There's a. Some lag somewhere. I don't Where know if it's was between Johnny me and StreamYard or StreamYard. When you YouTube. learned that Ms. Heard had filed for divorce, he was he was already in New York and getting ready to travel to Europe for the tour. How did you react initially when you heard from Mr. Dupp's attorney that Ms. Heard had filed for divorce? I mean, I think understandably, you know, I, 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 the timing of this, um, it made me sick, actually. It, it, it really made me feel ill. It made me sad, frustrated. I don't, I don't, I can't even find the word to describe um, how I felt when I heard that the divorce was filed the day after, you know, at, while I'm at the funeral home. You didn't think wow. the timing of Ms. Hurd's filing was appropriate? I, I, I did not. I thought, I thought it was, I, I thought. Now see, that was a leading that question. Might have been able to wait. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Did there come a time when you learned that Ms. Hurd had also filed for a restraining order against Johnny? Yes. Yes, I think I heard that also from the attorney. I believe, I believe the day before um, she was, I, th I think I, it was a Thursday, I think. I learned that one. So is there, this was two days after your brother had left for New York? Yes. Yes, because I was, shocked at that at that i was shocked at that um and concerned that he was out of town and didn't know if he needed to be there he was gone you know um and and i was asking the attorney and they said no he doesn't have to be there no one has to be there amber won't be there no one will be there just attorneys it's a very simple process did johnny attend the restraining order hearing no he was not in town he wasn't in the country. Did you see any press coverage of the restraining order hearing? Yes, I did. Would you please tell the jury what you saw or read? Objection calls for hearsay. Objection hearsay, yeah. Not asking for the proof of what was in the articles? To press the impression. The impression? Yep. All right, I'll sustain it to hearsay and relevance. Okay. Jeez. This judge on hearsay. Did is you terrible. see press? Was there press coverage of the hearing? There was a tremendous amount of press coverage. Did you read any of it? I did. I did. I did read some of it. I did. You know, I saw some of it. How did it make you feel? Putting aside the truth or falsity of what you saw. Right. You can you testify as to what she heard without proving, saying it's not true. I don't well, believe it's true. Right, they said, they said he was abusive. But that doesn't mean he is. How did you feel Thank when you. you read the press? Not he. What's the relevance? I think it. I think it's relevant to her testimony, Your Honor, but I can move on. Okay, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Then why do you... You didn't Wait. have an answer for why it was going to be relevant? Moving ahead two years. <laughs> I think it time. is. God damn it. 
Did you see Ms. Hurd's Washington Post op-ed when it was published in, in December 18, 2018? Yes. What did you think Ms. Hurd's op-ed was about? Relevance. It's entirely oh, relevant. Oh, no, this they're, is entirely relevant. They're trying to argue somehow that uh, people didn't understand do what, what the op-ed meant. We, we heard an opening where there was... What's your prototype? 100% yes, relevant. Did you understand the article to be about Johnny Depp? That's the, the whole point. Could you identify? Because their their entire defense to this is that she didn't name Johnny Depp. Oh, she didn't name him. She didn't name him. Mm -hmm. When you saw that article, what did it tell you? Who is it about? What, what did it say? Because really, the defamation is any third party. Defamation can be his sister. His sister hearing lies about Johnny Depp. Did that defame him yeah in fact in the in the defense's opening they talked about context so she took the context of what or what amber heard wrote to be referencing johnny depp not some random person when she talks about a, you know yep. abuse in a relationship let's see what the judge where his uh, looks like he lost on that oh my god how, you how do you this? how do you lose on the relevance of this Ms. issue Dabrowski, have you had any discussions with your brother about the op-ed. Yes. I'm... Check the anything. <laughs> Good God. So I'm not they, sure. They it can't. It's a yes or no question. Okay. All right. Next question. They're, they're not going to let anything through on this if possible. It is very damaging to have this article As... be about Johnny Depp. Mr. Depp's it's, it's brother. It's a critical element of the case. And as his personal manager, do you have any understanding how the publication of the op-ed has affected your brother's career? Uh, object. That, but Objection foundation, Your Honor, and hearsay. How did this... This is personal that, manager. That, that's, that's, yeah, that's his oh, manager. That, that's, um, how, that's fine. But he, she's worked with her brother for I, I'll several allow decades. That, but let's see where the answer goes. You, you may answer. I'm sorry, would you mind asking it again? Hmm. This guy's not good at repeating his questions. Do you have an understanding of how the publication of the op-ed has affected your brother's career? Uh, yes. Um, The op-ed, the op-ed is written um, with uh, the way it was written, the wordings uh, within the op-ed make it very clear um, <laughs> of the time frame. Give the director to answer that question again. Maybe you should ask it again. How has the publication of Ms. Hurd's op-ed, putting aside for a moment, don't it's say putting aside the to your brother. It's references to your brother. How has it affected his career? I believe there's a negative effect on anyone's career when there's accusations, you know, um, as as there have been. How has it affected him personally? You're going to object to hearsay. She's his sister, Your Honor. Foundation. I'll allow it. Go ahead. Personally, I know. I know he. I know he doesn't want people to feel that he, you know, that he could ever be that type of person, which he isn't, and. To know that actually that is something that is attached to him now, um, which trickles down to his children, you know, where I think that part more than anything is the part that has bothered him, you know, the fact that his children have to, you know, have this in their life. 
I don't think she was prepped well. She needs to be Ms. more expressive. Do you, do you more believe that your brother physically abused Miss Heard? She might just not be that kind of person. Oh. I'll sustain the objection. Do you believe that was a that question Ms. they shouldn't have asked? Public right figure there. representing domestic violence. No, I don't. Uh, I believe the opposite. Uh, excuse me. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. Thank you. Honor. You strike that answer, please. Thank you. She needs to say he's not abusive, not he's not that person. That's prepping. Those as two questions his sister were terrible. And as his personal manager for decades, are you aware of any occasion on which any woman other than Miss Heard has ever accused your brother of any type of physical abuse? Objection, foundation, hearsay. Now, are I you aware answer. is a foundational yeah. question. <laughs> I object to the foundation of the question attempting to establish foundation. How has Ms. Hurd's op-ed impacted your life? Objection, relevance. relevance. What's the relevance? Thank you, Your Honor. That's okay. all I have right all now. Right. I'll yeah. draw a question. Okay. All right. Bad question. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, sir. There are answers to that question, those questions that he asked that he could have gotten without asking those questions. That was overall not bad on direct, but uh, there near the end got kind of weird. But I live Good for Cross. You, Mr. Man, I love yeah. Cross. He's going to shred her. So I believe we covered some of this, but just want to make sure. So you're you're employed at a company your brother owns, right? Yes. It's called Infinitum Nile. Yes. Is that right? And it's Mr. Depp's production company. Yes. And you're the president of that company, right? Yes. And that is your only source of income, correct? I have other projects that I work on on the side. It's your only job, right? It's my full time job. Yes. Right. And. Um, job wise, you don't have any other sources of income other than Infinitum Nile, right? Other projects. I, I, I have, I have the opportunity with other projects to make more money. Okay. All right. Um, your honor, may I approach? All right. If you could just show counsel what sure. you're approaching with. <laughs> These three binders. Oh, phone books. <laughs> you know, everyone looks through it right now. You're just giving, I think he's just giving copies, Mr. Chief. Oh, I, I assume it wouldn't be. Okay. He's going to show evidence or beat someone into a zip code. I mean, she Good. <laughs> Look at this. Here, can you please briefly review this 400 page document I have for you? It's such a weird thing to bring up there for her to look at. Because it's so thick. What is this? Is this the prenup that didn't get signed? Mr. Dombrowski, do you remember giving a deposition in this case? Yes. Oh, it's a transcript and of her deposition. Okay, that makes some ago, sense. Right? Yeah, they're going to go to a specific page there. Right? You remember um, before you started that deposition being under oath, right? Yeah. Okay. And you swore to tell the truth? Yeah. Okay. And you were asked questions by counsel for Ms. Heard, and you gave answers, right? Yes. Could you please take a look at page 19? of that deposition transcript in front of you. I'm sorry. Okay. And do you see on page, uh, sorry, page 19, line eight through 10, you were asked a question, do you have any other sources of income other than from Infinitum Neil? Nile. And you answered no, job wise, no. Right. Do you see that? I do. And was that testimony correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. But it's the same as what I said today. Now, you have a huge financial interest in your brother's career, right? The money that Infinitum Nile makes comes from money that Mr. Depp makes, correct? 
This is going to be it. It hasn't always historically known. What else does it come from? We've had um, deals with other uh, entities, companies. And for the most part, the better your brother does in his career, the more money Infinitum Nile makes, though, correct? I, 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 I don't think it's exactly like that, no. And you have a, a, a your, your brother has done projects that Infinitum Nile has been the production company for, correct? Yes. And you have a financial interest in that company, correct? I'm an employee. Are you employed by his other companies as well? I'm employed by Infinitum Nile. Are you employed by the other companies that your brother has? No. Do, where do you receive your paycheck from? Infinitum in, Nile? Infinitum Nile. And you have an, a financial interest in how Infinitum Nile performs financially, correct? I'm an employee. No, I want it to go bankrupt. I, I, I have a salary that I get, so I, that's not a financial interest. If you're asking if I get a piece of the pie, yeah. no. You you wouldn't consider salary financial interest. Is that your? I, I, I consider it a salary. Yes, it's but but it sounds like you're asking something different. I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood. Yeah. yeah. So the bottom line is. is you draw a salary from <laughs> yes. the Nile. Yes. He's, He's trying, trying to make, make it sound like you own yes. stock in the company. Yeah. Now, you feel protective of your younger brother always have, right? Yes. And you testified earlier today about Mr. Depp's reactions to some of your mother's anger growing up. Mm -hmm. How, how old was Mr. Depp during the periods you were talking about? Like when he was a, a kid, is that basically what you were talking about? Um, the reactions to mom's anger began as when we were children and the and we ha we've had the same reaction always was to leave right and when you were testifying earlier about mr depp's reaction being to leave you were referring to when he was before you left the house when he was a kid right yes but we we left the house not too far apart from each other but yes okay. when when mr depp would leave as a, as a child during the times when your mother was angry at him. Was he addicted to drugs back then? No. Was he addicted to alcohol? No. You testified a little bit about Mr. Depp's um, former partner, Vanessa Parody. You were friends with Vanessa, right? We were, it was a family. So. Right. You considered her family. I, yeah, right? she was part of the family, yes. Right. And you were friendly with her? Yes. You liked her? Yes. You were happy that your brother was with her? I was happy that my brother was happy. Yeah. And and you, you didn't want to see him split up from Vanessa, did you? You know what? I, I wanted both of them to be happy. I, I It didn't matter to me if they split up or not. You were You were devastated when they split up, weren't you? I don't think I was devastated. Were you happy about it? No, I wanted my family to be okay. Did, what were your emotions when you learned that your brother was splitting from Vanessa? If I had to say, I was probably, you know, a little sad for both of them, but that, I mean, beyond that, I, I don't, I don't really. This seems beyond the, the emotions. scope. And you were sad because yeah. you were losing her as part of what you just testified was your family, right? I mean, I don't think this is actually no. damaging, but you weren't sad about it's that. Not very relevant, no. but it's not hurting them either. Now, on May twenty yeah. first, let them um, waste time on this. Twenty sixteen, you were asked some questions about. It just that. makes and, you sound I know, like a normal person. Um, I know your mother's passing must have been very tough, so I'm not going to ask specific questions about that. I'm going to ask questions about the next day, just to make sure that I had your. Your I'm going to ask questions about right. why you're a cold um, bitch. Can you remind me, you said you saw your brother the, the morning of May 21st? I stopped by there at some point in the, in the, yeah, in the daytime, in the early part of the day. What, uh, approximately what time? I, I honestly don't remember. Was it before lunch? I, I, I don't remember the timing. It was just daytime. It was daytime. And you testified that when you stopped by there for the first time that day that you were, 
you were upset because it seemed like he and Amber had been fighting. Is that what you said? I said that uh, they had been arguing. They had been arguing. And I said that I, I didn't love that they were arguing on. It was a, a horrible day to argue on. And, and that was, your testimony was that you were upset that they had been arguing when you stopped by that during the daytime, right? Okay. Um, now you have no understanding of any of Amber or Mr. Depp's communications leading up to May 21st, correct? I don't know that I have a lot of that, no. Okay. And, but your testimony is that when you stopped by during the daytime on May 21st, that they had been fighting and that made you upset. Is that right? I'm just trying to understand what you testified to. It, it's not that it made me upset. I, I found it upsetting. That's the same thing. No, not quite. Yeah. I disagree. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Did you ever become aware that they hadn't actually seen each other or communicated at all before he came over at 8 p.m. on May 21st? Foundation. Finally. Uh, she's testified that she s said that they were fighting mm -hmm. earlier in the day. I'm asking her if she ever became aware that they hadn't actually seen each other or talked that day. Uh, I'll allow the question. Just go ahead. I'll ask it again. Did you ever become aware that Amber and Mr. Depp hadn't seen each other or talked that day before he came to the Eastern Columbia building the evening of May 21st? No, I just know that when, uh, what I understood was that they uh, had had a fight, whether it was over the phone or, I, I don't know. They were arguing. Now, when your mother was in the last days of her life in the hospital, Amber visited her, right? Amber did come one time at, um, by herself, if that's what you're referring to. She she did come one time, um, she, shortly before Johnny was also coming. And she visited her actually more than one time, correct? I don't recall her visiting on her own more than one time, no. I remember her coming one time because I didn't know she was coming. Um, and Johnny was actually also coming. Right. So they ended up there together. I guess I'm a little confused because you just you just testified that she only visited one time. Alone. This is what I'm saying. I only remember the one time alone where she showed up alone. I only remember one time. And, and Johnny came shortly after she was there. And other times she visited with Johnny or other people. Is that right? She visited with Johnny sometimes. During the time that Amber and Johnny were together, um, you became aware that he was using drugs and alcohol excessively, correct? Yep. The, that was not indirect. Your Honor, she's testified to what she observed during their relationship. I think it's with Ah, uh, no, you said she didn't know any of yeah. this shit. This is not Ohio. You can't do that. <laughs> no, I'll overrule the objection. You can ask the question. Jesus. What? <laughs> Yeah, we're using Ohio rules of evidence now. Jesus. Do you just want to ask the question again? I, I do, yeah. Okay. Um, wow. During the time that Amber and Johnny were dating, did you become aware that he was using drugs or alcohol excessively? I, I, I became aware that he had been drinking. And I during the time they were dating, I, I became aware of, at one point, you know, um, a certain a certain medication yes and you i don't think the judge is biased the, I think the judge just wants to hear not only the story. had he been drinking but he was drinking excessively correct i don't know that i formed excessively but he was drinking you you became aware that he was using booze right using booze drinking. and yes. you knew he was using he cocaine using right booze. i never saw him do that so you you became aware that he was using cocaine, correct? I never saw him use anything like that. I, I became aware of people saying that. 
and you Objection became so concerned hearsay. about that that you told your brother to stop using cocaine, correct? I don't, I don't, I don't know that I remember telling him to stop using cocaine. I think I might have told him anything that he was doing, he should stop doing. Heather, can you pull up? So she didn't know if it was cocaine or some other drug? I think she's trying to say, like, if you're doing anything, quit doing it. But I don't know. I've just heard. Is me what she's trying to phrase it. Your Honor, I'll, I'll obviously move for admission before it's. Yeah, sorry, like I ate a frog. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be on their screen. Quit riding the white stallion, Johnny. It's not good for you. She may have answered this question in deposition differently. Mm. But this, they had kept uh, the drug use out of direct pretty well. Uh, really think this should have been beyond the scope, but... I mean, it's inevitable. They're going to hit the drug use on no. some witnesses as yeah, many as about, they possibly can. Exactly. Once they talk about the fighting, his drug use could be behind the fighting. So, yeah, it's all coming in now or later. They can shape how bad it is, though. What they really want to do is make it look like she's Just protecting. Trying to figure them. out how to rotate this mm -hmm. and will lie and mischaracterize from her computer screen. You have to rotate it on that there. 20 seconds of silence. All this is doing definitely. is mirroring whatever was on, on, on the computer screen. There's nothing we can. That 20 seconds silence stuff right. was not good. Sorry. Not good. Sorry for the delay, Your Honor. Right. Appreciate your patience. Yes, Also, for all that money, they couldn't get those transcripts in, like, bound form. They just have binder clips. <laughs> that, that's, that's fucking JV, man. Come on. Blew all the money in Johnny's tie budget. The issue is what's on the screens. Okay. Sounds like a you problem, I'm counselor. Plug it back in just to see. Turn it off and turn it back on. Yeah. For the system. Adjust the tracking on it. <laughs> uh, Jay Bama fan says the breathing is coming from inside the house rackets. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's a bailiff or something. Because it sounds like a man breathing and it's happening while <laughs> various people are talking. I'm just trying to figure out what Mike yes. is picking it up. All right, I, I think, think it's whoever's chained up underneath her. You know, that's what I'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Over here at litigation, we make a big deal about how the clients dress for trial because we feel like the jury takes like a lot right. from whether they feel better. distant or whatever. I don't just looking at that, she Mr. to me Browski, looks like really cold. Like he looks like a movie star. Direct your attention to the. Um, She's trying to dress conservatively, and she ended up dressing vortex in the middle of the page. She looks like a the fucking gray. cop. Um, yeah. If you look in the from column, there's a name that says Christy Dombrowski, and it has a number. Is that your number? Yes. And are those texts from you to your brother, Johnny Depp? Yes. And those texts were sent on or about February 5th, 2014? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of um, Defendant's Exhibit 214. See where you said stop using cocaine, Johnny? Objection to 214. Do, can, I, can I just say something? No, just, just wait, ma'am. Just wait for a question. Okay. You'll get yes, it on sir. redirect. She I wants to say, say thing. Something to mitigate that text message yes. that's going to come up talking about his cocaine use. <laughs> yeah. She's going to say, I didn't have to tell him to stop. I just quit getting it for him. <laughs> oh, Gilbert Gottfried really did die. Oof. Yeah, Gilbert Gottfried is dead. Afflacking his way up to heaven as we speak. I thought he died years ago. 
died today. Gilbert Gottfried? No, apparently he died today. He died today. Yeah, but but you thought marks. he died years ago. <laughs> His reading of Fifty Shades of Grey is one of the funniest things on YouTube. <laughs> yes, it is. God, it's just disgusting. You feel like... Hi, Joe. Hey, Sean. Sweaty afterwards. <laughs> sweaty. But, like, you didn't sweat. Like, just, like, you feel, like, just gross. You know? Like, yeah. moist. Blah. <laughs> so it makes it good. Well, rest in peace, Gilbert Godfrey. Pour off a little drink for him. It'd have to be a little one. He was a very small man. He was. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey. Oh, my God, he's typing. <laughs> Tug, is that you clicking furiously? Impossibly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Forgot to mute. Oh. It reminds me like the panic Gil attack. I Gilbert the Godfrey, yeah. 50 Shades. <laughs> See, when I took the bar for a second, I stopped what I was doing, and I looked up and just tried to take a deep breath, and I could hear, like, 600 people clicking away at their keyboards. <laughs> it's completely unnerving. It sounds like one of the old propaganda offices for the U.S. Uh, war effort in World War II. <laughs> yeah. It's like 900 women in a room with typewriters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just like Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Dear Mrs. Ryan. Four twenty, blaze it up. Sorry, sorry. I came out of nowhere, <laughs> especially for four nineteen. Hey, what's up, Crime Talk? Okay, the, the dead air from the court here is really... Have they not fixed this text message display <laughs> They're thing They're still yet? fucking off with this. Oof. <laughs> this is bad. Now, uh, come, come on. Yeah. You gotta prepare this before you walk in the courtroom. Come on, guys. Plaintiffs' counsel should look over to the jury and say, "See, they can't do anything right." Yes. <laughs> Your Honor, I object to their incompetence with the technology. Yes. yes. If you want to see the visual representation of uh, Amber's case, here you go. Oh my gosh. Oh, the judge is not trans. It's just Rick Astley from 35 years ago. <laughs> All right, so you're moving in. 214 will receive it redacted. That's yes, correct. Right. Okay. Over objection. That's fine. Um, and you wanted to publish just the redacted parts, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. That's fine. Right now you just have the dates up. Is that what you want to start with? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You can publish Thank that to you. the jury. Okay. Ms. Dombrowski, I, I just because we we can only I just show want to call you a liar. Can I page. call you a liar, um, Ms. Dombrowski? Do you see that these, um, you, you just testified these were text messages between you and Mr. Depp, right? And do you see that these text messages were sent um, on February 5th, 2014? Yes. The, the bottom three? Okay. And those bottom three, you just looked at when we saw the whole page, and I know this it's a little is that's for the jury rev not revelatory. Seeing that, but you, you testified that the bottom three were text messages from you to your brother, right? Yes. Okay. Heather, could you just scroll to the right? She sent three text messages in one second. Please. That's that's good. Thank you. So on February fifth, two thousand fourteen, you sent three texts to your brother. You sent one that said, stop drinking, right? Mm -hmm. You said one that said, stop Coke, right? Yes. So you, I, I assume you weren't talking about the soft drink, right? No, I was. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. appear to be. 
you were talking about like, cocaine, correct? I was no, you should have gone with the Coca-Cola. Yeah. <laughs> Coke's the name of his hairdresser. I, I don't know what guy. these are in reference to. So I remember they brought this up at my deposition. And I, these are something that they're... I don't know the, the, I don't know if there's more context to them. I don't know what they're in reference to. I know what they say, but I don't know what they're in reference to. <laughs> and what they say is that it's on February 5th, 2014, you were telling your brother, Johnny Depp, to stop using cocaine, correct? Mm. No, I, I wrote those <laughs> words, but I, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know that I was telling him to stop doing that. It, you know, in context, mm. it would be different. It could be a different scenario. She could have been telling him to stop his friend let's, from let's drinking take it Coke. Word, word by word. Coke, when you wrote Coke, she you should meant have said, cocaine, I was actually soccer, talking about right? Amber Heard. Yeah. <laughs> and when you wrote stop pills, it. you meant prescription yeah. pills, right? Yeah. So you were telling him on February 5th, 2014, to stop your fortune. stop Coke, and stop pills, right? Say it again. I, I wrote the Find words. another way to ask her. And did you have any reason to believe when you wrote that? That Mr. Depp had been on a bender recently? Answer carefully. Lady. I don't recall writing this, so I don't recall the context of it. I, I understand that the words are there, but I don't I don't recall the timing or the writing of it. I don't recall anything about it necessarily. You weren't joking when you wrote that, right? It wasn't a joke. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. Objection asked joking, the answer. But but you know maybe i was repeating something that someone else told me to write you were telling your brother to stop drinking stop cocaine and stop pills he's gonna say this every time she equivocates yeah. cocaine and pills correct Objection yeah but she keeps answer. equivocating i'd keep doing it too. i didn't believe he had the problem as much i don't know as, as an answer uh, Nick. as much as someone else was trying to make me believe that he had the problem did you have any reason to believe Who would have tried that Mr. to make Depp you believe that he was Bender? doing this? Ask the I mean, answer. Benders, I don't yes. you know what I mean. Once so again. I'm not involved in the benders. Understood. <laughs> I'm asking at the time when you sent these three text messages on February 5th, 2014, did you have any reason to believe they that should Mr. Object. Depp had been on a recent bender? Asked and answered. I, I couldn't tell you about February. They're letting her drown. They got to help her. And what I would know at this Come moment. On. Did you have any reason to be worried about Mr. Depp? When I you couldn't tell texts? you. I don't what know. was going on again. I don't know what was happening in life at that time. I don't recall that period, the dates. I don't recall where we. It's I don't eight years ago. About that time. I'll give her credit it's before COVID. Her text. Yeah. Do you say it's pre-COVID? I don't know. <laughs> I know what the words are, but I don't know what Trump. the context yes. is of them. Right. And so I'm asking game. you, I'm asking you a question. Isn't there some discovery can, on this? Was, when you sent these texts, did you have any Maybe reason get to be it on worried about Mr. Depp's Doubt use it. of Objection. Asked and answered. Yes. Again, I don't, I don't recall the time period of sending these texts. So I don't know that I would have any reason at that time. I don't know. This is just have you send the text if you didn't have a reason to be worried about his use of alcohol, right cocaine or pills. Yes, I texted him constantly. I, I'm I his could personal send those manager. Three separate yes. lines. Like I don't want him to kill himself. Texts. I could do that if, if it was, you know, there's different reasons that maybe I could do that. It doesn't mean that was me giving him a message. You, Have you ever sent texts to anyone else to tell them to stop drinking, stop coke, <laughs> or stop pills? <laughs> Objection relevance. Again, I don't know that Protects I'm telling other him people to stop drinking, stop yeah. and stop pills. That's what I'm saying. It's the context of this. And and I appreciate that, but that wasn't my question. My question was, has, have you ever sent texts to anyone else in your life telling them to stop drinking, stop Coke, or stop pills? I don't recall. I don't believe I've ever told anybody to stop doing any of those things in a text message, but I also don't know that that's what I was doing here is what I'm trying to say. But you wrote those words to Mr. Depp, right? I don't I wrote recall. Those words. Yeah. Someone else could have used myself. You didn't love no the behavior yes. that Mr. Depp was engaging in around this time frame, did you? I, I don't know the time. Also, frame. it's a I don't know plus zero, so that's what time frame you're actually referring seven a.m. in eight. Well, around, think, isn't it? In the days leading up, on or around February fifth, twenty fourteen, you didn't love the behavior that Johnny Depp was engaging in, did you? Oh, asked the answer. I I don't I don't. 
recall anyone's behavior from February 2014. I don't recall February 2014. Would it would it refresh your recollection, perhaps, to see other text messages that you sent on or around this time to determine whether or not you were worried about Mr. Depp? Why wouldn't you have done this earlier? Come on. Because they wanted to build up to this big reveal. Why don't we do this? Um, Heather, can you please pull up? If uh, there's other texts that are going to make the context clear, he's about to ruin her. Maybe. If I was defense counsel, though, it could be. Yeah. If I was defense counsel, I would talk about what movies he was in in February 2014. So I give her like a time frame because she's so involved with his career that might jar her memory as to what his life was about at that time. I think I think nailing her with the text is going to be better if if you can. I agree, but it's that's if you have something in the text. All right. That text right before says, I can't do this right now, Angel, which means she he's probably responding to her saying, hey, you need to stop yes. doing this. Stop doing that. You need to get your life in order. You're you're on a downward spiral. I mean, I I think she's about to get pilloried by the next I, set of texts. I think Maybe. he would have brought that up already instead of asking. Oh, I don't. Know. I would drag it out and make her lie mm-hmm. a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. I don't Maybe. remember the context. I, I don't that. remember. I, I, don't, I don't know. But. I don't know why I would send him these messages. Johnny, I'm sweeping the floor and there's an eight pound pile of cocaine in my yes. bathroom. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I just had to flush down the toilet. I, I need you to stop. Yeah. Hey, sis, <laughs> I can't talk right now. Me and the me and the hookers are about to finish it off. So, sorry, love. I can't hear you over the snorting. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, that's what you the, mean by here's the thing. They're, they're trying to make him look bad, but at the same time, all they can do is try and get an inference that because he was on a bender, that he was therefore also beating Amber Heard. Yes. That, and that's and, why... And, and, I, and destroying right. his career. What They, mm-hmm. they want to lay off two things. They want to say that she... That article did not destroy his career. He already destroyed his career, while mm-hmm. also saying that substance yeah. abuse equals domestic abuse. Yeah, but right. I... His his career, I mean, he was already known for being crazy before this. Yeah, well, the, they have they have um, in their their evidence exhibits. They have ten pages of articles that they they entered. And the interesting thing about the articles is you see a change around page seven. You know, he has uh, movies like Transcendence, uh, other movies that that get slammed, but he doesn't start losing jobs until. Certain articles drop, you know, uh, from from the Sun article, the one that goes uh, UK twenty twenty, yeah. and her shit. Before that, no job drops. It didn't matter how bad that shit looked. Yeah, when I was listening to her testify earlier, I was reading through a bunch of your tweets trying to catch up on this. So it's like it's like you've been following this along for a while, Tug. <laughs> yeah, I've been following it a little while. <laughs> <laughs> for a hot minute, I feel like I'm like, man, when this is over, I'll be glad never to hear fucking Amber Heard's name again. <laughs> How dare you, you big? The truth is, in 2014, he might have been filming Mordechai, which came out in 2015. So he probably was on a lot of benders when he was making that movie. But a, a bender does IMDb. like the. The bender is just them trying to distract from the issue. And, and that's yes. the key. And that's one of the things I was going to say a little bit ago uh, was I think a lot of times witnesses and even counsel get really wrapped up on how something is going to make someone look like they're really concerned about Johnny Depp's drug use, making him look bad, mm-hmm. but they need to just let it go. Like, because his drug use can't be in contention because everybody knows or everybody believes the only thing would be is if you had every doctor come out and be like, no, we examined him daily and he's actually completely clean. It was all an act, which isn't going yeah. to happen. So everybody knows he's on drugs. The drugs yeah. doesn't mean he beats anybody. Lots of people take drugs and don't beat anyone. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's a thing. And so just let it stop trying. This lady looks bad because she's looking like she's trying to protect him from this cocaine admission and she's getting tripped up on it. And it's like, did you tell him to stop doing Coke? Yeah, sure. Uh, I was, I was concerned about him. I don't even know if he was doing Coke, but I wanted him to stop doing anything that he might've been doing. Cause he wasn't acting right. Yeah, exactly. Like that's what I was saying. It could be just quit, yeah. quit doing whatever it is you're doing. I don't care what it is. Which is actually what's implied by those text messages based on, it's like she's reaching and guessing. I don't know if it's drinking. I don't know if it's Coke, but some other pills. Mm-hmm. It's something is you're acting weird. And yep. it's, 
Yeah. But and, but she should have. They should have just done that. They should have just easily passed on and not made a big deal out of the Coke thing. She brought these text messages on herself by not answering this question earlier. Because had she answered the question uh, about the, did you tell him to stop doing cocaine? If she had said, yeah, I didn't know if he was doing it, but I wanted him to stop anything. If she had done that earlier, and then they wouldn't be able to impeach her with this, uh, with this deposition stuff. Mm -hmm. Miss Dembrowski, do you do you recognize this document as a text message chain between you and Amber Heard on February 3rd, 2014? Yes. And you see the chain starts at about 5, 5.20 p.m., right? Yes. And there's messages from, from Amber to you are the ones on the right, correct, in blue? Yes. And messages from you to Amber are the ones uh, in gray on the left, right? Yes. And if you go, well, take a minute and just, just read that first page, please. Does, does this refresh your recollection about a, a text conversation you had with Amber on or about February 3rd, 2014? Well, I, I can see this as our text exchange. And um, does this refresh your recollection about concern that you may have had about the behavior that Mr. Depp was engaged in on or around that time? Again, I, I'll, allow, I'll allow that question. Go ahead. Does this, I'll ask it again. Does this refresh your recollection about behavior that Mr. Depp may have been engaging in around that time? It's, I remember, I remember, um, I remember this period and what Amber was believing that he was doing. Yes, at this period. And this period, like a this day prior to the other period? Your worry and concern for your brother Johnny Depp around this time? I, I don't, I don't still don't recall having a severe worry around this time. Okay. Well, before you didn't recall having any worry. So does it, does this at least refresh your recollection that you had some worry? I honestly, I don't recall having a worry. Well, I, you know, I, I've had worries in the years, but I don't say yes and limit the bleeding. I don't recall it. You take the wind out of their sails. Um, so so it, did you, did you have any reason to doubt what you were reading from Ms. Heard in these texts? To be honest, uh, yeah, she was. She would write things quite often, or explain things quite often, and and uh, it's a bit more dramatic, maybe, than what we understood it to be, or or um, maybe even sometimes the instances were different than what she was describing. So. I, but in any event, this conversation that you had with Miss Hurd gave you concern enough to tell your brother, stop coke, stop pills, stop booze, right? No, I Amber, don't. Yeah. It, it did, 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 and I've asked this before, but we can, we'll take a look at this. Is it true you didn't love the behavior he was engaging in around this time, right? Again. I didn't witness a lot of the behavior that people are, you know, that you guys are referencing. I didn't witness a lot of it. Um, take a look at page two, okay. please. Okay. And she has not been prepped at all. And I'll have some questions about both of the pages. That's mm -hmm. what I said. No, I didn't hear you say that, Joe. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. I appreciate the endorsement. <laughs> you just knew I was going to say that earlier, that, that you're yeah. endorsing me. I was giving a premonition. 
what you had been told by Ms. Hurd on the first two pages of these texts gave you concern about Mr. Depp's behavior and made you not love anything that he was engaging in behavior-wise around this time, right? What I had heard from her in, in these texts, I didn't really love where life was at the time. He was making Mordecai. Your Honor, I'd, I'd move for the admission of these two pages in their entirety for the reasons that we discussed, both as impeachment yeah. of the witness. All right. I, I, there are other statements in here that I do find as hearsay, so we can work with it. Um, I'm not, I'll reserve on that for this time, maybe, and we'll have uh, other other issues with it outside the presence of the jury, and we'll work on redactions. Okay. Can, that sounds good. Can I, um, can I ask her questions just about her language? Okay. And then we can work on redactions. Yeah. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Yes, sir. They have a dilemma here because they, the defense cannot admit well, Amber Heard's statements Honor, into or, this. Sorry. That would be the first here page, Mr. Dombrowski. Um, you write, where are the kids? Why did you write that? I don't Concern. know. I, I don't know. I mean, I remember that they asked me that at the deposition. I'm, I'm not sure. You wrote that because you had concerns about where Mr. Depp's kids were at this time, right? Well, if she was saying he wasn't home, I was asking where the kids were. Right. Because you were concerned for the kids' well-being, particularly when Mr. Depp was in this sort of state, correct? No, I was curious about where the kids were if he wasn't home. Were you ever concerned about the impact on the kids of Mr. Depp's drug use and alcohol use? No. No. Okay. So when you wrote, where are the kids, you had no concern for their actual well-being. <laughs> what a dick argumentative question. as fuck. Yeah. The concern, it was, it's not that kind of concern. She's saying he's not home. I was wondering where the kids were so that they weren't alone. Did you think they would be alone when you wrote Johnny her would abandon them <laughs> to, to crawl in the gutter? You want to come to office to talk. You wrote that because you were concerned about what was going on with Mr. Depp at that point, right? No, actually, I wrote that so that she could come to the office so that we could talk right. about all of it. All of what? Of, of her text. Your Honor, I'd, I'd ask for permission to publish the bottom text on page two that I think. It's not up here. You just made her text. Sorry. And I guess while she's pulling that up, I'd move for um, partial admission of exhibit 210 with redactions to be. I'm gonna, um, again, I'm going to reserve on that. Okay. okay. All right. That That's. All right. I'm still going to reserve on the admission of it, so I'm not going to show it to the jury at this time. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. But you can ask your questions about it. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. When you wrote Miss Heard on February 3rd, 2014 at 5.42 p.m., Ms. Dombrowski, worry about everything. What did you mean? I have no you idea. You were telling her to worry about everything and all the types of behavior that Mr. Depp was engaging in at that time, right? I was not politics. telling her to worry about anything. That's... The way I wrote that sounds like I say, I, you know, I worry about everything. You're saying that you're worrying about everything? Is that right? Yes, uh -oh. as a whole. Uh -oh. okay. So in contrast to what you testified a few things. minutes ago, you actually were very worried yep. uh -oh. around this is. time frame. Correct? I was worried about what life was. That's what I had said. And the life that you were referring to here. She said, remember going this text conversation. With Mr. Depp's mm. drug and alcohol abuse, correct? What was going on in life was uh, someone who constantly wanted to point mm. out some sort of drug and alcohol abuse. Is that unfair for a spouse not to want their husband to abuse drugs and alcohol? It's not unfair at all. So it, it, was that a negative to you that Ms. Heard didn't love that? I'm sorry? Was that a negative to you that Ms. Heard didn't love Mr. Depp's drug and alcohol abuse? That's what she claimed was true. I don't know if it's that true. unreasonable of her. Uh, uh, to me, it was exaggerated is the problem, so. It was exaggerated. She lies a lot. You she lies you all the time. 
have no personal knowledge yeah. of mm-hmm. your brother doing cocaine. I, I never saw him do it. No. You, okay. But, but you had enough concern to text him, stop doing coke, stop the pills and stop the drinking. Correct. No, I, I, I really don't think that's what I was doing with him. And well, what were you telling? You weren't talking about the Super Bowl, right? You, you were talking about drinking. I, I understand. Argumentative. I understand. Yes. But the way it's written, and I know my writing, the way it's written, I don't feel like what I was doing was me giving him an order to do that. I wouldn't typically do that. So recommending there's other context somewhere that, you know, for that. Right. And that's what we're trying to explore is what is that context? Because you're very direct in those texts that the jury just looked at. Stop the booze, stop the pills, stop the Coke. He's literally been on these three texts for 30 minutes. Stop the pills. And stop Jesus, the coke. Well, <laughs> it's going to go on forever. Until they object, let them do I, it. I could have yeah. been telling him. I mean, that. I would do it. I can't believe they haven't done <laughs> shit about it, man. Because I've had this conversation before, uh, I could have been telling him, you know, that in, in order to make her not constantly accusing, you know, this is what she would need. You didn't write those words in your text, though, right? No, I didn't. Okay. And when you said uh, in the February 3rd text message exchange with Miss Heard, I don't love any of it. I really want to be able to talk with him. That was you expressing concern about Mr. Depp's drinking and drug use, correct? No. That was me expressing concern about what life was. And it was, there was arguments all the time and it, it, was, it felt like there was just constant unpleasantness. Right, and would it be unfair let me ask it this way. That unpleasantness, to your knowledge, was caused in, in part, at least, by your brother's drug and alcohol abuse, right? No. I don't no, know. The that. unpleasantness came from that Did bitch you ever the fence table. Reach your own conclusion that your brother had a problem with drugs and alcohol? I knew my brother was drinking. Um, I'm but sorry. In, I, that's, I, I, I knew my I knew my brother was drinking. Um, but in terms of like drugs, I, I, you know, honestly, there was. I have only one medication that I really knew of that you know was an issue for him. And what was that? I don't remember the name of the medication. It was a prescription medication. Cocaine. What was the? What was it? <laughs> it was a, a, It was like a pain medicinal medication coke that he had been taking for a long time. And that was what you were referring to when you said stop pills was prescription pain medication, correct? Again, I wasn't necessarily referring to anything in particular. I know I wrote those words. I don't know the context of the words. Okay. But in any event, you, you, you don't dispute that on February 5th, 20, uh, 20, whatever date that was on February 5th, 2014, you wrote your brother, stop drinking, stop Coke, stop pills. Right. I I wrote those words, but I don't know the context of the words. Now, February, 2014, wasn't the first time that you had had communications with Ms. Heard relating to concerns about drug and alcohol abuse, right? by Mr. Depp, correct? I, I don't know. Um, Heather, if you could pull up exhibit 163, please. What, what's exhibit number, I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry, you're on 163. This guy's, I mean, he's pretty good on cross, but the prosecutor, or the plaintiffs are just letting him be good Yeah, on they're just cross. letting him just, <laughs> fuck. I said he was going to shred her. They have no reason to have any sympathy for this woman at all. Oh, She's no. not like a sympathetic victim in a case or whatever. So yep. you can get up and you can just tear her apart. Yeah. But she's, a, she's been fairly intelligent well, in the way she's been while she's pulling that up, with Dombrowski, uh, Let me ask you this. You, you knew that Mr. Depp's drug and alcohol problem was affecting his relationship with Miss Heard, right? 
Answer carefully. He's going to nail you with another text. I knew that she would say that. I mean, I knew that she would say that she had issues with, you know, him with drugs and alcohol. And, and, and you knew from those communications that it was negatively impacting their relationship, right? Um, I know she says that. I knew that she would, she would write me about them, you know, and I knew that she would, uh, I know that she would, uh, you know, try to, try to, you know, try to uh, talk about them, but, and I know that she would say that they were negatively impacting. I don't know that that was the whole um, situation that they had going on, to be honest, though. Well, you didn't disbelieve her when she told you that, right? When she told me. What you just testified to, that drinking and drugs were negatively impacting their relationship. You didn't disbelieve her, right? Oh, I, I, I didn't necessarily think it was true, no. You didn't think it was true that it was negatively impacting their just relationship. Just say she lied all the time. That's great. This this I guy's inviting you to just rip her character no. apart. Do it. Yeah, I know. Well, you just said true, and then hundred percent true. So true. I'm, I'm trying to try to figure out. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where you're going with this. Or, or is it your testimony today? That's part of the prep, though. They should have anticipated this and prepped her to be bashing time. Amber every opportunity. No, to be yes, up. taking it to an yeah. extreme. Well, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm sorry. If I only think it got her to answer. They knew these texts existed too. That's not your testimony. Yeah, remember the deposition. Yeah. Exaggerated things quite a bit. <clears throat> but you tried Just to say help. Say she's a Amber liar. Deal Just say it. With yes. Mr. Mm. Depp's drugs and drinking, yeah. correct? I tried. I, I tried to. Yes, uh, she's a liar. Sure she's no good. She's a liar who hit my brother. Fuck her. Yes. If you can look at the document in front of you, Exhibit One Sixty Three, please. Um, this is uh, a text exchange between you and Ms. Hurd on March 22nd, 2013, correct? Yes. And do you remember earlier you testified about um, uh, being present during the filming of a, of a documentary about Keith Richards? Yes. This was, this was right around that time frame, correct? Oh, well, he had to be on all the drugs. Do you recall when that was? I don't recall the dates. And, and actually, one thing I wanted to ask you about that while we're at it is you testified earlier about not seeing cuts or, 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 or bruises on her face. You remember that? Or do you, you don't, you, you have no knowledge whether she was wearing makeup or not that night, right? I don't, I don't recall if she was wearing makeup or not. She typically did not. Okay. And you weren't specifically looking for cuts or bruises because you suspected that Mr. Depp had abused her, right? Would you, you have to get I, out a I magnifying glass to, to see a cut or a bruise? But I would think if they were there, I would see them. Because okay. um, you would obviously see them. <laughs> it was a micro bruise. So if you look at page one, uh, exhibit 163, um, and Your Honor, I'd move for permission to publish. I'm going to sustain that objection. I figured you would. But okay. Can okay. I do the same thing and ask her about her words to Miss Heard, and then we can reserving the right to publish it to the jury. You can ask her if it refreshes her memory about right. the conversations you're trying to discuss. Sure. Yes. But, so, um, Miss Dombrowski, do you re recall having a conversation with Miss Heard on or about March 22nd, 2013, in which Miss Heard was expressing concerns to you about Mr. Depp's behavior? No, I, I don't recall dates, so no. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and take a look at this document? Why don't you go ahead Please. and go to hell? And let's just, let's start with... Um, take a look at D's. Just tell me when you're done with page one, please. Mm So for the chat, just in case you're confused, uh, generally speaking, I'm I'm leaning on Johnny Depp's side on this, but I'm gonna call out when, when oh, I yeah. think one attorney or the other are doing the right thing or the wrong thing. In this case, uh, I think the defense is going as far as they're gonna as they can go, 
And until the plaintiff steps in, plaintiff's attorney steps in and objects, I mean, there's nothing you can do. And if I were in the defense attorney's shoes, I would be lighting this, uh, torching mm -hmm. this witness as much as possible. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Nebraska, I think I think that's you you on the screen, which is okay if you want to mark it out. We can clear it up. We got it. Yeah, and for those people oh, in chat sorry. who are oh, okay. saying he's doing being scummy, okay. man, his job is to come out here and assassinate this woman, and he's doing his job. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's putting in that work. Yeah, yeah it. it's okay. not about the so, it's not um, about the facts. It's about the presentation when, when of you, facts. When you texted Miss Heard, well, first of all, does this refresh your recollection about uh, a conversation that you and Miss Heard had on March twenty second, twenty thirteen, relating to Miss Heard's concerns about Mr. Depp's behavior? It, it, it really doesn't, but I I see it here. It and, but you don't dispute that it is a conversation that the two of you had. This is a text exchange between the two of us, yes. Okay. When you wrote, don't be sorry, exclamation point, I am not completely sure if what is going on or why, but I don't love what it is. What did you mean by that? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I believe I probably meant. I said I don't know what's again, going on. You know, uh, how life was. Right. Life, including Mr. Depp's conduct toward my client, Amber Heard, right? No. Yeah. Okay. And when you wrote, it is sad and I'm sorry you guys are going through this. I'm here if there's anything I can do. You were talking about the chat. You were sad that they were going through the challenges that drugs and alcohol on behalf of Mr. Depp were posing to their relationship. Correct? <laughs> I'll allow it if she can answer. I, I don't think that I'm saying that I'm sad about that. I'm, I'm saying that I'm sad you know, about whatever it is that, you know, that they're going through, but I don't know exactly what it is that they're going through. Yeah, I and specifically right say, I don't know what it is that, in the text. Please stop misrepresenting through, right? it. Objection to the characterization of the evidence. She, she does go into uh, about, yeah, what okay. they have going on. And then below that, you say, I think with anyone in that place, confrontation unfortunately doesn't help. And sometimes conversations can seem like confrontations. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Were you suggesting to Miss Heard that she shouldn't have a conversation with Mr. Depp about what drugs and alcohol did to him because it could seem like a confrontation? No, no, I was not suggesting that at all. Um, what did you mean by it? Honestly, what I was trying to do um, is trying to uh, Amber, Miss Heard, um, she she could be very very vocal and so what i was trying to do was if they were having a conversation if it wasn't going well i was trying to tell her that you know maybe you know sometimes conversations if you're vocal really loud they're more confrontational like just to whatever it is just have <laughs> so, a nice so that, i was telling her to calm okay, down well, let's just go to the i just want to look at one more text on the top of the next page Heather, please um when you write Miss Heard on March 22nd, 2013, you say disagreeing, reasoning, nudging, all can seem like confrontations. I am not sure of the volume or when some is likely to wear off, question mark. Mm -hmm. First of all, when you were talking about volume or when some is likely to wear off, you're talking about drugs or alcohol, correct? No. She said in the text prior, right? Yeah. I'm asking what. No, I, I understand. I'll sustain the objection. And I'm asking what you're you're referring to, without referring to Miss Hurd's text prior. When you say I'm not sure of the volume or when some is likely to wear off, what are you referring to? I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. Is that, you know, she had all kinds of things that she said in the text prior. I'm referring to like volume of you know, even just voices, you know, that even you can see where I say, like, you know, the nudging and all of that, but, you know, there was a certain way that you learned to try to talk with Amber to keep things calm. And when you just say it, when just you said say it, what you want to say, just yeah. say she flies yeah. up so a handle. She's a lunatic. Bitch. Yeah. Miss, Mr. Two, that's fine. She's Thank an emotional you. I IED. It. I understand. I'll, I'll let her finish her, finish her answer. That's fine, Mr. Two. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a certain way that, you know, ultimately we, 
you learn to talk to Amber, you know, to sort of keep things calm. So you, you would pacify her. You would sort of, you know, uh, uh, just go along with all of her conversations, whatever. So that oh, you're, redirect you would would be play hilarious all the time to keep things calm. Tell That's me why you had to did. keep things calm and, with Amber Heard. And, and so when you said disagreeing, reasoning, nudging, all can seem like confrontations. Were you telling Ms. Heard that she shouldn't voice any concerns about her significant other's drug or alcohol abuse? Voice her voice any concerns to who? To him. That she shouldn't nudge him about it or try to reason with him about drug and alcohol abuse or his behavior? Is that what you were saying, that she shouldn't do that because it might seem like a confrontation? I say no. No, she was more confrontational. She was much more confrontational, always confrontational. And I was trying to say that all of these things can be confrontational and maybe maybe take it down a notch. Okay, so you shouldn't disagree or reason or nudge. Is that what you were saying? She asked and answered. No, in the, in the way that I know that it would be done. She was much more... Uh, he needs to be careful. This can go back. A, a, you know, there she wasn't a should rip Amber Heard apart. I'm He's sorry. giving yeah. her permission to do it. Were you done with your answer? I know, but he needs to be careful. I, I think so. Okay. Or do you believe that disagreeing with someone or trying to reason with them or nudging them justifies them getting abused? If the, pro if the plaintiff doesn't redirect and get her to call Amber a liar over uh, and over uh, again. It's the foundation. I'll sustain it. It's the foundation. It's an okay. utter fail. Do, do you have any... Um, have you ever disagreed with or reasoned with or nudged anyone in anything in your, Objection in your relevance, life? Objection relevance, your honor. Yeah. All right. I mean, she, she, these are the words that she wrote. I know. These are the words that she wrote to Objection, your honor. He's being an argumentative and prick and it's obvious. Like <laughs> uh, yes. Hello, question. Thank you. I'm sorry. Have you ever disagreed or reasoned or nudged with someone in your life? Just you. Yes. Okay. D do you believe that doing Just any of those of three, three things would justify your being abused? This is ridiculous. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, how much more do you have? Probably. A little bit. Well, I wanted to say okay. abused so more times if possible. All right. About an hour. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what, what, since it's five o'clock, we'll, we're going to go ahead and uh, release you for the day. Okay, just a reminder, as as always, he's got an hour of this left. Research, by the way. don't oh. do. Yeah, well, that's because he spent an extra forty five yeah. minutes on, on three text messages. Watch anything on TV. Yeah. Don't read the papers. And do uh, and at and least the the pro have a plaintiff's good, attorney calm, peaceful night. Okay, and we'll see you tomorrow. To right here, okay? there Thank at the you. end. Ooh, man. I like that this is a judge with her eye on the clock. Yeah, yeah, me too. They don't. Uh, they don't have case on Friday either, right? It's just Monday through Thursday. Wait, really? Yeah, really I think that's what it, Let me let me look at that. Uh, I, I think that's what it said. Let me look at that. Uh, hmm. Oh, that would that, be fantastic. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what the fuck that said. Just give me a minute. I have to pull it up. All right, Miss. Dombrowski, yep. just a reminder that you are still under oath and you're still testifying. So since you're still testifying, you can't have any discussions with anybody to include uh, Mr. Depp's attorneys or his legal team, okay? okay? All right, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. All right, if you could leave the courtroom, I just have a few and housekeeping that, matters. That I includes take care. Mr. Depp as well, correct? Correct, and Mr. Depp. Yes, anybody, okay? Thank just don't talk about your testimony to anybody, okay? No, no, Johnny right, Depp has new rules. Hopefully, she just the, uh, courtroom. I just, just have a few housekeeping matters I want to take care of. <laughs> yeah, it's Monday through Thursday. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's great. Is that every week or just Easter week? It says on the, the you know, that pool feed thing that I showed you? It says mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard civil trial will start 10 a.m. each day and run Monday through Thursday. Amazing. There you go. Yeah. Mm. Boom, boom. I like that. I like Friday off. Hell to the year. That'll be nice. You can sit down. It's okay. Well, yeah, it's also Good Friday. If you want to stand up? That's fine. I just Friday too. So Seriously. yeah, but if it's if it's every week, no Friday. Yeah, well, let me that would be this great. One issue first, oh, okay? That cross lasted so long. Um, the judge right, almost going back to the text. So on, on 163, head. are you still trying <laughs> to admit that into evidence? That was the last one. All right. There's an objection to to yes. that. Okay. Good. All right. Yes, sir. Um, anything further to say on 163? Well, I, I think. Um, yeah, yes, two things at a minimum.
Ms. Dombrowski's specs should be able to come in because those aren't hearsay. Even if we have to redact out right. all of Ms. Ms. Hurd's specs, which if, if that's what you're on the means, we can. The, the problem is, and the reason I think it's not hearsay is that it's impeachment under 607A7. I understand your impeachment issue, and, and I and I understand that, and that we'll go back to 210, and I think there's you an can't issue impeach with impeachment there. Some but here I don't see with any impeachment basis Hurd's text. to add the extrinsic evidence in. You got the testimony in, but I don't see a basis to have the extrinsic evidence in. And I would still ask the. the um, I don't get so hard about this. It's got to get redacted. They want her. They don't want. They want them unredacted. And, I know, but <laughs> it's not coming in. Since they don't have the context, I'm, I'm not going to allow them in. So I'm going to deny, uh, I'm going to sustain the objection to 163. As far as 210, the um, the only impeachment basis was when she testified that she didn't recall anything about a bender or him being on a bender. So I think for impeachment pur purposes, just the only part that comes in is the, um, as far as Ms. Hurd's text is um, the uh, JD is on a bender and not even the last part of the let, let, that's it. Okay. Everything else would have to be redacted. Redacted. I'm going to allow that. Just that one part. That one part of everything else gets redacted. As far as her text, Ms. Dombrowski's text can come in. Except you have to get rid of her identifying information as far as her phone number. Okay. That's it. Okay. I understand. Okay. All right. That's fine. Noted. Thank you. That's exactly right. Not the last two words and not the sentence above it and not the, any of the sentences below it or any of the other texts, but Ms. Dombrowski's texts come in, but you get it. Just take out her, her phone number for me. They okay. Can get these texts so if you can give me, you over that, I'll, I'll, I'll allow the redacted one into evidence. Um, and you can owe that to me tomorrow. Okay. And you also owe me two fourteen tomorrow too, correct? Yes, uh, one, on that one, um, can we, if we get the last two columns, if we redact the personal identifiers, can we then show the other course, co columns that correspond to the text? That, that, as long as the personal identifiers were what was what the objection was. So if you could do that for just the four. Yes, yes, sir. And get rid of the others. Okay. All right. All right. That's all I had. Yes, ma'am. You had something. Okay. Approach. What do you got to approach for? There's no jury in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, oh God, that woman's crazy. Yeah, she is. She rehabilitates squirrels. The uh, the the plaintiffs really need uh, to be very protective of their witnesses. Th that should be obvious from day one here in this first witness being uh, testifying. The defense is clearly willing to go into them to to lay into them. And I mean, that's that's their job. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's up to the plaintiff's attorney to protect them from that happening and to protect them from getting their words twisted. This guy was able to ask her the same questions about those texts about 50 times and get some slightly different answers on it. Then he moves on and asks about some different texts about 50 times to get some slightly different answers mm -hmm. about what was going on. And you, it's, it's what you do because people, when they're asked the same question, they get uncomfortable answering the exact same way every time. So you, you, you stick yeah, your crowbar is, shim in the doorway and you start just wiggling. Yeah. That's what that question is. It's all about witness prep, though. There's so much time that needs to be invested into getting your witness prepared for the questions that you can reasonably anticipate are going to come and how they're going to handle them. And especially this whole thing, you knew these questions came up at that position. You knew that it's something they're going to try and, equip and, and equate drug use with physical abuse. And accordingly, when, when you know these questions about these texts are coming, it's very easy to just say, I was relying on what Amber told me, but mm -hmm. she's a big fat liar and she lies all the time and she's great at it. Yep. She's an actress. So how yep. am I supposed to know what truth is? I didn't see it myself. I was just responding to the lie she told me to try and protect my brother. Boom. End the story. You doesn't, it doesn't hurt Johnny and it crushes the Amber. And those, that line of questioning goes out the window. He stops well, that question. Yeah. It gets that, 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 oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, even on direct, 
when they started talking about, well, you're in charge of whatever the Nile company or whatever it's called. She didn't just come out and say, yeah, we quit getting, there were no more scripts coming in. There were no more letters, no more phone calls. Once this article hit, he was dead. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't even come. That was a chance to say, yes, we sustained damages. Here's what happened. His career literally died instantly. She couldn't even do that. And I don't know how that wasn't prepped either. That, and that's it's, it's and that's bad. basic. And you're actually hitting on something important here, Sean, because mm-hmm. that's and that's an essential part of her testimony. They were looking to elicit from her. Mm-hmm. So you would think that that's the first. That's one of the first things they would talk about. Sort of give a, a bullet point of this is what I want to get from you as a as a witness, mm-hmm. and that and that this is how we're going to you know basically address this so that everyone makes it clear that you know you have this understand you have this background you have a proper foundation for why you know this information you don't need to have it's not, it doesn't even matter what the hell johnny tells you with respect to oh the roles aren't coming in i work here i see that we have nothing i mean if you yeah. look what's what's going on it's that everything died he was just in 2018 the dude was in he's in jk rowling's thing with the you know, magical beasts and the uh, fantastic beasts and the next thing you know he's yanked from that the whole franchise dies and yeah, that's all as a result of this. And it's, and she has access to that information without Johnny, without hearsay, without anyone telling her these words. Yep, I agree. Uh, but the problem the problem that they have now is that prep time's over and they can't talk to her. Yeah, it's too late. Uh, they really, uh, she, needs to, she needs to be given permission, I don't know where it comes from, to lay into Amber Heard on the yes, hour yeah. of cross-examination she's going to endure tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what has to happen. She has mm-hmm. the, this guy, uh, well, Joe, you said it. Two hours also. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But y- you said it, Joe. You, you said the line of questioning stops immediately. If she starts shredding Amber Heard, that attorney is going to back off those questions real quick. But just stop. She's She's playing diplomat and she's trying to, well, I don't want to do this. No. She lied to me all the time. I couldn't mm-hmm. trust anything she said. In fact, I'm pretty sure she's never told a true statement. I'm not sure if they're actually married because I don't believe her vows. I don't believe anything this woman has <laughs> yes. ever said in her entire life. Her, her entire yes. character is one of falsehoods. Mm-hmm. Yes, and anytime, to... yeah, and anytime Johnny's been on a bender, I assume she's been right there with him. You know, well, you, you know, definitely throw should, nicety out the window. Go for it, yeah. And simply say, you know, when she says Johnny was on a bender, what I actually assume is that she was drinking and got mad at him and came up with an excuse. Yeah, yeah because uh, that's what she does. She lies all the time. That's what well, she. Yeah. Did. You know, she and was then, trying. She was, I'm sorry. Go okay. ahead. No, I was going to say she's saying that, but she's saying it too nicely. She's trying to choose her words. Just fucking unload. Yeah. You know, she smells yeah. like scotch every morning. Just say it. Well, I mean, scotch there's not a job carpet. she's protecting. She works for <laughs> Je- she, she works for Johnny Depp. So. <laughs> Who's going to fucking, nobody's going to punish her for saying she's a nasty bitch and she ruins yeah. everything she's around. And, nor- and normally you couldn't do any of this, but that defense attorney gave her permission because mm-hmm. he's the guy asking the questions. If mm-hmm. the plaintiff it comes up and says, do you trust Amber Heard? Does she have a character for truthfulness? <laughs> like immediately yeah. you're, you, okay. you get objected. But if the defense attorney, what's he going to do? Object to his own question? I, mm-hmm. I object to her answer, Your Honor. You asked her <laughs> why she would think yeah. this, and yeah. she told you because she doesn't believe your client. It was your fault for asking that question. What's, Don't ask what, dumb questions. What's the basis of your objection? Well, it's burying my client. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your basis? I fucked up. She said my client's a liar. Yeah. <laughs> why would you say that, ma'am? Because she is. <laughs> Let that play it's out all day. Heard. Uh, but no, I, I agree with you, Joe. It, it, it is in witness prep and now it's like, but ma- it, the other part of that though, is maybe they did prep her really well. And she has one of those, uh, equivocating personalities. If she's a people pleaser, the diplomat personality type, whatever, she may just be unable to directly confront something like that. And I mean, the way she describes how she talks in her text messages, I'm not that far from believing that that's the case. I mean, if she is, like, then how does she, if she's like her brother's like fixer and helps him n- negotiate things, I don't understand like how he's not taken to the cleaners all the time because she made it sound like part of her job was to be his front man and be that person that deals with the movie companies. And obviously there's attorneys involved, but it sounds like that was part of her job. 
Yeah. So it's, so it's kind of it, weird. Really weird. Well, uh, yeah. Somebody did embezzle $650 million from him. So. Oh, well, oh, oh. Ooh. Yeah. I, I get who, it. I'm not knows? saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm not saying she did anything right or wrong. But yeah, I mean, if it, you know, <laughs> who better? But it it really depends on how, like, what her involvement is in those negotiations too, because maybe she's there to manage and mitigate the personalities involved. One of them being Johnny, whereas they'll have the they'll have a hard negotiator come in to to work out particulars and and hammer those out. Maybe she's the one who has to placate her brother. Or maybe she's the one who has to placate other actors or actresses that may be involved in a shoot. So it's uh it's tough to tell, but it seems like there's it seems like there's a lot more potential for this witness that is that is being left on the table. And it's either due to to poor prep or the witness's personality or some combination thereof. But uh but yeah, I think but I think overall, like at the end of the day the testimonies about his drug use has nothing to do. He tried to tie it in. Right. And they really should have objected a lot harder to this, but is it because, because he's beating my client, he basically said, right? Like you're concerned yeah. because his drug and alcohol use makes him abuse my client. Like that should have been objected to. Uh, and the second time he said it, it should have been objected to again. And then the court could have given him a nice little warning about doing stuff like that. Cause yeah. that's the shit you cannot do on questions. Mm -hmm. so, yeah when you crossed the road that day was it because you were contemplating beating your wife when you got home <laughs> because like you it's, can't, yeah, essentially you can't you're testifying that. through your question yep you, you cannot ask that in that way um okay i have myriad super chats to go through mm -hmm. uh from the stream and you all are welcome to stay. But if any of you need to go, go ahead and uh, let me know. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to drop hey, out. What time um, do they start tomorrow morning? Do you know? 10. Uh, it's 10, 10, oh. 10 a.m. Eastern. Mm. So 9 a.m. Central. Oh, nice. So yeah, you anyway, said you got to go, gonna, Tug? Yeah, I'm going to drop out. I will catch you, I guess, nice. tomorrow. We'll, you guys we'll continue this fun. That umbrella guy. Check out his channel. Sub mm -hmm. up to him. The dude... Is check out his Twitter. Just, yeah, and check, check out, out his, his comic yeah. book. Bam! There, I there plugged it like a Ricardo. Right. You're over 115k though, by the way. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. That's that's awesome, man. 30 days. That's pretty fucking good, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. But yeah, man. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. All right, peace, brother. All right. And by the way, everybody who's on the show today, even if they just popped in for a minute, all of their channel links are already in the description. So go ahead and click on uh, people's names and you can check out what they do. Uh, and that is uh, that is something we encourage around these parts. With that said, we've got a couple I'm going to uh, bust also, Nick. I got like stuff I got to take care of. But, yeah, get um, out of here. Yeah. Joe. All right, you, peace, Joe. brother. Good seeing you, Sean. Bye. See you too. Uh, Mike, the dad Crosby says, unless the house is now doing away with time zones as well, it's only three twenty here in the central time zone. Uh, I said, I said at four twenty blaze up because it was on the, the court clock, which is actually a minute ahead. Still, but it was on the court clock at four twenty. Rick Nikita says this six week trial isn't an excuse to skip live chat Wednesday. Oh, oh, oh I've got news for you, buddy. Lancelot six, five, two Hollywood star using drugs. I'm shocked. And I doubt anyone else is shocked. Uh, Jackson Kai says, can't you object that the witness already answered? They don't remember. Yes. I swear I've seen that in other trials we watched. Also, his sister needs to just say Amber Heard is crazy and lies every time she opens her mouth. Yeah, the, the objection is asked and answered, and it is a common objection, and they could do it. I think the, the big problem with the objection was that the witness kept answering the question in a slightly different way, allowing the uh, defense attorney to go back and answer the or and re ask the question uh, with a little tweak that made it slightly different based on her responses. In, an objection would have still stopped it, but that's that's why he kept going back to those three text messages because every time he did, she said something a little bit different, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's part of the discomfort that normal people have when being witnesses. They don't want to answer the same way twice in a row because it feels weird but they should answer the exact same way if they're asked the same question make it ab as absurd as it can be but it's hard to do uh with that i need to go back to 
El Gonzo. 1000 says three day blackout. How fucking retarded does he think the jury is? <laughs> very, very. And Wolf V says, I hope that after this trial, Johnny wants to come on your show and tell you his opinion of your coverage. <laughs> that, would, that would, he would be welcome to it. I, I would love it if people would come on and tell me I did a terrible job covering their case or whatever. That'd be, that'd be great. Uh, Kay Valentine says, Hey, Nick, I've been covering the situation myself since the start. And I appreciate these streams for when I can't do them due to work. Thanks for all you do. Hoping to hit 2000 myself one day. Uh, so Good that's luck. K K Valentine, C A E Valentine. Uh, give, give her a check out. If she's been covering the Johnny Depp situation, you might be able to get some information about some stuff over there. And that was in British pounds. So she may have some insight into the UK case as well. If you're interested in how that kind of played out, uh, give it a shot. Speaking of 2000 subscribers, you broke 2000 subscribers, man. Oh, I did. I didn't check yet, but well, oh, I saw awesome. it. I saw it when I was tagging you. I was like, yeah, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, well, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so glad to have that guys. Make sure you check, check out potentially criminal. He does uh, similar stuff. Trial commentary typically from a criminal defense attorney perspective. And uh, yeah. so far I like him. He's pretty funny. Thanks. Thanks. You try. You can always, yeah. if, you know, if that ever changes, I will drop you immediately. <laughs> well, if you ask my girlfriend, it's already happened. So <laughs> uh, Chris and Yachty says, Hey, Nick just got married to the love of my life. One child already and many more to come. Cheers, mate. Hey, congrats, buddy. Go get it. Uh, Red Fox Moon says hammers are big gay in Elden Ring and level vigor puss. No, screw you. NGE fan 76 as a Virginian. The only good thing Democrats in Virginia did was they freed the titty after a prude GOP attorney general tried to make Lady Liberty cover up. <laughs> Very good. K. Shiloh Williams, female judge, good or bad in this sort of case. I'm not here to make assumptions about the judge. But I kind of feel like but... if I handed her an axe, I would no longer have woods on my property. Like, I think flannel would be worn, some suspenders, and I think mm. all the trees would be felled in a mm. in a short order. That's so all I'm saying. saying. She, so you're saying she'd buy out your Subaru lease? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, as far as if she's uh, good or bad in this sort of case, this judge has um, has ha given some very good indications for Johnny Depp, saying she doesn't believe he got a fair trial in the UK case shutting down uh, the crazy lady who is the second to do um, her opening statements. Now she didn't do that today, but that was in pretrial stuff kind of shut her nonsense down. She sustained a, a very important objection during that opening statement with where she was trying to go. That was good indications. Um, she handled some of the objections in a way that I would prefer. She handled them otherwise uh, during the trial, but that doesn't necessarily indicate a bias one way or another. Um, it, some judges just, don't care about objections that much and have their own ways of dealing with them. So it, it all depends in this case uh, so far I'm, I'm neutral on her. I think, I think she's doing fine. Um, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's going to be up to the plaintiff's attorneys to properly start objecting. And they did more at the end, which I think was good. So uh, UNSCF forward unto Dawn says the, Terrorist who murdered Sir David Ames MP was found guilty at the London Old Bailey the other day. The jury took just 18 minutes to reach a guilty verdict. Cool. Jo I don't know what that case is, though. Jonathan uh, Mathai uh, says, hey, first time chat. Hey, thank you, Jonathan. I don't know too much about your setup, but it, uh, but I'd work in the Loud Max VST if you can. Oh, that's uh, through OBS. Now, unfortunately, we've got uh, StreamYard, which is really handy for sharing video with guests and the chat at the same time. Um, but they have just trash audio stuff. Uh, Four Dorgy More Corgi says, did you see the DA called the OnlyFans model stabbing self-defense? It's Florida. Uh, you you really just have to reasonably, uh, at all, plausibly assert self-defense. And then the DA has the object to overcome that self-defense assertion by by beyond a reasonable doubt standard, which is really tough. Got to work with what you got. 
and it's uh it was literally no witnesses to it he said she said and there's there's some testimony out there that he may have had a history of beating her now there's testimony she may have had a history of beating him and if the relationship is mutually volatile like that very possible she got into a self-defense situation so um and and it's going to be hard to disprove it so yeah probably uh the thought wins Good job. Bipolar God of Science Fiction says, I can hear it just fine. Todd Baker says, Nick, I know someone who is going on trial soon in Minnesota. I won't be able to see or be able to be at the trial. Is there a way I'll be able to find the verdict in public records all after the trial? If so, how? Thanks, man. Okay, go to uh, just Google. I don't remember the exact website. So just Google Minnesota courts and then uh, it'll bring you to the judicial branch. And then you can, um, there's uh, like cases tab and you click on that and then you can search online uh the online filing system they recently updated it to actually give you access to documents online and rather than just at a courthouse thank you covid for doing a couple good things and um so that's one of them so that's how you do it mm -hmm. check it out on there and you, you should be able to follow good luck to your friend uh, da, 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 da. the the bipolar God of science fiction says, guys, it's fine, loud and clear. Scott Christie Jones says, life lesson, never put your manhood in crazy. Ashley Harrison, thank you for the donation. Bipolar God of science fiction says, hashtag me turd. <laughs> uh, Boo Delicious says, may the Lord grant the jury the strength to patrol these thoughts. <laughs> Philip Brevard says, she's a cyclone. Jamie Moodley. She has to be the best lay that Depp ever had. No other reason to stay with her. Hey, Tug. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. She must be a demon in the sack. Because, I mean, she was with Elon Musk, too. Very weird stuff going on. Jamie Moodley. Wait, read that one. Michael Gammon. Amber Heard is Hollywood's trailer park whore. Lol. Wow. <laughs> Ashley Harrison says, peep the Dior tie. They have supported him. Uh, SM. Also, guys, I love you and Tug. Just want to support. I am sorry for saying shut up. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> no worries, Ashley. I I just I have the same spiel anytime someone does it, and I like to do it with flair. Uh, okay, so that's a Christian Dior tie. I I don't know how to identify those things. I like the tie though; it was good. Yasu W uh, R W Yoshi says, "My public defender mentor, a judge now." Never read any script and kicked ass. Juries loved him for his freestyle humor mixed with law. This what the fuck amateur hour. Yeah, the uh, did you see that in opening arguments, Sean? Early when the uh, yes. defense attorney had the paper. Yeah, and it's well, I she was holding it, but she didn't reference it as much as the first girl on uh, from the plaintiff side. Where she no, that's what I was talking about. The yeah, plaintiff. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You, if you got notes, just go up to the lectern and go from there. It just doesn't look good that way. Yeah. It's, it, it's just weird to stand in front of them and then look, it looks like a high schooler, you know, like yeah. reading their paper in speech class for the first time is weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't, didn't like it. Uh, Ryu D says, if we can't define women, what are women's rights? Good question. Hunter Biden's crack pipe says the evidence is going to show the evidence will show. Uh, Evie Warner says, is her mic breaded or unbreaded? Uh, it was breaded today. May H says, feel sorry for the jury. This lady is putting me to sleep. Wolfram, Amber Heard is sitting there crafting her next victim narrative. The lawyers are attacking me. Whee! Uh, Hike Craze says, just wow on the difference in body language. Soundwave TM, why are there two plaintiffs? Uh, two plaintiffs lawyers because there's a suit and a counter suit. So same reason they got two defense lawyers. I I would guess. I've I've never personally seen the the handoff on opening statements like that, but it looked it seemed like it was for each case separately. It's kind of weird. Uh Mediocre Didge says Andrew Branca present for a domestic abuse case. Take that tie off and give us some more Branca burns. Uh Conass says I hope the uh, Conass can ask con ass i hope the only choice she has career wise is to go into hardcore movies of the scatological kind <laughs> she has scatological experience from what i hear 
Carlos Estrada, I love my cell phone case. I guess that makes me garbage. Yes. I hate putting my phone in my pocket, so I use a case with a holster breaded. Oh, the you got the holster. That's like, yeah, that's like the 52-year-old meth dealer move is to have the phone yeah. clipped onto your hip, like <laughs> spinning it around, be like, what's up? My name is Alex. <laughs> uh, have fun with that, Carlos. Not my thing. Graham Badley says, hi, Nick. This trial reminds me of how Hollywood sucks and we deserve better entertainment. If people need base book recommendations and sci-fi fantasy, send them to upstreamreviews.com. Hail the nose. Thank you. Mr. Obvious, how's it going, man? He says, if they're going with the free speech defense, she's 100% going to lose. Courts don't give a shit about free speech in America. Lamau. Kanas says, death well. is... Well, well. Go ahead. I, go say, ahead. I don't think that's, that's going to sell well with the jury. I mean, they're going to say, yeah, free speech, but you can't shit talk a guy like she did. Yeah, the, I mean, the interesting thing, I, I will say, courts actually care a lot about free speech. They do. Juries don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's, I think, the the real issue there. Um, and uh, their free speech arguments have failed so far when they're in their attempted anti slap. And I'm sure there will be an appeal um, if Johnny Depp wins. That'll include a heavy and robust free speech argument. Uh, but we'll see. It, yeah. it, it, it has not worked for them yet. Yeah. Charlie Charlie Whiskey says David Ames was a British member of parliament stabbed to death by a radical, peaceful religionist while meeting constituents, I believe, mm -hmm. at a church. Yes. <laughs> okay. Radical, peaceful religionist stabs a man to death. That sounds good. Uh, oh, wait. I think that I know what you mean by radical, peaceful religionist. Yes. Uh, yes. I see. It was a butcher knife of peace. Uh Kanaya says, Depp is a doddering old man trying to still be cool. Uh, Nightingale, OG, says, Amber Heard should be criminally charged for false sexual assault claims to Johnny Depp. Uh, Emily, Emily, Emily Ann Bashara says, when will Amber realize she lost? Well, that would have to come after the uh, jury comes back and hopefully decides for Johnny Depp's favor for that outcome rpg or 90 i started a diet up and have lost 15 pounds so far if you did the same you wouldn't have needed to go buy a bunch of suits and get embarrassed by being a forgetful idiot <laughs> it's, it's true these are true facts um airhead 151 versus 151 says got auto sub to law and cucks i know i didn't do it because i don't want them to claim the body cams they're posting uh fastest on sub uh, thank you. Thank you, Airhead, for that. Uh, May H says, did he just admit the article was about Depp? He did. It's a very interesting approach on opening statement. Drexkin says, is this a courtroom or a women's studies class? Are they seriously going with the whim and be oppressed argument? Yes. Kanaz says, I wish they could bottle celebrity suffering. I hate everyone in Hollywood Babylon. Uh... Someone without a name says, are they allowed to talk about how he lost the case in the UK? No, no, that would be extremely prejudicial. It would have no bearing on his claims against Amber Heard. It, it's also different standards of proof, different. It's an entirely different legal system. It's like trying yep. to introduce something from like, I don't know, Ghana or Namibia. Congo. Yeah. Namibia. Chrysan says Nigeria. in Kermit voice. Uh, hello, short bus. I found your missing passenger named Jesse Lee, advisor for communications to the National Economic Council at Jesse Lee 46. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, Incarnation Art says Jason Momoa should walk into the court with a trident, throw it at Amber, and spit water on the council's table. Uriah Wright says, What's up, Nick, Tug, man, and chat? Thank you. Southern Take says, Tug, can you drop the link to your comic? I can't find it. So glad to see you covering this from Middle Tennessee. We we have dropped it in the chat a couple times there. Rooster Cogburn says, hashtag me too, George Floyd. Can you repeat that? Breonna Taylor, mostly peaceful mud falcon. Why is the rum gone if Obama had a son? Satan the Sir Gaming in something says, the defense saying she didn't want to do it sounds a lot like, why did you make me hit you? Yep. Mr. E says, response to anything Amber Heard's lawyer says, she dropped a turd on my pillow. 
Pinkalo, the driving ape. JFC, can we get a pirate pun counter? That's like three already. Uh, Brittany Welsh says, thank you for doing this for us. She's nuts. Oh, man, it's going to be an endeavor. Six weeks. Mr. Insanity, as a dummy to trials, do Depp's team get a rebuttal statement to this dog water once the defense is done? No. Opening statements are just plaintiff, then defense. Closing statements will be plaintiff, defense, plaintiff, rebuttal. Uh, Adam Wofford says, if you all notice, Johnny is studying her, thinking she probably the next actor, he, nest, best actor he's ever seen, thinking how he'd play this type of character. Oh, with the, uh, yeah, with the crazy uh, opening argument lawyer. Uh, dedicated says she had that cycle in her in her or psycho in her I don't know monkey machine says this sounds like Amber gave her lawyers a script to her biopic uh, also how is Johnny so poor but affords hundred thousand dollar doctors well he's not poor just a bunch of his money evaporated yeah CP Scott says Al-Anon is the addiction to the addicted in trying uh, to control. So yes, I, I did not realize that there was a, a program for people who are in a relationship with addicts. So that was neat. Mm. Julie Wilson says, you guys are cracking me up. Thank you. Joshua Frost. If I was a juror and you open by going all the way back to childhood to make her look like a victim, my immediate feeling is your case must be shit. Michelle Higgins, thank you for the donation. Austin Olson, interesting how Depp has dates of all the instances of abuse, whereas Heard only has instances or many times of abuse. Hunter Biden's crack pipe says, in Bill Clinton voice, mm, I spy with my little eyes some uh, cankles and a blue dress. <laughs> no, no, no. Mo says, geez, the talkative neighbor comment was on point. K-Rab, Amber isn't a good enough actress to keep up the poor me face for six weeks. Uh, the Scott 16. So her friend, the makeup artist, did the best makeup on her so she could do that show. wonder if that makeup artist in Hollywood is good enough to fake a bruise. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, as Tug said, the, the makeup artist will actually testify that she was not bruised or cut. Uh, it, it's a different person who would actually testify that she was bruised or cut, who is not the makeup person who allegedly would have covered up her horrific uh, injuries. Demonic Nut Gaming says, this sounds like the Ike and Tina relationship, word for word. Plump Lettuce, this is a simple case of free speech. Proceed with verbal diarrhea for the next hour and not mention free speech even once. Daydream says, is she a lower? If she is, her cases may need to be rechecked. Like a lower receiver. Joshua Frost says, lawyer is the storyteller we all avoid at parties. <laughs> Snuggle struggle. Poop phobic. Amber is a real woman. She holds it all in. Such remedial tasks are beneath her. Uh, Dragskin says, if I was on the jury, I would have zoned out five minutes into her run-on uh, narration of the entire marriage. Sorry, did I cut you off there? No, no, no. I was laughing. Sorry. Okay. No, you're fine. Uh... 200 Watt Studio says lawyer Karen opening statement lasts five weeks. Cormoran, we're moments away from her telling us she wore an onion on her belt because that was the style at the time. <laughs> May H, breathe, lady, air is necessary. Vodka Hayes, this Karen has been speaking for over 35 minutes, and yet it feels like we've barely made any progress. Michelle Higgins, make her stop. WTF, leave something for testimony. No, she was testifying from the from the opening argument. That was That was the whole thing. Naomi Hillman says, everyone knows you cannot cover up a bruise with makeup. No matter how expensive the makeup is, you can still see some type of bruise on the face. Turner Watt Studio says, lawyer Karen talked on speaker all day in Waco before Koresh lit it on fire. Nicola saying, opening statement, not responding, restart device. Time Walker Terragor, I would rather French kiss a 45 than listen to her. My wall has holes now from listening to her. Damn. Uh, Terwathian says Amber is the new Karen Flufferboy 2004 this lady sounds less coherent than Nancy Pelosi explaining Obamacare Philip Booty says Johnny's lawyers should have someone smacked in the face and get Amber Heard apply concealer and watch the swelling disappear from one Adam 2024 says since 
she brought up Adam. Can he now testify? Uh, Adam Wallman? Maybe. He might be called in as a witness. Nalen says, uh, maybe I am wired differently, but I would be impatient hearing what evidence you are going to show me later. Just show me the evidence. Well, yeah, but at the same time, they can't show you the evidence because mm -hmm. that's opening statement is not where you do that. Mm -hmm. 200 Watt Studio says, when will the autograph signing start today? Bobby Q, I'm just curious when you get babbling like Amber's lawyers, don't juries just start tuning you out? Sometimes, yeah, that's a risk. It's a real risk. I mean, I couldn't follow that lady at all. I stopped caring early into her uh, discussion. Kiwi goes live, says, hey there, Nick and Tug. Wick Dipper, Amber's lawyer, maybe a member of the Church of Gale. Could be. Shadow Knight says, catching up, Branca's point that Amber looks like a venomous snake is probably just those awful cheek implants of hers looking like venomous sacks. Uh, Darius Harvey says the sound is fine. Evie Warner, can Depp make a case for this being part of a pattern to ruin his reputation? Um, not this lawsuit, no. Uh, one, he brought the lawsuit, so that doesn't really work. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what, what else this would be. Coffee Girl says, Emily's stream just got taken out by law and crime right in the middle of her stream. 25-year-old grandpa incel says women need to be held accountable. Daphne Landsboro, thank you for the sticker. Another other man says, Risk of Rain 2 engineer, shroom build master race. Oh, good build. 25-year-old grandpa incel, hold women accountable, stop simping. Kit says, my money is on at least one perjury or a similar, similar trial coming off this, off Amber's side. I would, I would say very unlikely. Yeah. But perjury charges just don't often happen from court because they... They really want people to come in and mm -hmm. testify and say what they want. And if you start perjuring, perjury charging everybody, you're going to have people less mm -hmm. willing to speak. Especially in a civil case like this. Yeah. Uh, the Jaded, Emily D. Baker's live stream just got copyrighted by Law and Crime. Uh, how about you guys? Uh, we're good over here. It's really lame that that happened to her. Uh, Culliver. Since it's easy to get around that logo, just adjust the window capture to have that bit off screen. Might reduce the copyright strikes all as it also enlarges. I'll enlarge you. A.A. Hey, hey, Ron, he has a history of bad choices, like making a comment about assassinating President Trump on camera. In a later interview, he wrote it off as just a joke. Yeah? I mean, that. Yeah, that's... but in Fairfax, in Fairfax County, that will actually be good. That's a very blue county in Virginia, so. The jury probably won't be upset with that. Uh, Claire Flavin Jones says the jury is mostly older men. Mm -hmm. How do you think that will fare based on what you have seen so far? Um, I I think I I think older men is not a bad demographic for the jury, frankly, for Johnny's side on this. Older men, um, I I think uh, middle aged women. Uh, would be a good one too. The the moms who grew up with Johnny Tap, <laughs> right? Who are yeah. who are in their forties now. Uh, great, great uh, demographic, I think. Uh, S Asp says here is a super chat to help defeat cuck and crime extortion. Eric Miller says, could you guys on LawTube come together in a media trust and pull your money together for the media pool and make it free to everyone to piss them off? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what it costs and how you like how to even get into this stuff is mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 a cryptic and archaic process. Uh, yesterday's tomatoes says imagining imaging that umbrella guy in bed, tidy whities, chicken wing in right hand, petting cat with left, tiny squares of black electrician's tape obscuring the camera on the laptop perched on his kneecaps. Susan Concord says, Nick, thanks for introducing Sabaton. My teen son, History Buff, and I both love it. Have you seen Sabaton History Channel? No. I'll have to check it out. It's a, yeah, that's Richard, a good channel to watch. Richard Waring says, will you all gather together and launch suit about the copyright strikes and have us back you and then mass cover the lawsuit? Copyright suits are a disaster. They're very hard to win. Um, and, and the malicious takedown suits are even they're much harder to win than 
just about anything else. Because the the defense that they have is we weren't malicious, we're just stupid, and we're just wrong. And and if and then you you can win the case, but you don't win anything out of it. Um, so at some point there may be a suit, but so far none of us have really suffered a ton of damage to launch one. Game guy says Google image bread cube theory. Casey Higgins, thank you for the donation. Uh, Bad Dragonite, crazy how all these celebrities are catching the horrible crippling disability of Appalachia. First Jada Smith, then Bruce Willis. So, so sad. <laughs> Casey Higgins, thank you again for the donation. Blazing Fire, about makeup. Years ago, my husband and I were attending my BIL out of uh, BIL out of state wedding, wedding, and I tripped in the hotel parking lot. Makeup can cover up cuts and pictures, but not real life. I know from life. Mr. Schwagen says, now you can ID, identify as a woman and get away with everything. Ricardo Law. Oh, thank God. I can't wait. B. Freeman says, someone start a men's lives matter movement and we can tell people that, yeah, women's lives matter, but this is about bringing the light to light men's issues. Everybody who does anything like that, they get destroyed mm -hmm. immediately. Men's rights activists are pilloried constantly. They become the enemy of every media organization, of every, every independent organization. Um, yeah. It's it's crazy how how much people right. hate them. Yeah, they treat you like you're an incel. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Eldridge Blasted says, Tug, you gotta get legal mindset on Flashcast. Why isn't he intellectual iconoclasm? Locals.com is just the right wing only fans. Hashtag stop simping. Uh look. <laughs> I haven't put my penis on there yet. Nightingale OG says she is also now claiming sexual assault multiple times and never made police report or went to a physician. No police report or photo documentary of any abuse. Meta Metro Exo Kit says uh, instead of viewership abuse through a medical lens, certain or viewing abuse through a medical lens, certain groups view it as another event in the oppression Olympics, which is why they get upset at the concept of male shelters. Yes, you're correct. Uh, next Walter Deadman says, here's a question. So if you can't have a men's shelter and all women are abuse victims of men, do me too. And other victim types deny domestic abuse amongst gay couples, male or female. They just prefer not to talk about it. Yeah. They don't, they don't talk about that. That's, that's a big thing on the left. You don't talk about that. You keep that quiet, but, um, yep. yeah, that is a very, especially actually in lesbian couples, there's a high amount of domestic violence. Given, their... I think they're the highest per capita demographic of yes. domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jago Dragon says, "Do you think they will attack credibility by asking her sister about dad's abuse?" Hey sis, you side with your sis or dad? Uh, they didn't do that. They they went to where exactly where I thought they would go. Go to the drugs. Get those drugs. Hit hit his drug problems as hard as you can. Dalacourt says. Uh, is the jury allowed to request that attorneys and witnesses refrain from adding unnecessarily bloat in their statements? No, jury's not allowed to request anything like that. Not one of us says, sorry to badger, but Pippa win. Uh, it, it's her management, dude. I need them to schedule the uh, chat. So I reached out to them waiting for a response. No big deal. Um. Okay. Where is that? Oh, bottle 00333 says the man in question is Alec Halauka. That was for the uh, Zoe Quinn stuff we talked about. Um, Scarvey the Strange says Depp should do a power move and identify as a woman. Swinging Cod, they are storytelling, laying it out with narrative. Jury asks themselves, why would he say if she was this abusive answer reminded him of mom? Yep, correct. CSSR uh, Suko Tsuto says jingle jangle clank clank it was her freaking bracelets they were so loud uh walter deadman why is deb so orange i thought he hated trump zero 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 borowski would have already told the objecting lawyer to stop making this take forever and shut up at this point yes he would and he would have deserved it blah blah nine eight seven seven i'm 30 minutes behind sorry if you've already answered this but could discussing his childhood abuse backfire for the jury the abused become abusers maybe it's a risk you, you you decide that you think this story is a better story than that story. Sport Nugget says, Nick, would you agree that the judge doesn't seem to know what a leading question is? I would agree that a lot of people don't seem to know what a leading question is. 
but uh, yes, and I do get the joke that you asked me a leading question in the in the uh, <laughs> super chat there. That was good. Uh, William Amiot says, dude, this lady's testimony is solid gold. May H, I would suck as a witness. I can't remember what I ate last week, and you want me to remember what happened a few years ago. Eclipse Warlord, new drinking game. Take a shot every time the closed captioning misspells Mr. Depp. Or misheard as as the word a misheard. That one came up a lot. Uh, the good Tom King says he chased her. She liked it and got abusive as a result. Both acted naturally. The problem is how society treats the man is being wrong here. Walter Deadman says, who is more coked up, Amber or Johnny? Johnny didn't look too coked up. He, he did not look too alert and wired. Pink Hollow, the driving ape. What do you think is going to hold more weight with the jury? The handwritten letters from Depp or the recordings of Heard? No idea. Uh, Guy Vermecton says, thou shalt read thee. Darth Call, if Johnny is a monster, all men are. The double standards are incredible. Penultima, Gilbert Godfrey just died. Now you know. Thank you. Uh, Einstein says, it's her freaking bracelets cl clacking. Vienna waits for you, says Wikipedia. Gottfried passed away on April 12th, 2022. He was eaten by an alligator. Is that true? No. He died by an illness. Zachary Rosfeld says, is this judge being fair so far? I mean, yeah, I think so. Uh, it'll take a little bit more time to see, but so far I'm not, I'm not super concerned personally. Corpus Delecti, apparently traffic was a bitch this morning in and around Fairfax because of this hearing. Glad I no longer live around that area. I says verdict on Depp's lawyer. To me, an average Joe, he sounds shaky and getting shut down so often makes it seem like he doesn't know what he's doing. I no, I, 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 this is one of the things that I think is great about having really high profile people with tons of resources have this case. You get to see that lawyers are really just kind of normal people and they're not super polished monster machines. I mean, occasionally you get one that's a, a rock star, like, you know, Johnny Cochran and stuff like that. But most of them are just, you know, it's just people trying to apply some rules and there's a lot of forgiveness and grace and how, uh, how things get presented. Uh, 2012 Jameson says, stop drinking, stop Coke. Uh, oh crap. Is Hunter Biden's laptop now at issue? Rooster Cogburn says, do you attorneys think she wasn't coached well enough or she knows how to dance around this? Both, neither. Uh, I think I'll agree with Joe that I don't think she was prepped well enough for for this. Yeah, I think I so. Know, what too. was your, yeah. May H says, seven hours in, this is going to be a long six weeks. Oh, it's going to be eight hours a day. We just passed the eight hour mark. Almost done here, but it's going to be eight hours a day. Yeah, every day. Trin says, I feel like she's just doing her best not to lie. She seems like she's been prepared for cross, but that she just wants to be as honest as possible. Trin also says, he says, so what you're saying is even more than Kathy Newman. Uh, STFU says, Judge Rachel Maddow is dropping the ball here. <laughs> Spidley Jeez. says, Cracker Jack can change its name to Jill, but like Leah Thomas, it still has nuts. Trin says, why do all female judges look like Judge Judy? Uh, the real mystic, realistic mystic says, should body language be taught in law school? Do you think it would even be useful to know body language? Body language as a science, I think is shaky for law school. I think it's very interesting. I love listening to body language experts and stuff like that, but I think it gets, I, I don't know that you want to do that. I don't think that fits into the law school curriculum personally. Right. There are a bunch of other classes I wish law schools would teach before they get to doing body language. Yep. Evie Warner says, maybe Depp told her not to rip her apart, but why? Cute nerd, can Johnny Depp's sister bring up Amber Heard beating her ex when questioned about her brother and abuse? Would that make things worse? That's getting onto shaky ground because the question of relevance comes up mm. and uh, prior acts. But maybe. Catherine Rux, Gilbert... Godfrey passed away today at 67. Sad day. TJ Ventura, Dr. Husel trial now, jury trial now deliberating verdict prediction. Uh, I'm hoping not guilty on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Bay has con convinced me. I think that's a not guilty verdict. Yeah, I'm hoping not guilty too. And B. Feinstein. I don't know, if, I don't oh, know if it came out too well when I was on that last week when I was a little uh, sauced up, but yeah, I think the case is bad. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I think so too. And I think that just that in that opening statement, when he started posting the hospital's emails and meeting minutes, it was like, mm-hmm. this is a bad case. They shouldn't yeah. have brought this case. And the closing just, that sealed the deal. Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch all of the closing. Was it good? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really good. It was really good. I watched it at two times speed, but yeah, he he definitely he definitely did a good job. I was going to, and then I looked at it, and I'm like, this is two, uh, two hours long. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but he's, the whole time, he's just dropping bombs. There's not a lot of dead space. He's one of those, he's a very good trial attorney. A very yeah. good trial attorney. Yeah, well, I, um, I cheated. I took a little bit of what he uses and threw that in my uh, closing argument, uh, you know, template I use. So Nice. Yeah. And B. Feinstein says, as a wheelchair user, I can't use my pockets. Cell phone case with holster is vital for me. That makes me a loser. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, you have a good reason for it. Carlos there did not. Because yeah. he's not a wheelchair user who, who can't use his pockets. He's a guy named Alex, even though his name is Carlos, spinning his, spinning his cell phone around on that little click-in holster thing. So what's the deal with cell phone cases that you don't like? I hate them. I mean, like, I got one. Yeah, why? Because I break these a lot if I don't. Look at this thing. Again, some some Korean man sat there, and he hand-carved this, <laughs> this thing out. He sat there shaving it down one layer of metal at a time with his, like, pocket knife artisanship and expertise on full display. He gets down to the edge, and he expertly curves the blade around so you can carve out the little nook for the camera and you want to go destroy it, but you put a case on there. It's like, no, that someone made that thing. And now you're putting some dumb piece of plastic on there. You get rid of the whole aesthetic. It makes it bigger. It's more awkward in your pocket. I hate them. They're garbage. Oh, God, I'm going to fix this world. Uh, McQueen G says, what's with the mics? Is this a turd tactic? <laughs> Tug supporter. <laughs> No, I think it's just courts are bad with microphones. Yeah. Uh, Joel Ree says, New York Lieutenant Governor arrested on federal bribery charges. Whoops. Oopsie poopsie. Uh, Kashav Batra says, seeing as how Amber's uh, using slap, do you think this will be detrimental to debt? Because many people are saying that this is a huge blow. Uh, No, she lost her slap motion. Mm -hmm. That's why this thing's at trial, so... Uh, that, that it's amazing that he got past it, frankly, just because it's so hard to do. Corpus Delecti says, also Racket still putting together that Like a Prayer song. Just got to work out the guitar. Lost hand strength due to spinal issues, though, so it's a bit tough, but still pushing through it. Oh, man, it's going to be, that'll be, that's going to be a funny song. And B. Feinstein says, facial bruises can be removed uh, by leeching. It's a Chinese medical practice. I've used it successfully before a military ball. Four dots remain to cover up. So there you go. All you need is a leech. Uh, all I need is a miracle. And that's about it. I think I got one more chat over on Odyssey. Two more. One, two, three, four, five says this one is worth. And then <laughs> the next one, he says most super chats are just parroting what is being said in the stream. Those I Both of those were less than 0.01 Libri coin. So thank you. Thank you for that. That was... It was nice of you to contribute one eighth of a penny or whatever. <laughs> That's it. Well, Sean, uh, I gotta, I gotta get going, man. You got anything so you want to say before we peace out? Uh, nope. Just tomorrow I'm a free man again, so I might start streaming. I don't know what I'll stream, but maybe I'll just take the week off. I don't know yet. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. All right. That, that's really all it right, for guys. Me. Check, check out Sean. Potentially criminal. On uh, on YouTube, I think you're on the suspension right now, but um, mm-hmm. he's got he's got some back content you could certainly check out. Uh, otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow morning, eight thirty a.m. ish Central Time. Uh, this time I'll set an alarm so I'm actually you know uh, closer to on time and have the link up beforehand. That's the goal, and then uh, we'll we'll see you guys then. I will have a show, I believe, at some point tonight, eleven p.m. tonight. I uh, got a couple different things I'd like to talk about that should be working out here. So uh, until then, guys, Sean, thank you. And uh, we'll mm-hmm. catch you Thanks guys later. Nick. See you yep. guys. Peace. Peace. Oh, 
he drinks a fair bit, but you realize that it just helps get his noggin jogging along with his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight. We'll hear some lost planning tonight. With his microphone muted, we'll laugh at this boomer until he explains it's all part of the plan. Watch his face become red as he becomes madder, raging at idiots from Twitter and Erland. From the white shores of Maine to the hills of Glen Livet, there's no one who explains the law better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed, just to make the law what we have now. Oh, his lady is fair. She handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag about more of that bright spirits flow as the ones who get on and blood. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter as we hear lost playing tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Levitt, there's no one who explains the problem better than me. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all planet folks and Doug Tater drops off. They bring that perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Shores of man to the hills of Glen Levitt. There's no one.